ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2023 Gainiac Nutrition U.S. Nationals presented by Pioneer. At this time, we would like to thank some of the amazing people that put this event together. First and foremost, Texas State Rep and National Champion, Jonathan Lester and his wife, First Lady of Texas Strength, Megan Lester. Let's bring out Gainiac Nutrition's very own Steven Taylor. After Steven Taylor, none other than U.S. Strongman President. Give it up for Willie Wessels. Next, we have guest announcer, world strongest man competitor, Gay Pena. One half of the Valor and Venom announcing team with over 40 years in the Iron Game, three time national champion, the American treasure, Paul Leonard. Last but not least, the other half of the announcing team and your producer, creator of Valor and Venom Production, the mad scientist and producer extraordinaire, Sean L. Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for everybody that's put this amazing show together today. Let's hear it for them. I know we got a lot of things going on. The athletes are getting in the zone right now. But again, I just want everybody to understand is that the staff here has done an absolutely tremendous job. Thank you to Gainiac Nutrition for putting up all the funds that do this. This wouldn't happen without you. And also, from the bottom of my heart, I want you guys to understand that we are so proud to be here from Valor and Venom. Our mission statement is this. It is athletes first. Without you all today competing, this does not happen. We don't get a chance to showcase every single thing you do, all the hard work that you put yourself through, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the three months, six months, eight months, 12 months, just to get on this platform for an average of six minutes and 30 seconds. But guess what? Today, we get to showcase your feats of strength, and we are damn proud to be here. I hope you're ready for one hell of an exciting show, and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can hear us on the mics, we are here at the USS Gainiac Presents the Nationals 2023. I am joined, I am joined by a fantastic group of your announcers today. I got Gabriel Pena, the Texas Golden Boy, world's strongest man competitor sitting to my left. Next to him is the American treasure, who's a three-time national champion, Paul Leonard. The Texas Golden Boy and the national treasure. It's great, <laughs> it's great to be here. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, what a beautiful weekend. How many total athletes do we have here today? 
Uh, we I know I know for that we had over 500 some. Over 650 registered, and then we were working with with Jonathan, Megan last night because they there's so many people behind the scenes, uh, Gabriel. To to be honest with you, but. I know over 500 showed up to compete. You know, it sometimes happens when the you have to have a cutoff, and then sometimes will, someone will tweak a hamstring or something not serious, so they can't make it for life events. But uh, it is what it is. It, it still is the world's largest amount of competitors in one strongman that we can ever. It's a Guinness record, sir. Yeah, I don't think I've ever participated in an event with this many competitors in strongman. It's huge. It has grown so much exponentially in the last 20 years from a guy like me that did it. We just we did an intro and we all came down the stairs and USS president and Willie Wessel and I were talking and uh, when I was with him last summer he came out to a show in Arizona they had done a thousand shows last year he said by the end of this year there'll be 1300 shows USS has administered in, in less than 20 years that is incredible it, it really warms the heart for uh, myself yourself as athletes to see the sport that we know and love grow and flourish and thrive uh, 100%. So we are here in the beautiful Hyatt Regency, Dallas, getting ready to thank you for joining us on the Valor and Venom YouTube page. We'll be streaming this all day. So what it is is the is the ladies and lightweights and some of the younger men will be going in the in the morning uh, competition that starts at 8.30 Central Standard Time, Dallas, is broadcast. It'll probably be about a four hours to contest the five events they're going to do today, folks. And then there'll be a short break. We'll play some uh, commercials and so forth. And then the, the, the larger men up to a heavyweight class and super heavyweight class that has over 80 competitors i heard today gabe 80 competitors in that super class wow <laughs> that's a another another record i would say 100 uh, percent. so at home if you're watching us on valor and venom thank you like share subscribe push this out to your friends it's free and uh you know if you have to go cut the grass or go to something more important like a little league game or something a wedding we get it poor timing <laughs> but this will be on the youtube page later you can watch it later so it's it'll be there forever i can guarantee to you it's family friendly you won't hear an un, unkind word or anything unprofessional so today gabe what we are I, I can't even keep up with the myriad of sponsors so the chief sponsors today are ganiac nutrition pioneer fit the master barbell uh cerberus so i get to meet with um ken last night i just it's just it's just so exciting to see all the robust um capitalism that that this sport has uh and and all these companies they're all usually str they're 100 sp strength based usually by strength athletes themselves and they as always like a strength athlete they overproduce they over deliver and under promise yeah. <laughs> and, and over engineer everything especially in terms of the equipment you know 100 yeah you you spoken now gabe if you don't i'm sure you know gabe pena he's been to the world's strongest man the greatest strongman show on the on the in the world the highest quality highest class so what we have today is the u.s nationals so we are going to crown eight overall national champions today with belts but like but like gabe said if you've done enough of these meets sometimes during a competition equipment will fail because the it's the athletes are that strong but like you said we believe we have the top-notch equipment that will stand up today i'm looking at this lever deadlift that the athletes will have on their event roster today and that just looks incredibly robust but i believe it's time for the national anthem Yes, sir.
What an incredible Amazing. job by that young lady. Awesome. Amazing. Amazing. We'll get you on the mic later. So amazing. And now she's gonna go compete, like Julie just amazing. said. That's amazing. You know, there's there's something about the national anthem and the stillness in the air for a national championships event where you see all these athletes ready to just leave everything out in the field in that quiet tranquility, just ready in observance of our colors of this nation. It's, it's a beautiful day here in Dallas, Texas, and we are gonna see some incredible feats of strength all throughout the day. I cannot wait. Oh, absolutely, Gabe. And I tell you what, you know served this country for many years, and every time you hear that national anthem, I don't care. I still get goosebumps, and it almost brings a tear to your eye because it's the greatest in the world. Well, thank you for your service, sir, and oh. uh, those feelings are uh, just the quintessential feelings of an American. The patriotism, <laughs> we, we all feel it, whether uh, whether we know it or not, it is there in that oh, moment. There. Absolutely. And I get chills every time, too. The hairs on the back of my neck definitely stand in yeah, that final note. But what a day we have here up planned. Our first class is up. Who do we have up? So our first classes, I'll bring it to you right now. There are, so what we have is there's going to be lane one. In lane one, the open is going to be open women lightweights, 123 and below. Uh, going, and also then they'll have open women lightweights, 132 and below. Lane two is going to be open me, uh, women's middleweights, which is 148 pounds and below. And then they'll also work in the open women's middleweights, 165 and below. Lane three will be the open women's heavyweight, 181 pounds and below, and then the open women's heavyweight, 198 pounds and below. There's enough competitors that lane four will just have one class. It'll be the open women's super heavyweight, which is 242 pounds, and I think there'll be a, also some supers above that. Uh, a lady never tells her weight in public, but in strongman, they're proud of how big and strong they are, Gabe. So then uh, lane five will be teen, women's lightweights 165 as well as some masters which means over 50 year old athletes and i met some athletes over 60 yesterday that'll be here some masters lightweight competitors which is 132 and 123 pound class lane six will be the teen um women's heavyweights 165 plus masters and middleweights 148 to 165 lane seven is teen lightweights 220 i believe that's teen men um, master men 60 plus, no, and teen men heavyweight, as well as some masters lightweight 50 weight plus. And then finally, lane eight will be the women's, uh, masters women's heavyweight, masters heavyweight 165 and 50 plus. So I, 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 we do the best we can, folks, at home on the stream, but I, I direct you to go to a free website too, ironpodium.com. The entire, pull up the USS Strongman Championships. 2023 it's right there it's free and you the scoreboard will be there and it's it'll be updated after every event of the five different events today so it and it gives you a full roster breakdown of who actually while we were getting ready to do the stream the administrative team behind the scenes which is many they get iron podium loaded it's free it's it's user friendly and you can look at it in your phone while you're watching on your big screen hopefully at home please feel free to like share and subscribe and also put in the comments we'll do the best we can to identify all, all the athletes remember we're trying to we're trying to memorialize the incredible performance of over 500 athletes so folks so give us a little patience we mean well and we're our whole focus is to showcase on what they're doing so um thanks again for the like share and subscribe on this on the youtube Val and venom page they're about to start gabe and they're off and we're Here watching they go. lane four, our open women's super heavyweight, moving down the ladder deadlift. Now, this apparatus is a true display of physics. The athlete will start closest to the weight, complete a successful lift, and after each lift, they will move down the lever, increasing the difficulty of the lift, hoping to complete it as fast as possible. So the leverage, as their leverage gets worse, it weighs more, if you will. Uh, you've got the chance to compete with this event? Let's go, let's go, go. I've only gotten to train on this. I've never gotten to compete on this type of event. But I will say that each of those increments, you can expect will add anywhere between 50 to 75 pounds approximately of difficulty. So this, these are some heavy lifts, especially to those last two reps they have to do. Yes, I'm watching our competitor in lane five. She's on the third position. She's actually on the final position, and she's trying to get that liver dev lift up. We are talking about one of our teen female competitors in lane five right here. 
That she did fifth. a great job. Give her a hand, folks. Incredible. That fifth awesome. mess is just going to be a, uh, a I don't want to say a backbreaker, but it'll be a back strainer for all of these athletes. We don't say things like that. 100%. <laughs> and, and like we're alluding to, like I asked you, like Strongman, there's about 50 different variations of exercises that, and, and tests of strength. So a lot of these athletes have never, never been on this apparatus. No, it is a very unique one to try to simulate. And you'll see athletes taking different different techniques with the way they grip the bar. Some will be going in an over-under grip, some will be doing double overhand. Oh, okay. Okay, folks, in lane six, this competitor is only 17 years old at the Nationals. She's getting ready to start. I'm getting information from uh, Arizona State Chairman Julius May is our administrator on the computer. The scores will all be up to date on Iron Podium. We do the best we can. She's ripping into it. Lane five on that fifth rep, and she gets it. She gets it. And so what? What when, when one of the athletes, folks, completes it, what they've done is score a time. So even if they only lift it on the first stanchion, they get a time for that. But if they go through all five, then they get ranked for what they did on five. And, of course, doing all five beats somebody that just got to one or two. But the, you'll see at, there's a judge at every station, all eight lanes, and there's also a scorekeeper right next to them keeping close tabs. They keep a, a stopwatch on this. This is a very unique type of deadlift, though. This is a wide stance deadlift. The athletes are not just relying on their back power here, but their hips are coming in tremendously with this wider foot stance. Not to mention the coordination demand of having to replace that handle on each of these hooks every single step. 100%. Yeah, the, the, there's a, a handle which is knurled, so it gives them grip, but they can't use any type of strap apparatus. So what they have to do, it, the, the competitors themselves have to put the carboner on each pin as they go up the rung, so to speak. So it's, you know, as you're getting in that fight or flight, your fine motor skills deteriorate. So it's, you know, to be able to, okay, this, this, and then it's, it just shows how talented these athletes are, Gabe. This is really an event that will showcase how well the athlete prepared themselves, not just physically, but like you said, mentally, keeping their cool as they move from rep to rep to rep, especially those athletes who are vying for that top spot, trying to finish as fast as possible. 100%. You get the idea, folks, too. Lifters, strength athletes are very much creatures of habit. That's why they're successful. So there's, there's a myriad of people that don't train till after work or after school or till late at night. or sh So to come to fly in, you're f very familiar doing international competitions, to adjust to a different time zone, different apparatus, and first crack around the box at 8.30 a.m. here in Dallas time. We are, they're kicking ass from the start. They are. It is impressive. I, I just watched lane three over there. I believe that's Talisa Ferguson. And she just completed all five reps. But that last one, we're going to see some real grueling exertions and deadlift faces come out on that final rung on this lever apparatus. That's 100%. As you can see, folks, following along at home, it, the action's fast and furious. So to, we do our best to give you all the athlete information, but the ironpodium.com website is the best companion. And in our lane five, we have, I'm sure, I'm 55, Gabe. I'm sure she's a master's athlete. I love the Masters. Oh, she's on. She's going to blaze right through. And I see on lane seven, we have one of our team men making his way down the lever apparatus. We've already got into the men on the higher profile, higher platform numbers. Seven and eight. We have some male and some Masters level. The heavier female competitors, the heavier weight classes. And lane number five right there, our master's athlete you were talking about, she even had the decency to take off the handle and reset it for the next athlete oh, on the first one. See, masters, see are, which, masters are treacherous, but yet polite. And following in her place, I know this athlete, Leslie Nickman in lane five. Okay. Another master's competitor. Oh, she made short work of that. She's got the Chuck Taylors on. She knows what she's doing. Lane four, Maddie Garcia, Ooh. one of my former athletes from South Texas. Oh, wow, okay. A Texan. I would say there's a large number of Texans competing today, and I would say we have 2,000 people in the house already watching. Welcome to Dallas. Oh, yeah, B welcome to Big D. I lived here for five years. It's amazing. You blink and it grows overnight. There's lane four attacking that last ring on the lever. It might just be too much for Matty Garcia. She's readjusting her grip. She's digging it. Oh, there she goes. She there got it. it. Is. Nice. You, she you got the leverage. How the heaviest point is right there at the bottom before it breaks the ground. 
one hundred percent grueling. And she 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 quote unquote learned that position just doing it like attacking. Of course she's strong, but she readjusted her grip and repositioned her hips, and then her body was able to use all its power to get that up. One thing unique about these lever type deadlifts is that. Unlike a free weight barbell, the athlete does not lift the weight straight up. There's almost a diagonal lane of motion where the athlete has to be leaning back at the top for this lever arm, and it, it makes it a very different type of pull. If the athlete doesn't have a apparatus like this to train on, this may very well be, feel like their first time lifting on something like this. 100%. But what, what you'll see soon, folks, is you'll see these lever deadlifts everywhere. People will make them. They'll be at your local gym. Your local strongman and powerlifting gym will have them. This Heather McDonald on lane three. Former, there she goes, she's in. A former Arizona residence and gym owner out there. Now she's in Austin, Texas. She's going on to, she's going on to the third position. She's got it, there she goes. She's learning how to, she's a professional Highland Games athlete. Oh, there she goes. On to the last one. Yep, Heather McDonald in lane, lane three. She's on to the last one, and oh, she got it. So now she got a time. And lane number eight, our master's athlete. Way to go. On her final rep of the lever apparatus, and she nails it. Oh, wow. Eight lanes of excitement, folks. Thanks for joining us on the Val and Venom YouTube page. If you just found us, like, share, and subscribe. Push it out. This is the USS Strongman Nationals in Dallas, Texas, sponsored by Ganiac Nutrition, Le Master Barbell, Pioneer Fit. Leave comments. Check it out. Check out the live scoreboard on Iron Podium that will be updated after each event. There's five events today. We're just starting. These ladies are just smashing it, setting the, setting the tone and the bar high for the athletes later in the day. But the action is definitely moving fast. These athletes are getting their reps done, getting out, and refueling for the next events they have in store. Jonathan and Megan Lester, the Texas State reps, have just outdone themselves with this. L look at the, what, what you see, the competitors wearing red shirts, and the staff, judges, timers, administrators, loaders are all wearing blue shirts. So you see the army of people that have made this possible today, Gabe. And that's it, it, it does take an army. And it's been really great to see uh, Jonathan and Megan Lester ascend the ranks with the, the state level shows that they started out and now hosting a national championship. Seeing this all come together, it's a, uh, it's incredible. It really is. 100%. We have USS. So if you, if you watch the NFL at home and you see the big playoffs or something or the Super Bowl, obviously the commissioner's there, we have USS President Willie Wessels here. And, and you're right. There's no way Jonathan would have got awarded this championship if he wasn't a proven commodity and, and didn't do everything to let the athletes showcase their strength and performance abilities. In lane five, we have another master's level athlete. She just got her first one in. What you see, the, the judge's arm is up, and in the deadlift, the judge will put their arm down, because sometimes when, as you get into straining, the, your, your vision gets a little uh, fuzzy, to say the least. Well, all the blood is elsewhere. <laughs> it's down in the lower back, down the hips and the hamstrings, but they have to be waiting for that down command from their judge. If they do not get their down command, they will have wasted all that energy trying to get a half rep that they need to know that they've locked out their knees, they push their hips forward, and have their shoulders back. 100%. And, and folks, you know, Gabe obviously speaks from uh, a vast amount of international and world-level experience. But these strongman contests, what, when it's all said and done, it's fast and furious, but the scores are kept precisely, and it can come down to one rep or one second in, in the total championship and placings. I can't tell you how many times I've had half-point differences between me and another podium space. And it's, it's tough, but it really uh, is an allusion to all the, the high-caliber talent here. On any championship event right yeah at this level and um at gabe's level a, a half a second can be thousands of dollars but uh not that <laughs> but personal pride of course comes first with any strength of athlete. course you want to win but you yeah, won't if you're impressive. just if you've never been to a national championship I, or any strongman championship if you listen to me i suggest you just go to an iron podium and find one in your local or uss strongman find one in your local neighborhood or community go to it but 
the competitors love each other and respect each other. Like, there's camaraderie like no other sport. And I'll tell you, it's time right now is thanking all the 230 viewers of our stream right now. Listen, go ahead and share this. We've just started the USS Nationals 2023 here in Dallas, Texas. And this is definitely something that you don't want to miss. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Tell you what, it's definitely a rowdy place. I'm trying to drown out the crowd behind us, but I have no luck doing that. You know, it, it is high electricity. You've got a lot of fans, friends, family here ready to cheer on their designated strong man or strong woman. I, I, I've spoken to several of these athletes that they've gotten ready for today, and they've told me that some of them have even had eight months of training prep leading up to this. So you can imagine all of the coins are on the table here. They That's have prepped amazing. hard, and they are ready to show the world what they've been working on. 100, oh, 100 percent. Uh, Sean, I draw your attention to lane six. She has Ric Flair tights on. I know, I see that. Listen, uh, we're pro wrestling fans also. And let me Woo! tell you something there, Daddy. That's my nemesis right there. That's <laughs> Ric Flair, that yellow dog and baby doll. <laughs> you, you have to do a Dusty Rhodes impression here in Texas. Texas. I mean, it makes sense. R rest in peace, Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, miss thank, that guy. Thank you for joining us. Eight billion people potentially can watch this, like, share, and subscribe. We have over 230 viewers right now in the stream shout out to everyone on planet earth watching shout out to ricky bruck watching from valhalla <laughs> so the, the, ricky bruck is a thing between paul and i i've never seen something like ricky bruck gave you you know ricky bruck is i'm assuming or, I, you know, I, I don't know i'm shooting a blank right now all right so paul's gonna give you the name of this thing and i'm, I'm gonna spoil it i don't care because i can say it but you gotta see it ricky bruck was like a national distance thrower just an amazing man a huge man so he's sitting there in this video. He's just like, you know, chalking up, like getting ready. And all of a sudden, he goes and mounts his bar. Now, this bar is 500 pounds. He puts it behind, you know, he puts his back in the squat position. I'm like, oh, this is 500 pounds. That's kind of cool. No. He takes 500 pounds behind the back, throws it up, and then brings it down. I'm like, why? Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a, what, what it is, Gabe, there's a, there's a free, on YouTube, there's a, a documentary about Ricky Brock called The Soul is Greater Than the Earth. So oh. do yourself a favor and watch that when you can. It's amazing. It's a it's a it's a movie about athletic obsession. You'll love. I'll, I'll have you'll to love check it. it out. You'll it, love it. It's a rabbit hole. I, I for four hours I searched Ricky Brook. I never heard of him until Paul said. Then I saw a human being do 500 pound over the press behind the back and was like, who who is this guy? <laughs> that sounds like Tom Stolman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if you're watching at home, look at in lane three. They're already done. They've already completed the lever deadlift. So all the evolutions for this morning on that platform are done of the eight lanes we have going. And same That's for lane one as well. They're getting ready for the axle press event. Yeah, you see the expediters and same thing. Lane, the, the lanes are already done. So fast and furious for the, the first group today started at 8.30. And by eight, by in 15 minutes, they've, they've, they've administered about 50 athletes already. Amazing, strongman. But that, but not just administer. Okay, on lane six we have the lady that sang the national anthem. Let's let's get behind her, folks. I don't know her name yet. She did an amazing rendition. We're going to get her on the mic at some point. She's kicking ass. Let's go. She's looking coordinated, precise. Oh yeah, she knows. She's a conditioned strength athlete. Well wow. built. She's on the last. Oh, she smoked that like the. She smoked that like the song, and then returned the carboner. Incredible. All class. We'll get her on the mic. So one of the questions I got asked a lot actually with the lever deadlift is that a lot of the athletes that are coming down doing the weigh-ins and whatnot is that they were trying to figure out how the fastest way they can go and transition that clip. Do you know if any like specific way to do that, like how you hold it and how you would like, clip it onto the next one as fast as you possibly could? Uh, it, it, it all comes down to keeping cool and collected. I mean, you, it, it all starts up in the mind. You, you cannot be too fidgety and too amped up to go to that next rep because then you're going to lose your coordination with your fingers. But like anything else, just squeeze that carabiner with your thumb and, and be very precise where you place it. I have seen a couple athletes, they're kind of just fumbling with it and, and losing critical seconds on the clock. But um, there's a, it's a whole other type of strength training, the strength of mind, being able to silence a lot of this external noise around the athlete and focus on the job at hand. Almost like a tunnel vision, if you will. Right. You have to keep that about you. Well, that's the thing is that a lot of times, like in the moment when you're doing like a strength sport, you know, it's wrestling, football, strongman, piloting. It's, I mean, you do get that sense of like, you know, you're there and it could be a large crowd, but you really don't hear it when you're the athlete. You're just folks, if you're dialed in. Right. Where it's just, okay, I'm here at the bar. And then when you do it, you kind of get that popper like, oh, there is people around me. And that might not necessarily be something that each athlete automatically has. You know, some of these athletes, if this is their first national championship event, they may never have been to it as an electric right. of an environment as this. But next time they are oh, more equipped just ready. from being here today. 
I would say one of the things on this lever deadlift that the athlete really has to prioritize is their foot placement. If their feet are too far forward or backward, there's just going to be some uneven forces across the body. And I think, you know, clipping that carabiner is a very simple job. It's important, but the, the foot placement is going to make or break the lift. And I see little John right here, John Lester Jr. in lane seven, teen athlete. Oh, nice. Our, yes, he is. Our competition host's son. 14 years old? 14 years old, just moving through that lever oh, deadlift. Wow. That's just a big 14 it. year old. Oh, man, his dad gets to give him a hug. There's nothing better than that. Oh, wow. yeah. He's got like, the grocery note's going to look like a ransom note. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some big boys. Oh, yeah. yeah. HEB's going to like them. Yeah. The one thing, Gabe, I definitely, we try to tell everybody, you know, that are watching this or thinking about doing this, is that a lot of people do get intimidated about some of these lifts. And the best thing we could tell people is don't worry about placing, don't worry about the weight. Just get out there and do it because you'll surprise yourself. One of the most incredible things things about strongman is getting to discover the power within I, I, I see it all the time when I introduce new clients or athletes into the sport whenever they get that first truck pull or the first truck push they get to move the vehicle that usually moves them that is sort of an awakening of uh, wow I'm really capable of some amazing things and that that those are the feelings that I wish everyone gets to experience at least once so if you are intimidated by the sport first of all I get it it is an intimidating sport but we welcome everyone with open arms. Strongman is for everybody. Yes, it if is. If you have the heart, the mind, the desire to do it, just start lifting up something heavy. Better yet, find someone who can teach you some of these things, a, a local. But yeah, the internet is your is your favorite. Before we went live today, Gabe and I were talking about how hard it used to be to find equipment back in the day. Uh, now every major city or good-sized town has a has a well-equipped gym, and, and the internet's your friend. Look on Instagram, look on Facebook, look on YouTube, and you can find a local training group. And just the key rule is never waste their time. But if you take it, if you care and you really want to get strong, they will 100% embrace you, open arms. The bar goes from zero. Well, the bar goes from 45 to uh, 1,045 if you want, and and, so, and depend upon the apparatus. It could be loaded and unloaded. There's nothing like a strongman crew. It's very helpful to build. Absolutely. To join. There's nothing like it. And we all start somewhere. Yes, my, sir. My deadlift started off with one plate on the bar, just like everyone else. <laughs> and yeah. You just slowly yeah. build up over the years. But you gotta you got to embrace the journey, embrace the path. And that's what every single one of these nearly 600 athletes here has done. And that's why they're here at the USS National Championships. Yeah, there are athletes today here, folks. Men and women, there's athletes from age 14, and I see well over a bunch of 60-year-olds. It's a gentleman I can see ahead of me that I met from Massachusetts. It's well, well into his 60s that's just enjoying the heck out of the strength that he's breathing back into his body. You see now, folks, they're getting ready. Almost the liver deadlift is just being contested on eight and seven which is the, the heavier men's masters, but um, it's on all the other platforms, they're getting ready for the axle clean and jerk. Draw your attention to some of our sponsors. Um, Barbell Rescue, Barefoot. I think you have some Barefoot on yourself, do you, sir? I, I do have my Barefoots on oh, right boy. now. I always do. Awesome. I, they are just an incredible, uh, incredible brand, bringing some revolutionary footwear into the fold. Awesome. Cer Cerberus, uh, Ken Nowicki, he's originally from Scotland, but he sells strongman gear, support gear. Uh, check him out online. He's here today. He's doing a robust business today here at the show because it it's one of the best strongman gear in the world. Uh, Ganiac Nutrition. Impact. There's an impact booth over here. They make a mouthpiece that I haven't got the pleasure of checking out, but I will. We have over 20 sponsors, so I'm trying to do them all justice and honors. Check us out on the Val and Venom YouTube stream, and if you're doing that, like, share, and subscribe. But we're doing our best to have all the sponsors recognized and noticed. We really appreciate their their support, their fellowship, and, and the camaraderie. They're super nice, and they provided contests like this. They provide swag that the athletes like which is really cool because Jonathan's gone out of his way. Jonathan Megan, the state rep for Texas that, that's promoted this, he's gone out of his way for gifts, uh, rewards, and prizes, although the greatest reward is intrinsic. But Well, it's great to know that the athletes will be leaving with more than just the memories of today. They will be leaving with swag, with great shirts, and those who wind up becoming winners will leave with quite a quite a lot <laughs> it's awesome oh the, the, the stuff they have on that table just walking around you look at the prize table there it's incredible absolutely incredible but now obviously the championship belt i'm very partial to <laughs> oh yeah they have eight beautiful championship belts with texas logos i have it on my instagram uh yesterday for you all to see and it's probably on uh u.s strongman nationals in own instagram page but paul j leonard plusa 
check that out. But those tech, those championship belts are super cool. Super cool. We are now seeing uh, many of our athletes begin the Axle Clean Impress event. Well, what what would what it looks like? I'm pretty sure they're We're allowing them to warm up on the very platform okay. they'll be on. Uh, none of the judges are seated yet, but soon they will, and we will be off on our second event within 20 minutes, which is amazing. The pace and the amount of athletes that they're administering here, allowing them to showcase their strength. We got lane number eight still going. They're probably coming down to the final wire. I know. I think they have the largest amount of the morning class, I believe. And here she goes for the final lift on the deadlift apparatus. Nails it. Lane eight was Masters Women's Heavyweight. Masters Heavyweight, 165 and 50 and older. Uh, uh, the, the men's Masters over 50. Lane six right in front of us. See, the thing about this is a lot of the athletes didn't realize it's a full lift. They thought once you get it up, it's going to be reps. And John was like, no, you pull all the way back down, and you lift it back up. So clean and press every rep, yes, not sir. press away. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that, that does change things because the more distance the bar has to travel, I mean, that's the body powering it. So having to clean each rep from the ground, it's a major endurance game. And when you're talking about fitting as many reps as possible into 60 seconds, that is some serious work. And that what they're doing is cleaning an axle, uh, as Gabe has experience with, and so do I have a little experience, but that's two inches in circumference, and it actually looks painted and slick from what I'm sorry. Those, those are definitely smooth axles, and with a thicker grip, the, the hand is not going to be able to close between the finger and the thumb. Now look at lane number five. She's giving everything she's got over there. She's a t I can tell she's a team competitor. She's all heart. She's got a lot of fan support right behind us, which we, is awesome. I think her cheering is actually right behind right us. Right behind us. Punch it through the sky. Well done. And, and so all the competitors are given, I believe it's a 60 second time limit to get as many reps. What they have to do is clean and press each rep and get the down signal from the, from the, the referee on their respective lane and then they can attempt the other rep. So they're being scored for reps. Now to our viewers at home, the down signal from the judge is the critical mark of knowing you got the rep. What the judges are looking for is established control of that bar overhead, the feet parallel to each other, the athlete is still unstable and the bar no longer moving. Once that's achieved, the athlete gets the rep and they can begin the next. Lane six just powering it up. She's 17 years old. Yeah, she is making short work of that. Oh, punch in the sky. Folks, I see on lane four, living legend Chad Coy, multiple world's strongest man competitor. He's here uh, administering, helping today. Man, she is just, she cleans that up to her chest almost from the floor. Shows how strong. So the axle, the axle uh, press like this tests everything from your toes to your nose, Gabe. Wow, lane number six, once she gets that bar to her chest, it's just... Cannons. It's going up. Flying. It's Massive going firepower. Up. Huge shoulder strength and upper body pressing strength. So you'll see the athletes, some of them are doing a mixed grip on this axle because it's a, it tests the grip as well. It's a part of it. And you'll see lane number one and lane number two, and even lane number three. A lot of these athletes will utilize a split jerk technique. When they dip down, they will split their legs into a wide split squat to shorten the distance the bar has to travel. And it's a very technical lift, but it can pay, it can pay off in dividends and saving more energy for those final reps at the end of the 60 second cap. The action is fast and furious with axles being cleaned in all eight lanes, folks. Almost all eight lanes. We still have seven and eight on the lever deadlifts. Oh, our our masters men yeah, and mas our masters women. Yeah. Our yeah, seven and eight are pretty much going to be the uh, like I said, I believe the longest 8M lane we're going to have today. Stacked classes. Oh, that, which, which makes it even that much better to yeah, watch. And as I look into the distance now, I can see there's a myriad of competitors still lined up to go. So some classes have up to 80 competitors, and some might have 10. So they're trying to administer. They're administering amazing speed and efficiency here. But again, I draw your attention to ironpodium.com. That'll be kept updated. So when the lever deadlift is, is complete within 10 minutes, the scores will be there and so forth. Appreciate you following along at home. Ironpodium.com is free. So check out the U.S. Strongman Nationals on that. The scoreboard is free for you to, uh, to check out. You're watching us on Valor and Venom YouTube page. We appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. 
On lane number eight, we have an unbroken strength athlete coached by Julie Smay of Peoria, Arizona. It's gonna be home of the all women's national strongman event October 21st 22nd? this year. Oh, yes, sir. Yep. Can't wait. We'll be up there by the 21st. Yep. We were here on Thursday to get ready for this, and, and this place was, was an army work and then to get ready. A lot of work goes into these events. No, we love every minute of it, though. It's oh, the athletes. Yeah, we, if we do enough, if we can, if they can tr train their whole life to be here, we can prep for a few days to showcase their strength. Gabe, what's some of your best axle, axle lifts, if somebody asks? Let's see. I think the heaviest I've put up overhead on an axle is 410 pounds. Oh, oh okay. my goodness. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it has been a while. I, I will admit to that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, me and me and the axle have a, a bit of a history together. Oh, okay. It's, you, you see some of these athletes having to go with the over-under grip. And when I first started Strongman, this was way before my, my – actually, the week after my first competition – on cleaning that axle in training, I tore off my bicep with that oh, underhand arm. Oh, my goodness. Oh my. And, uh, you know, it, it definitely painted a picture of how things can go from 0 to 60 very quick if you are not technically precise. 100%. Sure. But, uh, but my, my arm has fully healed since then, and it, it really, that underhand grip on the axle, the, the athletes just have to really focus that their legs are moving the weight, not the bicep itself. Let, let the big, strong leg muscles power this bar up off the ground, and the arms will finish it off. But taking it to overhead. Yes, sir. You hit. You just said something, Gabe. That I, you know, we all try and preach is that when it comes to strongman doing these lifts. I mean, these lifts are dangerous. But it's not like some of the sports you can kind of go like 80 percent, 80 percent. You got to do each one of these reps 100 percent. You have to give it your all. You, you do. You it is dead weight, and if you do not activate those uh, muscle fibers at 100 percent, sometimes it doesn't even budge. No. So it is all or nothing. But that's where it comes down to the importance of really having some nailed in and focused training whether it's a coach helping you or just doing your due diligence and researching proper technique uh, critiquing your own videos whatever it is the the potential for injury is always there but the athlete equips himself with all the skill and finesse needed to go as long as they can into their master's years well and that being said behind the scenes folks you don't see you didn't see on the stream but any promoter well, usually, and certainly here at the Nationals, gave these athletes a chance to warm up today correctly. This apparatus in the, you can't see behind the platforms where there's a warm-up area because a warm-up is key for any athlete. To, for, for, to, for, for, for injury prevention and performance. Especially on the first events of the day where the athlete may have, you know, been plagued by competition nerves and may not have eaten or drank as much as they needed to, but let's make sure that these athletes are able to exhibit their full power here today speaking about that game i'll ask you what is your routine for when you go to these events no, paul has his i have mine but when you go compete like kind of like what is your pre like work up to it when it comes to nutrition because i think people overlook that a lot oh on that day of it's just all carbs it's all carbs at that point let's get some pancakes <laughs> let's get some potatoes let's get some some cereal oatmeal whatever it be the athlete, their bodies are running off of fuel all day long. Mm -hmm. They have ideally recovered as much as they needed to in the days prior to this. When they wake up on that morning, it's just about loading that rocket with fuel for this time to take off. And so, you know, on, on competition mornings, I will make sure I have ample time to wake up, eat my breakfast, feel good. The challenging part, though, is that night before. It's the nerves of the day ahead, knowing everything that's about to happen, envisioning the competition, yes. envisioning your competitors. Oh, look at lane five. We got a yes. cheering section behind us going absolutely nuts. One of our master's level athletes, she's attacking that axle. Look at that, and that's the all or nothing we were talking about. 100%. Look at that, oh, look at that. Outstanding. And then she controls the axle to the ground like a like, like a, a boss. Excellent control the whole way through. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, What's that? Let's go. Let's go. It's standing room only behind us, Gabe. Yeah. I'm literally feeling. I'm literally feeling the breaths. Oh, it's on the awesome. Back of my neck right now. Oh yeah. Now, and this this lady is. There's no quit in any of these athletes. Is she is no all quit. fight. Now this is nationals, right. baby. Yep. She there left it go. all on the platform. Way to go. Gabe, you've done international travel. What's the most unusual thing you've eaten, sir? 
Oh, <laughs> black pudding in Scotland. Oh, boy. I've heard of that. It, is it's it delicious, but you don't ask what goes into it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I would have I've to say heard that of takes it. the cake. As most things in life. As most things in life. But I will say it was good enough to where I was getting it every morning I was there. Oh, nice. All right, we have a new athlete on lane five. This is Leslie Nickman, another Texan right here. Oh, here we go. I have known Leslie since I started competing. It's so great to see her still pushing the bounds of her performance and chasing championship events. It's awesome. Let's see what she does in lane five. That's one of the coolest things about this sport, in any strength sports, is that child pool. You hear like competitions, really they're meets because the more you compete, the more people you're going to know. You're just going to grow your strength family, and you always get excited when you see somebody that you've been around, you've trained with, or watched grow compete at a level like this. Or, or you get to meet somebody like I, I'd never met Gabe till an hour ago, and like I knew who I knew of him, I knew of his legend, but now to get, he's like he's all class. He is. I, I'm so glad he can join us today and be part of this. It's amazing. Uh, strong people are super humble. The stronger you are, the more humble you are. Well, it's uh, it's because we're all chasing that same goal, and we know what goes into it. But I, I am very proud to be here. It's a. Uh, it's a, like I said earlier, it's a beautiful weekend to be strong. She's all smiles finishing that lift. I'm going to name him Golden Voice Gabe already oh because he is <laughs> sweet. Voice Gabe. We need Golden Voice Gabe. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm, watching, sure you uh, might, I'm sure you might have been called worse. <laughs> well, we, we won't go down that road. I don't want to strain my mind on trying to remember. I heard the English strongman fans to be a little bit uh, rowdy, but if you're in England, they had those big competitions. The fans might get rowdy. Oh, oh look at lane, lane three. three. Look at lane three. They're oh, going nuts. Yeah, there she goes. As Gabby Burgles are in lane three. I think her time might have expired right before she got it. But uh, a extremely well-built athlete. Heck of a just, competitor. And, and technically perfectly sound. She just muscled that log up. Or the axle, rather. The action is fast and furious. And still we have in seven and eight, we have still the lever deadlift. There's a myriad of athletes going. I see it looks like the, the heavier teens, lighter weight, young faced gentlemen are going. Lane five, we have a gal in. She's in the fight, ready. She has the clean and she's working on that press. Lane six, the athletes coming up to the axle. For some of these athletes, the clean might just be that determining factor right there. If they can get it to their shoulders, they've got it, but that's a big if. That is where the biceps, the hips, the legs, the back, it all comes into play. Whereas that launch for the overhead press is mostly legs and shoulders. Those that are watching lane seven and eight are still on the lever. Like we said, it's the largest class we have this morning. They're getting all fired up over there. Lane seven was happy to finish that yes, he ladder. Was. Yes, he was. Love to see it. But yeah, I think uh, also the axle, staple of strongman, I believe. Here comes Heather McDonald. She is coming up to the axle on platform three. Actually, no, she's she, she addressed it with somebody else. She's, she'll be soon. Another young lady's coming up there. Thank you to Gainiac Nutrition. Thank you to Pioneer Fit, LeMaster Barbell, Impact Mouthpieces, Intech Strength. Sticks and Stones. You, you familiar with that company, Sticks and Stones, sir? I am. I see. I see David, the owner, walking around here, helping out with some of the judging and, and equipment uh, racking and, and setting up. He's a great guy, and it's great oh, to see yeah. his business take off. And I actually have a nice set of Husafell replicas that he built for me for one of my competitions, awesome. and they look just like the Husafell stone out of Iceland. Incredible craftsmanship, and uh, like I said, it's so great to see his business thriving. Awesome. Yeah, he builds strongman equipment. Check him out, Sticks and Stones. That's S-T-I-X and Stone. Check him out online. Super nice guy. Cast a big shadow. He's well north of 300 pounds. Like, he is, I always look up to him. I, I, I feel small next to him. He's a huge man. Lane six is one heck of a cheering community right now next to us. She was excited about that. If you watch lane two, she's getting into that almost that Olympic style lift. She gets way down, does that split jerk with it. The athletes are amazing today. They are on fire. We have seen nothing but great performances and not to jinx us, I haven't even seen an injury. Thank goodness. I stubbed we, my toe this morning when I got out of bed. <laughs> oh, boo hoo. <laughs> well, let, let, let's, let's hope that is the pinnacle of any injury. That's today. what I said. I said, let it happen to me. Jesus. On lane five, we have a lady who's, I'm 55. I'm guaranteed she's about my age or a little bit. 
Doesn't look a day over 39, but I think she's massive. She is kicking ass on that axle game. That one right up. She's just smoking it. All right, looks like that lane eight is finally done with the lever. They're going to switch over and transition to the axle. The axle press. Lane seven still going. Folks, thanks, you've, thanks for joining us online. As you can see, the action's fast and furious. If you need the specifics, I direct you to ironpodium.com. Pull that up. Pull the U.S. Strongman Nationals up, and you can follow the scoreboard for free. It'll give you all the names of the competitors and what they've lifted. A quick turn turnover, we are moving fast. The axle press is fully underway with the exception of lane seven. And what you've seen is you'll see the expediters on lane five now adding weight. So as the different, the different weight classes lift different event weights. I, I don't have them for you right now, folks. I do my best, ironpodium.com does, but what I see them adding is about 20 pounds to uh, uh, the axle on lane five. So the weights go up depending upon the weight classes uh, and also on the age classes. When you get into the masters, the weights are a little bit lesser. But on lane three, that athlete, she is just smoking it. She has really good form. See that jerk form? Amazing, Gabe. And on lane four, I know that's a heavy axle. It's looking like we got two 45 pound plates on each side of that bar. She is gearing up her shot, getting ready for a launch. And it is just massive weight. You can feel the ground thud when it hits. Yeah, the, the, the reverberations in this arena are amazing. Yeah, I love it. Hi at Regency Dallas, if you can hear. Excuse me. I could. And I want to give a shout out to our Axle Press sponsor. Okay, From a small yeah, shop in Houston, Texas, they have built some of the best equipment in the nation. I am talking about Texas Power Concepts, owned by Frank Gonzalez himself. I have several pieces of equipment he's made for me over the years, and they are just, they will stand the test of time over and over and over again. Whether you're a novice or a pro, let Texas Power Concepts equip your home gym or your facility. You will not be disappointed. And you're going to hear it over and over probably at the end of the stream. No, not probably, but you will, is that these incredible sponsors coming together wanting to showcase their, not only their equipment, but also showcase these athletes' test of strengths. And it's absolutely humbling that they do that. Another sponsor today's 1836 Kratom. They're, it's made by Stedding & Sons Mercantile, so check them out on Instagram. They're manufacturer of 1836 Kratom, which is an American-owned company based in Austin, Texas. They proudly work with providers from West Kalimantan, Indonesia. It's founded by a husband, father, fitness enthusiast, and musician. They believe in kindness, compassion, love, health, wellness, and freedom of choice. They're incredibly grateful for our wonderful customers that share these values with them. Their founder is a graduate of University of Florida, so he's a Gator, and he's been certified as a personal trainer. Their team is dedicated to expanding health and wellness knowledge through lifelong learning. So thank you to 1836 Kratom, Steading & Sons Mercantile for sponsoring this amazing event today. We're watching lane one continue to endure that 155 pound axle, the clean, just proving to be a bit of a challenge. And so what you've seen now, folks, on lane three and four, they put on wagon wheels, Gabe. The wagon wheels have re replaced the bumper plates. So some of the athletes will be cleaning bumper plates and some will be cleaning wagon wheels. Do you train with a pair of wagon wheels, sir? I, I have before, but I actually have some tires that I took off of my uh, Chevy Colorado that I rigged up with, you know, believe it or not, just like Texas Power Concepts made these axles, Texas Power Concepts made some little hubs oh, that cool. I installed to the tires, and now they're rack loadable onto bars. So. Outstanding. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Strongman, you got to have these big, bulky objects to just make the bar look cooler. <laughs> yeah, yes. right. as an instant wow shit. factor. Yeah. It's all show. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's bringing back, like when I was a kid, before you guys were born, there were pictures of Kaz and John Paul Sigmerson li lifting axles in Europe, and they brought them back through the magic of, hey, that's a great piece of a, and multiple companies make them. They're really neat. My gym has them, and uh, wow. I, 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 I suggest anybody check out all the equipment that's available. Look at the lane number six. A machine. All business. Look at that weight. Just, oh, I love that feeling of that. 
got a mouthpiece in. She is all business and attacking that. Rhythmic and explosive. She needs to keep that pedal down and fit as much work as possible into this minute. She continentals it up to her belt, which is a mixed grip clean, and then she's getting the press. A strong lady. You also got lane three and four, or at least lane three is definitely uh, on the deadlifts as well. They move down to the next event. And looking at my score sheet, she's a master too in lane, she has to be a master in lane six. So she, she weighs either 148 or 165, so. Yeah! Woo! Wow, they are going ballistic next to me. She is happy about that <laughs> performance. And she should be. And, and folks, what happened was she ran out of time and that she pressed as many times right. possible in 60 seconds. Right. That's amazing. That is amazing. And that is ideal, to be able to train yourself to a point where you can cram as much work into that minute as possible, not having to pace yourself but just moving on through, blazing through the reps with control, with finesse, with power. That's exactly what she did in lane number six. 100%. Yeah. And uh, an old power lifter like me, that was always three seconds of fury. Well, you need sustained power to be a strong man, to be honest with you. It's sustained power to go for a minute or more. And the one thing, too, about this specific national event that we have right now is that in typical strong man, you know, you, if you come in first, they're going to put you at last, so you get a longer break. John and the Megan said, absolutely not. This is so many people here. Basically, your position is your position, so you got to go. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that's a, I agree with that decision fully. Yes. You know, no one wants to be here <laughs> trying to make their performance endure no. until 10 o'clock at night. No, no. Yeah. They, they've learned a lot. And point being, I misspoke. Those are deadlifts. They are on to the third event yeah. in less than an hour. I yes. believe they're warming up right now. But Yeah, they're going to be doing axle, yeah. axle deadlifts with the wagon wheel, so those aren't cleans. I misspoke, folks. Hey, you know, this is quite interesting to see these first three events play out. We had the lever uh, deadlift ladder, a deadlift event. We had the axle clean and press, which, if you think about that clean, a back power deadlift type motion. And then you have the axle deadlift itself. These athletes' backs are going to be smoked oh. after these first three events. And then, Look at lane number two. And that's the beauty. As Gabe is relating, as an international world strongest man competitor, he knows, like, unless you competed at the USS Strongman Nationals today, you don't know what this event was like. You can see it online, and we appreciate the follow, but you don't know how grueling it was in the pace. I don't think I've ever seen a pace of a competition so quick, to be honest with you. And it, it's, but it gives the athletes a chance to perform while they're hot and ready to go. Exactly, exactly. The closer we can have the day of competition replicate a day of their training, especially in terms of like how long the day lasts, exactly. the better we're gonna see performances. 100%. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you to the 300 and now 18 viewers of the stream. Please get out there, share this thing, let them know this is going on on this fantastic Saturday here in Dallas, Texas. This is only the morning show. We still have the afternoon show to go, which will go around probably around 1300 to 1 o'clock. So, hey, you got a whole day of straw, man, if you want to go and tune in to us. Lane number two, looking ferocious oh my with God. the explosiveness she cleans and presses that axle. Lane number one also answering that call. Now, these athletes so far have left everything on the table. 100%, I think. Thank you for our 318 viewers currently and growing. Uh, remember, you can check out the scoreboard live on ironpodium.com for free. Ask us a question, like, share, and subscribe. Push out the Valor and Venom YouTube channel. Gabe, do you have some social media that you'd like to, to plug while people are listening? Because uh, people want to follow. I want to know what it is. My, my, I am most active on Instagram, <laughs> at Texas Titan Gabe. You can reach out to me there. I would love to connect with you all. Anyone who's got anything they want to talk about, any questions, find me there on Instagram, at Texas Titan Gabe. I also try to get some YouTube content out on my YouTube channel. But uh, I, I am most active there on Instagram. Looking forward to meeting you all there. Oh, awesome. Uh, Sean, did you hear that? He's the t Texas Titan. So t Texas Titan. We no right. longer have to hear of Titan Micah Hearn, which, if oh, you know geez. who that Here is. Go. Here we go. Uh, let me oh, just boy. tell you, look at my YouTube page, Paul L. I beat him in powerlift in 95 at the Cal State, <laughs> and he never did a meet again. But he's an influencer. So, Gabe, is, I'm a huge fan. I didn't know your Instagram. Thank you for your social media, sir. Absolutely. Had to throw that out there, Sean. Check it out on YouTube, Paul L. It has 300,000 views, but what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, God, I love you. Oh, bro. now, you, the athlete on four, did you, did you, were you familiar with her, Gabe? I think you said her name before, or no? 
Mistaken? Uh, oh, no, she's no, just no. warming up. Okay. She's just warming up. Just warming up. Gabe knows most of the athletes. We try to get you the correct name. Ironpodium.com. Check out the scoreboard for free for has, this event. It has been really cool uh, doing commentary at a lot of these shows leading up to nationals right here today. I've seen some of these athletes, especially in the, the Texas regions, grow from those am those almost amateur local level events. And now here they are at the national championships. And that's one of the coolest things to see the growth of not just you know myself over the years, but all the people I've gotten to meet in those enduring journeys, continuing to persist and chase the dreams of strength. 100%. And and what, what it is, there's a standard in strength because the weights are known. People know what the weights are. This isn't like, oh, any other sport, if you will. Like, oh, I wonder if I get into Major League Baseball out of high school. I wonder if I could play football. And it, it, the weights don't lie. The bar don't lie. You know if you're, if you're able to do the weights at a national level show, you should go to it. You should, can, you should qualify for it and compete because there's nothing like a Nationals. This is like a reunion. As I pan around, there's over 2,000 people in this amazing facility at the Hyatt Regency Dallas. What, Gabe, what would you say is the, the biggest event you've ever been in terms of attendance? Maybe an international event where in England I see they go, they draw like 10,000 or something? I think it was my first Giants live outing at the World Deadlift Championships in 2021. It was oh. in Manchester, and it was a stadium filled with over 5,000 people. Oh, wow. And that's where I pulled 1,000 pounds for the first time. So those memories of just looking up that's at the crowd amazing. and feeling them, it was uh, those will be forever imbued into my mind. That's amazing. And, uh, but but also the Shaw Classic last year, that, that one packed the house. I I can only imagine what it's going to be like this year. Yeah, but you're... when you get so many people in the room cheering for these athletes, putting their bodies on the line, giving months of training all to these moments, these brief moments of competition, that environment, I mean, you can hear it at home through the mic. We're picking up a lot of the cheers yeah. behind us. It is just. <laughs> I have no ambient mics. This is just what's coming through us. Yeah. I mean, it's a packed house here. It is electric, and you love it. The athletes get supercharged by it, and it just helps them even further give their best stuff. You know, I think the best thing about this sport is that it has grown. I think probably because of maybe YouTube, probably because of any social media. I mean, it has really taken off. There was kind of a low for a little bit, but I think in the past pretty much like seven years, it's really taken off. Well, let's not forget a huge power player there, live streaming, just Absolutely. like we are doing here today. Absolutely. That has paid it off big time in growing the sport and bringing the experience to the viewers, fans, friends, and family at home. So we, thank we, you all for tuning in and watching this because you are helping grow the sport that we all love. Oh, absolutely, and we love doing this. Like I said before, and I say it again, you know, it's seeing some of these things that you never have seen in your life. Uh, we just had, what, a Masters out here, you know, about 50-plus, 60-plus, and they're sitting there doing an axle press. If that doesn't motivate you, I don't know really what does. I would liken it to the growth of this as to, uh, when I lived in California, my friend used to roll with the Gracies, and I got to meet Hoist Gracie that won the first two UFCs. Like, Fighting is universal. You can always it, it, it fan favorite. Well, strength is universal. So it's that's why it's led to the growth. Of this people recognize to pick huge things up. The man next to me deadlifted a half a ton with his body, with his hands, I with his body, like that, and, Paul. and he's lived to be. Look at how pretty he is now. He's lived to be. Oh. He's he's shaved up and clean, looking on the mic for you. But think of the amazing physics that went behind that. So strength is universal, and that's why it continues to grow at an exponential rate. And it is a phenomenon that has been celebrated since the dawn of time. 100%. You know, there, there's something yes, primarily within each of us that yeah. loves to discover that power that we all have to interact with the heavy things in this world. 100%. And I like to say this as a parent. I was talking to Gabe before the start today, and he's a proud parent of a 16-year-old beautiful daughter. 16-month-old. 16-month-old, yeah. I'm, I'm going to oh, have patience until we get to 16. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I misspoke. But yeah. But that being said, when, when the baby comes, when they slap it, you're not thinking, I hope it's smart, I hope it's popular, just I hope it's strong to survive on its own. As soon as the doctor, that's a, that goes through your mind. Is, and, and it's just the element, not that you have to compete. We love everybody to train and compete, but strength is elemental for existence. Absolutely. That's what it is. It's one of the components to a, uh, a life full of vitality, I would say. 100%. And lane number three is underway officially on the axle deadlift. It's looking like 350 pounds on that bar. And it is an axle, so we have that same thicker grip that we had on the axle press. You'll see athletes utilizing either an over-under grip or using straps to lift it like she is. But the axle is raised slightly off the ground. I believe this is about a 12-inch bar height with those wagon wheels. I might be mistaken, but 13. it is right it's 13. 13 inches. And it is right in what I like to call no man's land, where you miss out on a lot of that push power off of a standard height bar. And you see on, on lane number three, the bar is right below her knees. 
right at that transitional point where the knees stop pushing, the hips start extending forward. This is going to be a big test of lower back strength, especially on these heavier weights because the bar is higher. 100%. They say there's, there's over 660 muscles in the human body, and to deadlift, I think it hits about all of them. I think so, too, even down to the tongue. <laughs> everything, everything is working. If it's not actively moving the weight, it is bracing with 100% intensity. And Get so as so a 1,000-pound deadlifter, <laughs> tell, the, tell the crowd at home how you feel about three hours after a deadlift workout. Be honest. Three hours after a deadlift workout? <laughs> You're sleeping. <laughs> hungry and asleep. <laughs> Even if I just ate, I'm still hungry. Like, Gabe, I got a question for you. I mean, it's a common question. I'm sure people have asked it a you know, hundred times, but figure eights are conventional straps when it comes to deadlifting. What's your personal choice? And can you kind of explain maybe those have never ever, ever oh, seen a deadlift or what those that is? Right, so we can see on lane number five and six right now, they are both using what we call figure eight lifting straps. And just like the name suggests, they are in the shape of a figure eight. The athlete will wrap under one end and thread their, their hand through the loop, and this will lock them to the bar. Compared to a conventional lifting strap where the athlete wraps over and over and over again, if the athlete did let go of the figure eights, it would be harder for that bar to fall out of their hands. Now, what I would say is that the old school style lifting strap, not the figure eights, those are indeed old school. So you will have strongman purists especially those who trained back in the day. No offense no, to any no. strongman purists out there, but they tend to not like figure eights because they're not old school enough. <laughs> figure eights will allow the athlete to strap in quickly and not let go of the bar, which can be problematic yeah. in the off chance that the athlete might pass out, they will stay attached to the bar. But like here, when the athlete has a time limit, they're trying to fit as much time as possible or as much work as possible into the time, the quicker they can strap in and be ready to go, the better, the more we will see out of them. And so that's where I think figure eights have a place. But there is, like I said, there is a lot of the old school that does not like figure eights. And I get it. I understand it. And I understand the safety aspects of them. But if the athlete is moving well and the right way and knows how to use their equipment, these figure eights will pay off and allow them to do more. We will see more strength, more reps, more power. And that's what I want to see. That's what the crowd wants to see. That's what we're here for. I couldn't agree more. And I was yesterday while they were setting up the spot, I went and saw Cerberus's table. They have some amazing figure eight straps. And they sell regular old school straps. And in training, any any accomplished strength athlete will tell you you need a few tools in your toolbox to accomplish it, to, to, to be successful in the gym. And the realm of straps, period, we might have some power lifters out in the audience listening or, or watching at home. And they might ask, well, why are the athletes wearing straps in the first place? This is deadlift. We should test their grip strength. In Strongman, we have events like Farmer's Walk, like Hercules Hold, events specifically for grip strength. Here on Deadlift in Strongman, we want to see how strong their legs are, how strong their back is, without having to worry about the grip. We've got other stuff for that. So that's why straps will be allowed. We want to see full power from their legs and back. And Gabe, in lane number four, the individual, she's wearing a sort of kind of like a, 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 like a suit or whatnot. Lane number six. I'm sorry, lane number six. Apologize. Yeah. So what is that she's got on? That is a deadlift suit. And it is it is very similar to like wearing a, a knee sleeve or an elbow sleeve. It provides some extra compression across the body. And it can give the athlete a little bit more of a spring on the ground. You can imagine that when she squats down to that bar, all the tightness of the suit is wanting to spring her back up into place. Now, that's not to say that the suit will lift the weight for her because once that bar pops up off the ground and it is about halfway through the motion, all of that is still hurt. But it can give a little bit of a spring off the ground, and they are allowed in today's competition. Some athletes will choose to wear them, some will not. I can say from personal experience that they are extremely uncomfortable, and they make it very hard to breathe. So when you're doing a rep event like this, I have had, uh, let's see, my first World's Strongest Man, we were allowed to wear suits, but I opted not to because I felt like I could get more reps on that depth event if I was able to breathe a little bit better, and I did. It's one of those tools that the athlete has to practice and decide if it is for them or if it is not. And again, that's the reason I ask those questions because obviously Gabe is the world-renowned expert. And it just goes to show you that there are different ways you can get in the sport. Find what works for you. I know a lot of people probably give you advice, and we've all had advice like that. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Listen, if it makes it the point that you can get in here easily and what you enjoy doing it, that's going to make you excel. Absolutely. And, and we, we are all built so different. I mean, just look at this abundance of athletes here and all the various walks of life, shapes, forms, ages. We're all built differently, so it's, we can't all lift exactly the same way, but we can take notes from each other, and we can bask in each other's company and feed off of each other's strength. 
And I want to give a huge kudos and a bravo to every athlete here today because it takes a lot of confidence and a lot of mental capacity to get your foot through the door in competing, first of all, but to take that next step to embark on a national championship event. I know plenty of athletes who might have qualified, but just decided that they weren't ready or they, they, they might be a little too intimidating. But everyone here today took that step. They're here and they are giving it their all and going to see where they stack up in lane terms three. of across the nation. And lane three is definitely giving her all. I think she's going to go until the time stops. You watch. Gabriella Bergholzer, she, she is a force to be reckoned with. She, uh, I, I believe she's currently active duty with the U.S. Army right now, I believe. Wow, but that's thank, impressive. Thank, she, thank has, you. she has come out to our competitions before in South Texas, and she's just a great ambassador for the sport, a great ambassador for the armed forces, and obviously a great deadlifter as you see her bang out these reps. Well, there's not enough time in a day. She'll keep going all day with that rhythm. She will. It's cardio for her. Yeah. And, folks, if you're watching, and, and as Gabe was relating earlier about the different pieces of equipment you can use, it's before an ev when an event's announced, all the rules are online so the competitors know. And last night, uh, we even streamed it, there's a rules briefing. So all the competitors get in the night before after they do their weigh-ins, and they're explaining the rules for the event. So there's no, and there's allowed to ask questions and discussion and so forth. The rules are set. It's not discussion per se, but they're allowed to ask any questions. So I'm sure you have experience with that at the World's Strongest Man. That I've heard some of those rules briefings get a little contentious. <laughs> they do, they do. But it's one thing I like to tell uh, athletes I coach, and it's one thing I keep uh, as a very loud uh, voice to myself is the only bad question is the one left unasked. And these athletes need to know every aspect about what they're doing here today, even down to you know what straps or what suits they can or can't wear. So I see lane number four. That's one of my former athletes right there, Maddie Garcia, also from the Rio Grande Valley of South Texas. She is a strong deadlifter, but we'll see how well she's trained in these months leading up to the 60-second max reps axle deadlift. Right, and as you alluded to before, how well she's recovered from the two previous events. How well all of them have recovered. Their, their backs are smoked. 100%. Oh. I imagine those, uh, <laughs> those lower lumbar back muscles are rot tight like steel cables for a suspension bridge right now. <laughs> but most of these athletes, when they get done, they'll go to the back wherever they have their area set up, and they'll probably lay down on the floor with their legs up on a chair to decompress a little bit. Or bust out the massage guns. Yeah. Number five doing a clinic right now in a smooth rhythm. She's got some great positioning oh, with her yes. foundation. She's in her groove and just getting rep after rep. I, I'm, it's easily double digits is coming out of lane five right now. She'll hit double digits in reps. But again, you know, thank you guys for going. I see right now it says, you know, what, the, what does the time mean? in their scores. The time, Alex, the time is what's going to basically determine what their scores are. So the time is pretty much what it is that they're doing the reps in. So say you have 60 seconds, all right, so you do six second time and you did 60 reps, that's what you're going to go off. So that's going to be very much their calculation on your podium and how they determine what is what. Right, and if that question is regarding the, uh, the deadlift ladder with that lever lift, then that will be the completion time that it took for them to get all five reps on the deadlift. On the axle press and the axle deadlift, the athletes will be scored by how many reps they are able to compete complete in that 60 second time frame. So event one was a time measure, and events two and three will be a rep count. Lane five. Another machine. She she doesn't even use this strap. She's got them there just in case. Come on! Lane three, we have Heather McDonald going for her deadlift. Keep that pace! I know you're watching at home, you can maybe hear it, but when you feel it, you feel these weights slamming down, you hear the crowd behind you, you just, I don't know, man, it just hits you in a certain way. You love it. You start getting adrenaline sitting down in the seats. It's impossible to be sitting down it, calmly it's hard. and candidly when the ground it, is shaking beneath your feet. It's hard doing this right now, man. Listen, I mean, Lane listen to the crowd behind us. <laughs> she is a fan favorite, folks. Yes. Masters, Masters lightweight female. All fight. I know we said double digits, but she may have well gone into 20 plus. Oh my goodness. Wow, everybody's watching her. That's amazing. Everybody right now is watching her. Which is like a rep every second. That's amazing. Excellent, excellent cardio capacity. God. I think she just ran out of time too. I mean, she, she still wanted to go more. I see Hannah Coldiron in lane two. She is a uh, one of the 
running forces behind Depth Before Dishonor Squad Company, one of our vendors here on site. Yes, sir. She's also competed at the official Strongman Games before, so we can expect a strong performance out of her. That bar looks heavy. I'm guessing we're about the 350 mark or, there, or somewhere around there. Now, speaking about her is that, you know, you have a lot of, like you said, pile lifters are probably watching people that haven't seen the sport before. Now, she's doing kind of the hitching action. Right. So people have to understand is that this isn't a static delt where you have to continue to move like a pile lifting. It's, it's strongman. It's so a strongman. It's allowed. We just want to see that bar get from A to B. And as long as the athlete is vividly deadlifting, you know, hitching, ramping, straps, they're all allowed. Right. Yeah, in the rules briefing last night, Jonathan, the one of the Texas State reps for USS, said just you can't rest it on the top of your knee, but you can hitch it up your thighs, as, as Gabe alluded to. Leslie Nickman in lane five. Like a like a piston. Yeah, she's like got to machine. follow that performance we just saw from her previous uh, rival right there. But she's looking cool and collected. And again, this is a woman who I've known for a decade already. She, she got to see me start my path in strongman. It's great to see her still working hard and banging out these deadlift reps. You know, I'm a caveat into that game. You may have said it on the stream earlier, but what got you into this? Like, what was your driving force, or what made you, you know what, I want to pick up the heavyweight today? Oh, it all goes back to some very early childhood memories of watching World's Strongest Man reruns on Thanksgiving mornings and things like that with my, my dad and grandfather. But nice. it wasn't until I started playing rugby in college where I was like, all right, I've got a foundation. Let's build on it, and let's see what we can do. And then I'll discover deadlifting, and that was, that was the... That was how it all started. Oh, wow. Yeah, the deadlift has, uh, being the old school historian I am, maybe you don't know this stat. I, I don't know how old you were in 2003. Uh, 23. Okay. In two Sorry, 13. Yeah, okay. 13. <laughs> okay. Math. Math, I know. Caveman brain. We didn't ask, but we had a, we, our lifters add by 45. But <laughs> think about this, folks, at home. In 2003, there were only nine people in the world that had deadlifted over 900. What do we have now? Oh, I don't know. I, know I, I, know I became uh, the 13th or 14th man to deadlift 1,000 pounds it's in a, history. It's amazing. Yeah, so it, it's crazy God. how much the bar gets pushed. But, you know, that one of the undeniable uh, shared common denominators is getting to see that it is possible. Seeing someone else do it and be like, okay, they did it. Maybe I can do a little bit more. Right. Well, and what I've said, because I was a powerlifter first, then strongman took off. I took strongman are the best conditioned strength athletes because some powerlifters got big, fat, and happy doing single reps. Well, power, think how many reps you do in a strongman workout and in a training cycle. Therefore, you did more work, so you got stronger. It's, just, it's the reality of it. You can't, right. Strength doesn't lie in the performance. The strongman today are by far the greatest deadlifters in the world. They're, they're a hybrid athletes that, although mm -hmm. it is taken to an extreme of strength, I like to think that the strongman is most capable, or the strongman is most capable to handle any sort of physical task thrown at them simply because of the way we train. And I'm looking at each of these competition platforms, and I see that big sandbag behind each of these platforms that the athlete later on in the contest, either the next event or the one after, will have to drag. And I mean, that's just, that's just a whole other type of strength where you're going to have to drag a giant worm of a sandbag. That's not a squat, a deadlift, or a bench press. That is something very different. Yeah, it, it, Jonathan met with us last night and he said, after preparing them for this, he said, I'm going to give them away after the event, seriously. So <laughs> we're gonna, we'll announce that. And if you need did, one, yeah. but they're, they're, you're, you're, because of your strength, you can, Gabe, the Golden Voice Gabe can call that a worm. That thing's like a python. <laughs> it's about eight feet long with unwieldy. So he, what he explained is in it. I don't know what he said's in it, but it's it's going to be another grueling task of strength. And these athletes have probably never seen it, and they'll be doing it when they're exhausted. Well, you got the smaller sandbag is I believe it's 300 pounds, and then the heavier sandbag is 450 pounds. So yeah. when so. when we were in here setting up as of Thursday, and the athletes start trickling in, that's what they all said. Can I see the sandbag? That's what they they wanted, were very yeah. interested because they've never seen anything like that. Well, it has been very interesting to see the athletes try to train with whatever equipment they have at home. I've been following along with multiple athletes, some of them attaching a sandbag to some anchor chains and dragging them, others just pulling their cars with like a wide ball handle. Uh, but none of them really have this exact bag, so it's gonna be fun to see them all kind of dive in, just like that, that lever deadlift. Not, not many athletes have an apparatus like that to train on. So right. who prepared themselves the best? We'll find out. Thank you for joining us in the Val and Venom YouTube stream. Like, share, and subscribe. My name is Paul Leonard, seated next to world-class, world strongman competitor, Gabe Pena, Golden Voice, Sean Christ on the other mic. 
Thank you for joining us. Like, share, and subscribe. And uh, this is sponsored by Ganiac Nutrition, Pioneer Fit, The Master Barbell. I'm trying to hit all the sponsors. 1836 Kratom, Barbell Rescue, Barefoot. I'm not trying to burn through these too quick for Cerebus, but thank you for joining us. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave some comments. We read your comments. Makes the, the, the stream better, and thank you for joining us. If you want to see all the uh, sponsors of this event, I made a little quick little video. Put it on the YouTube page about a few days ago, actually a week ago. You can go on there and check them all out. I'll give you a quick little rundown. So Gain Nutrition, which is the main sponsor here, we're Gainiac Nutrition. We started back in 2020. I started Gainiac to offer the best supplements at the best prices. We support the health and fitness industry and do our best to help anyone and everyone reach their goals, no matter if they are just starting out or if they're seasoned pro. We stay involved with the community and try to help all that we can with the events. We sponsor athletes in a wide range of sports, including bodybuilding, strongman, powerlifting, MMA, and we even have a Texas Tech track athlete. We offer coaching and nutrition guidance from our elite team of pro athletes if we can make a positive impact on someone's life and to help them reach their goals, then we're doing what we love. Our goals are your goals too. Thank you, Gainiac Nutrition. Lane number six, wearing the deadlift suit, banging out reps. Lane number five, right there as well. They're both looking so rhythmic, cool yeah. and collected. And, and both yeah. five and six right in front of us are, are masters females, which means they're over 40, maybe over 50. They don't show their age, but they're performing like machines. I want to call attention to lane number seven, one of our teen male athletes. He is seemingly just one motioning almost snatching that bar. They call that, that the Viper, bar. right? Do they call that a Viper They press? call it a Viper on a log. I don't, I'm not sure what to call it. <laughs> this looks like a, a muscle snatch to me, but wow. Obviously, we, someone who has just strength for days on this particular event. You're not going to see it right now because she just got up on lane one. There was a little bit of an accident, but apparently she's okay. We got her with the trainers right now. She walked in the back, and Shory joined us here soon. So if we find out if, uh, if anything's serious, I'll let you guys know. But uh, as of right now, it looks like she was smiles, and she was okay. Yeah, sometimes on deadlift exertion, people will black out. We've we've all been there. Gabe, you've blacked out, I'm sure. Yeah, well, I've, I don't know if I full on blocked out, but the lights have definitely come very close to going <laughs> out. Like, full wait, wait a minute. <laughs> but you know, there's just such immense pressure built up within the body that it's it can happen, and it can happen. But that's why it's so great to see each one of these platforms filled with staff, spotters, loaders, judges fellow competitors, anyone ready to just jump in and catch if need be. Yeah, support staff. And at the rules briefing last night, this this event is staffed by, there's an EMT here. There's a team of, there's a professional EMT here in the event. There is a, a, a an injury that needs that attention. So um, all the professionals are here to help, spotters, loaders, volunteers. And uh, that that female athlete, I think, like, like Sean said, she walked off fine. Look at lane number eight. That axle clean is just... Oh, and there goes her axle, almost into the crowd. And lane number seven, just moving out reps on his axle cleaning press too. Another teen athlete. It's great that teens have this this chance to compete in this type, this level of an event. You know, they have this. I agree. I, and I'm watching all these teens, just thinking of five years from now. Are these going to be future oh rivals oh at my the goodness. World Stage? Yeah. They very I, my, well may be. My, my friend Jerry Pritchett's son, Bubba. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bubba. Big Bubba. is <laughs> He is growing at an astronomical oh, yes. rate. Yeah, he, I've got to see him compete out in Arizona in some of the local shows, and he uh, he's certainly on the path and has the genes to be a World's Strongest Man competitor. Well, Bubba was there with us at World's Strongest Man last year, and it, it was great to, to see him immerse himself in the crowd because you know just watching him interact with all of us athletes. He's going to be there someday. Yeah, it's what you see you can become. <laughs> Looks like on lane three, too, they're already done with the deadlifting. They got the uh, axles gone, and I can still see lane one and two, but three looks like they're um, moving on to something else already. Wow, the pace of this. This, this contest began at 8.30 Texas time. It's 9.40 now, and some, some of the uh, lanes have finished with three events, Gabe. The pace is amazing. I love it. I love it. It's just, we, we talked about it before the show. You never know exactly how it's, well it's going to run, but John, Meg, all of their staff, 
everyone here is just making this thing so streamlined. And yeah, it is nonstop action. It's, it's kind of hard to tune in on some specific moments, but it's just incredible to, to see a national championship move so streamless, uh, streamlined. It's great. Yeah, the, the army of blue shirts you see. So competitors wear red shirts if you're just tuning in. And uh, administrators, administrators wear, and judges, timers, scorekeepers, loaders, they wear blue shirts. There's an army of them. But, um, yeah, the, like Gabe said, the action's fast and furious. So if you're trying to, we're doing our best to keep up and honor the athletes. So, But our companion website that's free, ironpodium.com, has the complete updated scoreboard and the list of the roster of athletes, and it documents their performance. So please check them out. It's free. Open up ironpodium.com. Open up the United States Strongman Nationals. And if you look down, click on their, the, the icon of the event. Look for the scoreboard, and it's all there for you. I see way down from us on lane one. That woman is nailing that deadlift. So she'd be a lightweight woman open. She's either 123 or 132 pound class. And she's just making short work of her deadlift. That's a 300-pound bar, judging by those weight cards there. And... Anytime 300 pounds for reps, this is a serious level of exertion, even from that elevated wagon wheel position. It's almost triple body weight. Yeah, yeah. So when you did your 1,000-pound deadlift, what was your body weight? About 310 pounds. So it was over, you're over triple body weight deadlifter. Yeah. Amazing. It, it, it was fun, and I want more. And just like every athlete here, it's... It's so funny when they, they come here to these competitions and they set those personal records. Those personal records mean everything, but you only enjoy them for about a minute before you start thinking about the next one that comes. Yeah, yeah after always a, hungry. After a competition, I used to not be able to sleep because I start thinking, what's next? I yep. just I couldn't wait. All right, Ric Flair tights on level on lane six, Sean. She's back. I don't, want, I don't want to talk about my nemesis of taking away from these amazing athletes She's, you got here today in Dallas, is Texas, baby. She's killing it. Those are the best tights I've ever seen. They are amazing. Jet flying. It's got his sayings on one leg, so we don't know. We're going to get that lady on the mic. We're going to have some It looks like the pace we're going will have some time between uh, the, the, the larger athletes starting at 1 o'clock Dallas time this afternoon. So we'll be grabbing right. people and putting them on the mic. That's what we love. It's an interactive show. We grab you, and it's family-friendly. Just all we ask is you just be uh, respectful on the mic and professional and give us, you know, just enjoy, relax, and give us the best uh, interview we can give you or commentary. Yeah, we've been rocking and rolling about an hour and 21 minutes. I mean, they are making this go very fast, which in a way is good for the athletes. We will have a one-hour hopeful break between the second p.m. show, which should be around 1, 1 1.15 Central Standard Time which means it'll be 2 p.m. for Eastern Standard Time. And for those who are on the Mountain Standard Time and the West Coast, it's going to be probably around 11 a.m. So, or yeah, so that we're going to see what's going on for that. But, hey, we got plenty of strength athletes and sports coming around your way. We, uh, so right now, I'd like to thank you the viewing. We're up to 377, so please, you know, as I always say, like, share, subscribe. But share the hell out of this because I want to make sure that these athlete stories are being told. They have worked so hard to be here at a national stage. We are absolutely proud and humbled to call us action for them. I'm myself, the American outlaw, Sean L. Christ. We got Texas Pena, Titan. The Texas Titan Texas right Titan, here. Texas Titan, Gabe Pena. And we got the American treasure, Paul Leonard. Excited to be here. We have 20 sponsors, and the action is fast and furious. On, on a couple of the lanes, I see them setting up what's going to be called the Texas Coin Hold, but we still have very active deadlifting going on. And, and, and axle pressing. And then we have, we have Jonathan's son on, on uh, love, uh, lane seven, pressing, 14 years old. Wow. At the Nationals. I know, I know uh, Big John calls him Little John, but he is anything but oh, little. Shit. Oh, not at all. <laughs> He's gigantic. And, and you see John in the background right there cheering him on. Now, John Lester, of course, other than being our, our main promoting force in organizing this event, he is also a former national champion himself. Yes, he is. Yes. So he, he has conquered this stage himself before as an athlete, and now he is paying it forward to the next generations, including his own son in hosting this national championship. Yeah, yeah it's, he, a, it's exactly the argument of Archer, but it's exactly what he's done. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's he's getting some good reps with that, too. He's the fight. He's got a great clean, and then he's stabilizing his body and pressing overhead. And in lane six, we have the lady that sang the national anthem beautifully. Yes. Speed about that. 
Gabe, uh, actually, we had the privilege of Valor and Venom of streaming uh, Bubba Pritchard's first contest over at B Strong Powerhouse in Tucson, Arizona a few years awesome, ago. Man. So that was pretty cool to see him at, t at 10 years old in his first strongman competition. So it's like, that's amazing. And he was going against like 13 year olds, 14 year olds, 15 year olds. It's like, well, that's, that's, that's awesome. I'm pretty sure I saw some highlights of that and it, what, a, what yeah. a powerful day that was. Yeah, it was. But that's the biggest thing is that we want the sport to continue to grow, obviously, doing what we do. But that's what you need to do, reach out to the youth of today and make sure that they are understanding how this works, how they can be successful in it, and especially how they can have fun in it, because it will change your life, I promise you that. Wow, she gave it all on Platform 6. That's the lady that's saying the National Anthem. Yes, I think did. one of the fans was yelling her name's Brenda, so I'd hate to misname her, but, man, what a what a competitor and what a beautiful rendition. I like her belt. That's, a, that's quite a sparkly belt. That is quite the belt. I like it. Wow, and, and on the first, um, in, in, a, in the middle lanes, three, four, and five, they were already setting up for the coin hold. Amazing, which is event four. That's amazing, the pace at which it, yes, it will be. So there's five events being contested today at the U.S. Strongman Nationals here in Dallas, and um, over 500 competitors will take to the di eight different lanes, and there'll be five events contested. And here in the morning session, about an hour and 15 minutes into the event, we're already on to uh, event four. Incredible. Strong pace. Gabe, you did U.S. When, when was the first U.S. Nationals you went to, sir? First U.S. Nationals that I went to, um, my first national championship that I went to was, I believe, in 2015. Yeah, 2015. It was a, a different, a different entity hosting the, the national championships, not U.S.S. Got gotcha, you, different federation. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. But that was my first. Uh, had I not torn my bicep on that axle press that I was talking to you about earlier, I might have started sooner. But, but yeah, it, it, it is quite a powerful event. You know, when you start at the state level and you claw your way to the top of a state level contest and then you finally get that nationals invite only to get to the nationals and, and have to claw your way up from the bottom there again. Every time you advance to the next tier of the ladder to climb and ascend the sport of strongman, you are starting from the bottom all over, just with a higher caliber crowd that you immerse yourself with. So it, it really, really the ones who come out on top today have proven themselves at every turn. So when you became, when did you become a national championship? 2015, a champion. I, I won the national championships in 2019. 2019. 2019. I got very close to winning the national championships three years earlier and every year since. But there was those uh, half point losses I was telling you about earlier that kind of prevented me from winning there. But you never forget those type of narrow narrow defeats. Sure. And they, they supercharge you for, for the years to come. It sharpens the sword. And, it definitely uh, does. You know, iron sharpens iron. So when you won in 2019, what city was that in, sir? That was in Quad Cities, Iowa. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Outstanding. I would have loved to have been in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it was Quad Cities, Iowa, and I got my pro card there. Outstanding. And when, so then at 19, you, at 2019, you became got pro status. When was your first international competition, sir? It was my actual, my pro debut was actually World's Strongest Man in 2020. And that oh, was my wow. first international show. Even though it was here in the States, it was, uh, you know, the strongest man in the entire world. Yeah, and it was, it was COVID. It and was COVID, and it, and it was, was during a hurricane in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah. That, that was a wild year for so many, so, so many, many reasons. reasons. And that, uh, Novikov won it that year, correct? Correct. Correct, you did. Uh, I'm just a fan. I haven't met him like you have, uh, but it uh, seems like a, if you're a World's Strongest Man champion, it seems like a no-nonsense type of business guy. He's a no-nonsense guy, but he's also a great guy. And, okay, uh, good. And I, I got to meet him for the first time back at the Arnold in 2017. And he I was just like, who is this Ukrainian kid that beat me by one rep on deadlift? How dare he? But little did I know <laughs> it would be uh, the coming uh, world yeah. champion in the, in the years to come. Sure. And now that's the beauty, folks, watching this at home. Thanks for joining us on Valor and Venom. But through social media, more people feel like they know these athletes, which is great because it used to be back in the old powerlifting days. It was just the magazines, and then maybe you'd see someone at Big Meat. But social media has done so much good for the sport. And then you get to meet them in person. That's my friend from Massachusetts. Came all the way from Springfield, Mass. Right there, I, lane seven? I, yes, I played football back in the day with my head, so sometimes I forget things. <laughs> he offered me he $20. He offered me $20 to play a specific song later in the event. I was like, I can do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've amassed an athlete's playlist, but what we, we, we'll, we'll cut in some music at some points, but we do it when it's appropriate. And the, the action gets so fast and furious, we can't, uh, we can't at times fit it, folks. 
Sean, how are we doing for viewership? Are we hitting 500 yet? No, we didn't hit 500. We topped out at 358, or as we're at right now, we topped out at 380 at one point. So a few people dropped off. Uh, we apologize for that. If there's something that we did, let us know we can make it better for you guys because we definitely want to make sure this is one of the best events that you've ever seen, and especially to highlight all these fantastic athletes that are here today showcasing their feats of strength. Well, I do see four lanes getting ready to get set for the next event. So our action right now is on lanes one, two, seven, and eight. Yeah, seven and eight, if you're just tuning in right now, seven and eight are going to be pretty much going to be here for a very long time. They are the two of the most sought-after weight classes we have in this division we got today. We're pretty much in a lot of excitement so far. So there's more to come. Like I said, this is just the AM show. We still got the PM show that's come on later this afternoon, streaming here at around 1, 1 15 Central Standard Time. Well, lanes one and two moving on through their deadlifts in their respective weights. And Sean, before we go on to the uh, the afternoon show, we will we're going to be streaming the award ceremony too for this class. I yes, believe, yeah, the that's, classes below. Yeah, yes. that's what that's what we were kind of hoping to do. What they want to do, I know John and Megan Lester and the sponsors here. They have an amazing award smorgasbord. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it because I've never seen a strongman event where this many awards have been getting ready to give out and the money that went into it and the prize are pretty unique prize as well. But we're going to try and do all that before uh, before we go to our first break. And following along at home on Bauer and Venom, the YouTube page, we appreciate you watching the stream. Like, share, and subscribe. But also, I draw your attention to ironpodium.com. It will have the updated scoreboard. If you pull, click on the United States Strongman 2023 National Championships, pull, pull up that icon, click on it, and then just scroll down to scoreboard. It'll have a complete list of over the 500 athletes, their respective weight class and age class they're in, and as well as their performance in the completed events. Uh, with in, in half the uh, lanes, we've already done four. We've done three events going into the fourth event, the coin hold. And again, our seven and eighth lanes, they are so busy, and there's so many Masters men competitors that want to get at this uh, sport that uh, they're still contesting the axle clean and press. We got a little bit of a low right now. I'm going to give a shout out to some of the sponsors we got here. When we have Barbell Rescue, while I originally invented the brush while coaching at a local CrossFit gym after we had been stationed in Arkansas for a couple years and a desire to become an owner myself when I retired, but I wasn't seeming to line up. So I thought maybe I could find a particular way to help a gym and my gym owner friends. I literally asked, what's a crappy job in the gym as an owner? Barbell maintenance came to mind, so I started researching the cleaning process. One day, the light bulb went on, and ha-ha, the moment occurred. I asked myself, why is everyone using a flat brush on a round object? I did some research, asked around a bit, put a prototype in my garage, and I've cut up a brush, water bottle, and duct tape. After some validation for those gym owner friends, I felt the need to take a chance and go for it. Let's say the entrepreneurship, product and invention, and manufacturing, and social media know-how wasn't taught in nursing school. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it's been a learning on the fly. A double patent and the team of Barbara Rescue is trademarked. All our inventory is warehouse and farmers branch Texas and ships domestically and internationally from there. We have six U.S. dealers, Rogue Fitness being the most recent, three drop shippings, and three international dealers, two in Canada and one in Sweden. We just began discussion with our product design team in Seattle, Washington, and the factory owner in Tungsi, China, last month about next production and run. Our hope is it to be completed well before the end of the year. We've seriously done more than the first 12 to 15 months of business than I thought, and we'll be doing this for the next three to five years. It's been a mind-blowing, humbling experience. So thank you, Barbell Rescue. If you haven't seen, her, if you haven't seen their product, it's basically a bar that goes a uh, little circular coupling that goes around the actual bar itself, has brush inside, and cleans off all the uh, all the chalk and everything you may have on there. It's a fantastic product. Still going hammer and nail over there in lane seven. Uh, the gentleman's getting okay. He's finished his attempt, but he he went at that axle and I'm. My eyes, Gabe, I think that was 280 pounds in lane seven, right? Is that what that says? That's uh, 180. 180. 180. Yeah, yeah. And lanes three, four, and six, and now five is about to start, the Texas coin hold. The athletes will hold, in open arms outstretched out in front of them, a Texas-shaped coin 
loaded with weight, and they will have to maintain this front hold, keeping it up at a mark that the judges are there to see straight out from their heads, straight out at nose level. If the coin should fall below that mark, the judge will call their time, and that will be their score. So the athlete is obviously attempting to hold this massive Texas coin as long as possible. Front holds are an interesting event, but a staple in strongman. They are, might not be the most action-packed, but the athletes that have trained their deltoids, their upper back, their core to be able to lock in and just tune out, they're the ones that are going to make some serious points here because this is one whole event. In a scope of five events, this is 20% of their score right here. 100%. So we'll get you some weights on that, but I know for the men's weight, if you're watching this at oh, home, it's, it's usually about, about the same as a car battery. So imagine that, holding that out in front of you with straight arms. Or maybe Brian Shaw's lunch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for about that's a pretty accurate comparison. <laughs> Holding it out in front of you for up to a minute, you know. So, oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Pick it up. Pick it up. There goes one of our teen athletes in lane number five, completing her Texas coin hold. And remember, they did the axle press uh, two events ago, so their shoulders may or may not be a little pre fatigued, right? This so, is think strong about man. it like that, yes. This is strong, man. <laughs> you, you are, after that first event, you are not going to be fresh, but. The athlete yeah, will try in between that's events that's and make themselves down. as close to fresh as possible with recovery efforts, whether it be food, massage, stretching, or just total relaxation. Back in the old days, when Strongman first started, guys, powerlifters like me, and then people that lift weights, they'd venture into Strongman and they'd be shocked. I'm like, you know, they threw a contest and a bunch of strong people showed up. They'd be shocked at some of the people that were great at things that you're like, oh my goodness. Because Strongman measures every potential facet of strength. Explosive, raw power, endurance, static, grip. Lane number six has got that coin hold out right now. She's picked it up. And in lane seven, the Masters athlete is trying all he can. Heavier weight athlete. and he uh, They all have the correct haircut, I agree with, for the most part. Um, but um, he, he, he fought that clean, and he just couldn't quite get it over his chest. I'll go ahead and say probably the coin holder right now is probably the one lift that most likely everybody probably has not had a chance to train specifically with that implement they have there because you can grab a dumbbell and do that, but it's not the same as with the apparatus they have. Right, right. This is a, I, I would say the, the best way to train it if they were with a dumbbell would be to hold the dumbbell heads rather than, you know, the handle straight up and down. But it's, it's one of those things where I can see by the roundness of the coin that the biceps will be heavily engaged just because you have to have some sort of a degree of underhand grip. And uh, it, it, to ask the muscles to move weight versus asking them to stabilize and just hold steady are two different things. If you have not trained this, you cannot expect that endurance to be there. I'd like to give a shout out to Julia Smay who's sitting to our far left. She's the Unbroken Strike Gym here on the comment section. She's doing a fantastic job answering all your questions. So we're trying to build this fantastic production. We have all these strength athletes today. So thank you, Julius May. Arizona chair for Strongman. Still, we have oh. Masters athletes attacking the axle in lane seven. Number See, six, lane. she's powering. The leader yeah. shaking. The yeah. arms are shaking. Yes, sir. She's getting to the end of her rope Ooh. there. But that's what you want to see. Yes. If, if the arms stop before they start shaking, did you even go far enough? <laughs> in the far lane from us over there to my left, right rather, is we, we still have, we have female heavier competitors and masters still going. Dude, they're now on to the axle deadlift. And she is going raw, no straps. Love it. Just oh, ready to bang out the reps. Like a piston, listen to that, listen to that rhythm. Yeah, she's, again, there'll be some double digits. You can already tell when somebody gets into it. In lane number seven, our male Masters athlete looking very cool on that first rep. Precise. Oh, yeah. Got that X-Man figure at lockout. Yeah, he, uh, his elbows in line with his ears. Good range of motion in those shoulders. Nice. Oh, yeah. I'm envious. My yeah, shoulders you, don't go back that way anymore. You don't typically <laughs> see that great of range of motion in the Masters athletes, do you? I just saw that, and I'm envious. Yeah, there's a, you know, when, you, when you've walked the path for so long, there's a bit of mileage and wear and tear. It's good to see some healthy shoulders. Lane number two on her axle deadlift, going to the very end of her power capacity right there and locking out a grueling rep. What? Gabe, what was one of your best repetition performances in deadlift? Your 1,000 deadlift's amazing, but what do, you, what do you say? I look back and I rep that four that 
that you impressed yourself? Let's see. I think uh, World's Strongest Man 2020, we had a 770-pound uh, bar that we were lifting with giant d drums at the end. It was normal height. I believe I got that for eight reps. Oh, my wow. goodness. Wow. Wow. But you know what? It was good. But then Jerry Pritchett came after and did nine, <laughs> right. and he looked like he had much more in the tank, but just did what he had to. Arizona's own. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of like, yeah, eight was cool, but ten would have been cool. I tell you what. <laughs> I have a big goal of doing eight hundred for ten. I want to, I want to knock that one off the list soon. Outstanding. Yeah, back from my from my era, that was like Derek Poundstone. Oh man. When he did that, we were like, oh my, oh my goodness, he was. A, Another one of those athletes, one of the strongest men who never won World Strongest Man and came so close, but super nice guy. Might even sometimes these people are here today. Like I, you know, they'll be. I've seen numerous pros here today. I, was, I see Travis Ortmeyer walking around, a yes. fellow World Strongest Man competitor and Texas legend. I see Andrew Clayton, the uh, world champion from official strongman games last year, oh, okay. walking around as well. I mean, these these national championships events are very much reunions and coming together. Yes, sir. A vocal crowd supporting supporting some performances now between the coin hold and our Masters athlete on lane seven. Oh, he's got it. He fought through it. Good. Nice. He got that down command from his judge. And he's, a, he's tall. Tall athletes on an axle press or any overhead press, that's a lot of distance that weight has to clear from ground to overhead. Uh, definitely one where you could judge it at face value and say shorter athletes have it easier, but, you know, there's always caveats to that. But he definitely has a lot of distance that bar has to move. Yeah, the way we're positioned, there's a, there's a computer monitor between us and that, that, um, that lane seven. So some of the athletes I can't see, to be honest with you, but uh, these, these heavier weight class masters, I can. This gentleman's also tall. So when he gets that above him, he's going to take whatever that, I can't see the weight, but it's going to be over about nine feet off the ground right there, with his arm span. Amazing, his power. Strong man. Wow, he's got some shoulder mobility too, Gabe. You know, that's the one thing we actually talked about, Paul and I, right up here, is that it, people don't realize, I think it's harder for us that are kind of like, have longer limbs and are taller than some of these athletes that are a little bit more, you know, like around like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, it, it, it just takes more for us to get these weights to move, especially anything overhead. Yeah, yeah. And you'll see it on some of the deadlifts too, like especially this ele elevated deadlift. The shorter athletes will have less distance the bar needs to travel to lockout. But the flip side is, like when it comes down to things like stones or sandbags, longer arms, longer legs can help you wrap around more objects. So yes. it's not a... Uh, you know, I want to be super tall, I want to be super short for these specific events because there's always pros and cons to each. And it all comes down to the end of the day, who can have the best score out of all five events, not just one out of them in particular. You just nailed, probably, you just nailed on the head, Gabe, is that people think like to win these events, you have to win first place, all the events is gonna be a winner. And we try to tell everybody, no, you just gotta be consistent. You, there's been people that won these things that take second or third place and tell your event, but they got the scores. There's people that have taken first place and then all of a sudden they'll zero out or they get the lowest score and they don't end up winning the thing. And that's why I'm looking at this Texas coin hold right now and, and the athletes that did not prioritize this because it's a, a seemingly more quote unquote innocent implement, they're gonna miss out on some serious points here than those who did and spend their time training it. We got Eric Schmidt there. He's our friend on lane seven from Freak Animal Fitness up uh, outside of Phoenix. He's a Porsche enthusiast, over 50, and I know he's he's won numerous titles, definitely on the state level of Arizona, but he's knee deep into this. That's his second cleaning of the Axel Impress. He's trained by international strongman Marshall Zinn, who is an absolute barrel of fun, just a great guy to be around from Freak Animal Fitness. Him and uh, him and Steve, Steve Vizzles, who competed at Worlds uh, this year in Florida. Uh, I think he came in the top 10, I believe, for his class. There he goes, he's got wow, nice. Lockout. He's got it. And I think and, and I think Eric started strongman later in life. He did, um, he did. And, and picked it up, and uh, he's just he absolutely loves it. He's an avid competitor, military veteran. Wow, way to go! Years. Oh yeah, super nice guy. Yes. And leaving the platform with a big smile on his face. Man, yeah, he, he got a, I think he got five or six on that, which is awesome. Way to go.
Yeah, that, that the group that got down there, the Free Camel Fitness and Marshalls oh, yeah. in, the Adidas Breach Champions, the fantastic. And everybody out there, like you just said, smiles year to year because they love to lift heavy things. And they train at like 4.30 in the morning religiously. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not for me. <laughs> and here right in front of us on lane six, we have the president, Willie Wessels, filming. This must be some type of record event, folks. Tune in. I don't know the lady, but if the president, he's like all of us, he loves records. Speaking he of loves the sport. Speedway Wessels, I've kind of tried to coin the term Mr. 16-time Willie Wessels. Now, 16-time is that that gentleman right there in his heyday when he's competing, squad 1,000 pounds 16 times. Jeez. Multiple-time world record holder in the power lifts. Then he transferred over to Strongman, won it three times in a row, is like the founding father of it, is, is administering it, and he beat cancer. Yeah. So, Gabe, if you, amazing. if you can listen to the little uh, pre-show yesterday, Paul and Willie, they knew each other for years. They were just going down a rabbit hole. I was privileged just to sit here with my mouth shut and just listen to them tell the old the old school dirt stories. I'm like, this is hilarious. It's amazing to get just two veterans of the sport together. Talk about how it was back in the old day. Uh, back in those days. <laughs> I, I can imagine. Oh, but yeah. Lot, lots of miles traveled on beautiful journeys. Yes. Man, we are into the coin hold on the first six platforms right now trying to see what's going on they'll be they'll be on the deadlift after the axle clean on the seven and eight soon so and you know we talk about the events leading up to this that the athletes have already done you know we talk about their backs being smoked by the several back lifts off the ground and here the athlete still has to keep in mind that they do have that giant sandbag drag up next which <laughs> will be very biceps intensive very upper back intensive uh, I guarantee you that some of these athletes are approaching this coin hold knowing that they need to buy at least a little bit of a reserve for that sandbag, or at least not completely waste their, their biceps integrity. <laughs> we don't want any, any sprained or worse, torn tendons. She but gave it her all, her arms just gave out. I, I have to say, what, if I see the athlete and their arms start shaking and then they, they drop it versus one that doesn't get to that shaking point, did, did the, that person go far enough? Uh, I want to see that till failure. We all do. I'm sure they do too. It's a game of inches and a game of seconds when it comes to this. You never know. Maybe someone holding it for one second longer than you is going to get the full points and beat you out on it. And you can be cool and collected for the first 30, 45 seconds of that coin hold, but it'll hit you like a wall. And when it does, it, it really comes down to fighting for every last millisecond and keeping that thing up. The Whoa. physics of it, I, I'm bad with math and even worse with physics, but when you put weight away from your body every inch, it, it raises the stress exponentially, and that's what it, it simply is. And uh, these folks, to get to a minute on something, a hold like this is with the chosen weight is very impressive. Well, I tell you what, on a front hold, that's always the holy grail metric, is if you can make it to a minute, <laughs> you know that you have really trained your butt off for it. And there's no way to train for it than just to do it. Yep. That's all it is. Can you oh. recall some of your best performances on a front hold? Yes, uh, yeah, it stands out. Giants live in Manchester, where I pulled that thousand pounds. We had a hammer hold, uh, a giant oh, hammer nice. hold. I believe That's right. it was 67 pounds, and I, I won first place out of everyone on that one. Oh, congratulations! Yes, that was That's a, awesome. Might, may not be the most exciting event, but I, I, I got to beat. Oh, it counts. I, I beat Novikov on that. Oh, <laughs> and so that's, that's how it works. And that's how <laughs> shots, <laughs> shots, shots fired, fired. To, the Uk <laughs> to the Ukraine. Hey, no, no, no. I, I have to get him where I can because he. <laughs> Look at lane number six. Look at lane number six He's right in front animal. of us. But you're right. As an athlete, you never forget when you win. Yeah. You never forget because it matters because you valued you valued them. And she's getting close to coming down to her mark. The judge will, might have to intervene. All right, wow. wow. You wow. hear that support from behind us. Oh, she's excited. <laughs> she, has a very, she has one of the most vocal support groups right behind us, too. She, I yeah. Love, I love her victory I, dances after yes. every event. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> love it. All the passion comes out, the excitement, the joy. Here she comes. Oh, she's going to take a victory so, lap. So I'm going to correct you. Supporters. I'm going to correct you that game. You said, you know, it wasn't exciting. No, it was like watching the hammer hold. Because what you do is that, you know, once you get to a certain point, then the crowd starts coming alive. And it's like, okay, 30 seconds, 45. And you get that roar. They get louder. And then they start seeing you go. Then they get louder. It's, it kind of gives you those extra seconds where you're like, I need to hold this oh, just yeah. to hear this more. Oh, yeah. When the arms start shaking and the crowd starts roaring louder, oh, you yeah. just can't drop it. You, you, no. you have to keep going. <laughs> 
It makes me nostalgic of some uh, Oktoberfest that I've been to in the past where I have to a giant stein hole. <laughs> oh, nice. You know? <laughs> and yeah. when, there, when, when there's beer involved, the crowd gets a little bit more amped up too. But Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the old school ones in the 80s, they held a thing of cheese oh, I, over I've in seen, Europe. Yeah, there was a, the there was a whole, whole competition formulated around cheese events. I remember seeing that. Oh, wow, yeah. Giant cheese wheel deadlifts and cheese wheel yolks. It's amazing. As long as we get to eat some of that cheese when we're done, I'm all for it. <laughs> and now, you, yeah, now you see on lane four they're bringing in the the bringing in the the giant. There's a couple sandbags, and what they're going to do there's going to be a little distance. They're going to drag those sandbags when it's contested a, a certain amount of distance. And what you're, the burn in your legs and hamstrings they will lock up accordingly. And of course, your back and your grip. It's an event to test all your facets of strength throughout the human body. I have never done anything like this sandbag. Only thing I can think is comparable is a giant anchor chain drag. But even right. then, the anchor chain is not completely touching the ground. You have just small links, and those little spaces between the links might allow for a little bit less friction. So I'm really curious to see how these athletes approach this when they start getting really torched and can't go anymore, and all the different techniques, all the different postures, the holds, the grips. And, and the, the grimaces, right, right. the grimaces, yeah. the, pa right. the faces of exertion. And you'll see these athletes adapt on the fly. Like, do you pull more? Do you put more of the bag up on your body so to reduce the friction? I, I, I'm sure the you just got to get it from point A to B. Dragging it, you got to drag it. You can't throw it over your shoulder. But can you? Do you pull more up on your? You know, then your biceps tire out. And, yeah, you and know what I'm saying? It's, I have not gotten to get my hands around these implements, but I, just from first glance, I would want to get as much of it off the ground and into a steady front hold as possible. There you the go. more bottom heavy that is, the more it's going to be pulling the athlete forward and draining their already pre-fatigued lower back. And it looks to me like they've measured out, I'm bad with distance, that's at least 50 feet. It looks like a good 50 feet It's stretch. not a pitcher's yeah. mound. So the, the weight right in front of me, folks, is 200 pounds marked on that bag. I can read it. So we'll get the weights for you, but they're setting up, and we've we still got the axle We still got the axle clean on 7 and 8, so keep your attention on that. We're just looking forward to the future. we got one more, a couple more coin holders here on, on 6. Gabe, so. you said something earlier about kind of like, you know, you never done this and you got to do it, but... You're talking about like you know sand and talking about like bags, also like stones. I want to throw it in there. Is like you know, some people think like, oh, I could train stones by using bags. You can't because the sand inside the bag is malleable. It's going to move around, whereas a stone's a solid object. You have to train with the to be good at. It. Right, right. These even the most minute detail and difference between one implement to the next can dramatically change not just the way you have to pick it up and handle it, but also the way it moves while you are in motion. That's I, I think that's what scares people sometimes because they think they got something locked in. Also, it's just a little bit, you're off balance. It's like that fight or flight response kicks in. Yeah. So now you're now you're a little bit more nervous and more cautious where really you just want to be explosive, and unfortunately you can't. I guarantee you the nerves are high with all these athletes just wanting to get this sandbag carry oh, over yeah. because there's so much unknown. How is my body going to respond? How, when am I going to get tired? Is it going to be hard on my arms? Am I going to pass out? All the what ifs. Right. But it is the last event of their competition it spread is. for the day. So, I mean, I mean, look, they did a fantastic event. They're what? flying through this. And what time are we at now? We're only at, uh, we're, it looks like we're at 10 14. So not even two hours into the contest, and no. we're already getting ready for the final event on these athletes. Yes. Amazing. Lane 7 and 8 will still be here, so we'll still be here with them, I guarantee you. But, yeah, and this is going to be a unique event because it was interesting in how they were going to put it together. We were talking about this up until pretty much the rules meeting yesterday, what we want to do, and they did, I believe, make it so that it's 50 feet instead of 75 feet. So we, we did realize that with the athletes, it takes a little bit of toll on their body. We try and give it a little bit of a break. So it'll be a good time. Wow, that was a tall athlete. And I believe a teen in, in, oh, look at this. This gentleman's even taller. All right, let's give a shout out to our sponsors, to Barefoot Shoes, a company that I am proud to work with. Barefoot designs high quality minimalist style, minimalist style footwear for everyday people who want to move better throughout the day. People deserve to feel confident in every step they take. And we help by providing functional footwear designed to help the foot express its natural musculature and optimal function. Well, looking damn good doing it. We don't think you should have to prioritize fashion over function in your footwear and indeed not sacrifice quality. That's why every barefoot shoe is crafted using the best quality canvas and leather available so as to withstand the demands of everyday life and last thousands of miles. We are redefining footwear by offering a traditional and heritage style barefoot alternative by bringing modern shoe construction to footwear with optimal foot functionality. 
I love my barefoot shoes. They are shoes that I can wear all throughout the day and not have to worry about taking them off for discomfort. And now Barefoot also offers the Bruin, a boot, a full-on hiking boot that I've already put about 70 miles on oh, and is showing no nice. signs of giving up anytime soon. Man, they have been life-changing for me. When I first tried on my first pair of Barefoots, I reached out to them, and I could not wait to start working with them. So check them out if you haven't. You will see athletes here wearing Barefoot shoes. I know I'm wearing mine. They are definitely a performance-enhancing shoe. Awesome. Interesting. Uh, so on, on lane seven, we had that teen athlete. He, he almost threw that 175. He ran out of time and got multiple uh, presses. There's Ric Flair right there for you. The lady, right? She's right. She's just kneeling down right over you, Sean. Uh, I know, I see she her. has those tights. So, so the, the athletes, we, we love how they accessorize and uh, wear their official T-shirt. Buy yours online, too, if you're interested. But, uh, man, the, the, the gear that's available and the support gear, but the swag and the style, we love it. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. You see all that personal flavor. Like everyone has their competition shirts they have to wear, but what socks are they going to wear? How are they going to do their hair? How are they going to accessorize? That's where you get to see all the, the little personal flavors, and there's a lot of personality at Strongman Meets. I, I, I love it. 100%. It's also, we still got a coin hole going on on lane six. That's the latest on the national anthem this morning. Beautiful job she did with it. And she's got the Star Spangled belt on and the, 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 the tights we're talking about. Rocking the flag. Awesome. And our, there's a huge teen in uh, lane seven. He is. Yeah, another coin hold on lane f uh, two as well. Oh, they're still in the coin hold down there. Still okay. in the coin hold down a, there, yeah. In between, uh, they're setting up for the sandbag, so I couldn't see. Yeah, I apologize for that. I switched over to lane seven and eight. I didn't see them. Somebody walked in front of me, unfortunately. But we're back to the four screens. Well, the action's fast and the furious, so leave your comments. We're doing the best we can. And again, I repeat, if you just join us, I draw your attention to thank you for watching the Valor and Venom YouTube page in the stream. Like, share, and subscribe. But also uh, check out Iron Podium. It's like our companion to the U.S. Strongman uh, Nationals. There, Go on, find that on ironpodium.com. It's free. And the scoreboard's up on the Iron Podium um, under the U.S. State Strongman Nationals icon on the scoreboard. Look at the machine on lane seven. He has uh, hair like uh, Mr. Pena used to have, I believe. <laughs> you have a, you had quite the mane, didn't you, at one time, sir? I, I did. I cut it off last week. It was I feel I, amazing. I, 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 I feel exhilarating. When they were cutting it off, my neck got to breathe, and it felt great. But I enjoyed the long hair for a while, but it, it is nice to be clean-shaven and, and, and tidy. It doesn't pair well with that Rio Grande Valley humidity, does it? It sure does not. <laughs> it, it is always in a ponytail, and I just don't. I was tired of it. Remind me to show you uh, my old wrestling picture where I'm wearing a Mohawk mullet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm trying to picture it right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, with the, with, with the, with the, <laughs> the head. Oh, yeah. I believe you. I was, of course, I was a heel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glorious. Yeah. You got to own it. Man, he is owning that. Look at that. That Just is power one. for days on lane number seven. And these are teens. They, they are, these Good are big Lord. teens. Yeah. Yeah, with lane uh, seven. Look at the rest of the teens stacked back there behind the. There's there's about 20 teenagers waiting yeah. to unleash their unbridled fury on that axle. Well, How awesome. They have the opportunity to do this. It's funny because think about it now. We see this all the time, so we understand the athletes and the kind of size, all that. But imagine just like a normal person, I guess you could say in quotation. I say like, what's well, normal nowadays? But like just in the lobby, being like, what is? What's going on here at this hotel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's with these gigantic wildebeest and well, these dinosaurs just walking around? Close the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't wait yesterday. My goal is always to take a picture with the biggest meat suit I can find yesterday. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Silva yesterday out of El Paso. You know? Yeah, Josh you know? Silvas? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Super nice guy, but he's... He he's tips a, the Toledo big. at 500 pounds, he told me he, proudly. He is a big boy. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I come here to feel dainty now at this stage of my life, Gabe. <laughs> yeah, Paul posted that picture. I commented. I said, well, there's the answer to where's the beef. It's right there in this picture. <laughs> yeah, you will find some, some big folks here. <laughs> big, big oh, huge humans. But also the most gentle, probably humble giant you'll ever meet. I, I am definitely loving all the, the presence of our teen athletes. You know, yes, that's amazing. Uh, that is an area of strongman that I have wanted to see grow ever since I started. And there have been teen national championships through the years, but relatively low attendance, especially compared to this abundance of teen talent I'm seeing here today, is huge. And it just makes me excited for the future because 
I'm looking at the future right in the face right now. 100%. When I lived in Texas, being a powerlifter, I, I remember the first time I went to the Texas high school powerlifting championships, and it was, I walked in and it was like this. There was 10 platforms going and so forth. Of course, they pair it with football, but the, they have a very active ladies powerlifting team, but that was, 15, that was almost 15 years ago. Now they should be doing strongman as well. The two sports... Co uh, they coalesce well together, but it's great to see the teens having this opportunity. It's amazing. This gentleman for a teen has an awesome beard, let's be honest. Yeah, that, that, is, is, that is not a teenage beard. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is a man beard right is, there. This man's, I can't imagine his parents' grocery bill. There's a blue locks in the parking lot, I guarantee you. Oh, my goodness. Strong. Yeah, that's country strong right there. Yes. Look at that. He's muscling that up with a close grip on the action, really, Gabe. Yeah. yeah. Really, that's probably about an 18-inch grip or 20 at best. It's, it's certainly not shoulder width. He's just a strong man. He's got a lot of hip power. I'm seeing it on oh, the yeah. clean from the from the gut to the chest. Big uh, raw, obviously a lot of talent. Big raw power. Good rhythm too. Do you think it's uh, getting the bar into a long position is probably the most crucial? Because once you get it up here, then what's just come down to pinch momentum? Do you think? I think there's more, and this is just pure pure opinion. I think there's more technique that goes into the clean, or at least doing it energy efficiently right. compared to the overhead press. And most athletes will train the overhead press rigorously, pressing out of the rack, strict pressing, push pressing, split jerk, whatever it is, right. versus the actual axle cleaning. Comparatively, that's not as frequent in their programming, right. I would say. So that's why you see a lot of the cleans will make or break the performances. And some people might have a clean that they can get it up, but how much energy does it take away from them? Right. How many reps are they able to get by doing their cleans that way? It's, well, it's tough. And you see with the log, too. People go and train log, and, of course, they'll load the weight they want to train with. They'll get the log, put it up, get the shoulders with the, with the arms back, and then now they start pressing. It's like, well, no, you got to do that every time. Don't just right. sit there and keep pressing. And don't get me wrong. There are competitions that will have the press away, but right. – you can never allow that to, ne to be a reason to neglect your clean because the press is nothing without the clean. Everyone, every athlete needs to remember that. Oh, look at that smooth motion he's got there. He almost vipered it. A big, strong human being on lane seven. The teen men heavyweight are just, they're impressing the heck out of me. He's getting that. That's about almost 10 feet off the ground, I swear, when he gets it above his head. <laughs> uh, well over six feet tall, well over 200 pounds in the heavyweight division. Super heavyweight probably for the teens. He's got good rhythm, and uh, I love to see it because this is just a testament to the coaching forces that these athletes have. To whatever degree of a coach they have, that they have some good direction helping to shape their athleticism. Absolutely. And if you're watching right now, so you got the third camera, which is the one on the bottom right is that you see the athletes are getting ready for the sandbag drag. And it's, it, like I said, we're excited to see how this is going to go. I'm curious. I've never seen it. Gabe, yeah, that being said, what you were referring to earlier, because that's, the, that's a, a, a reality in the strength world today that's taken off in, in the last 20 years since I've been doing it. Um, do you do any coaching, sir? I do. I do. That is my, uh, my main... Uh my main job outside of strongman and being a husband and, and father, I, I, I am very thankful to be able to coach many talented athletes across the nation. And it's quite rewarding to see my philosophies and experience shape themselves in others' strength games. 100%. So, so uh, shout out your social media. If you're watching this and you're interested in, in like discussing with Gabe and meshing him through social media, uh, Texas Titan. What's your Instagram yeah, handle? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Texas Titan Gabe. I'm, I'm most active there on Instagram. I also put out content on, on my YouTube every now and then as well. But if you have any questions or want to reach out to me or let me know that you enjoyed something from the live stream or or any anything, reach out to me on Instagram. I'll be happy to connect with you. Out Texas Titan Gabe. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, so for a guy like me who had started in the 80s, we used to have to go to the wrong side of the tracks and the bad side of town to the to the gym that no one really wanted to go into unless you were real serious. But nowadays with social media, you're able to interact with, with extremely talented, genuine, authentic people that are world-class coaches and experts and just care about the sport. So reach out to Texas Titan on Instagram. I highly recommend that. I do a little coaching myself. I'm not at the level Gabe is. I work with a few athletes. So Paul J. Leonard, PLUSA, uh, on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. And here we have action in the, the we, got, we, we got the drags right She's now. dragging it right there. You got, you got camera. You got the camera on the bottom, the bottom left, and you got camera at the top right. They're actually in the first drags of the day. So she drug a 200-pound sandbag and did it in about 15 seconds, I would say. You see, the, you see in the blue shirts, we have the spotters, loaders, expediters, timers, and scorekeeper. 
Totally. Yeah, and that was our, one of our teenage athletes, and she did very well. She did have a stumble halfway down the course, but recovered quickly, picked the bag, and got back to a nice dragging position quick and, and fast. I think the marks to aim for would be how close can the athletes get to that 10 minute thre or that 10 second threshold. But that is going to require some serious finesse and accuracy with getting that sand back into position and not falling. Here and, goes and, lane five. Yes, and if you saw the athletes, they allowed them to familiarize themselves with that bag for a few minutes. They got to all got to pick it up a little bit before and see where they want to grip it, where they want to go. Here's our second athlete. Oh, see, uh oh, just short. That's okay. She'll be fine. So if you watch the stream right now, in lanes one, two, we still got coin holds. In lane four, five, and six, we're starting doing the standby drags. And of course, in lane seven, eight, which is our largest uh, athletes, are going to be over there, and they're still doing the uh, the deadlifts. So if you've ever drug backwards, which I have in competition, we did a 750-pound sled before. It was on a it was on a drained hockey rink, and it was a little slick. But what will happen is the muscle group that will go first or lock up usually is the hamstrings, right, Gabe? Yeah, the hamstrings, and then the next to follow up would be the quads. The hamstrings are, are keeping the body erect and standing, whereas the quads are doing mini leg extensions every step of the way. It's constant tension, too. They don't get a break, and the athlete has to be very conscious of their footing. If, you know, you got to lock those heels into the ground, you got to lock the front of the foot into the ground, too. But if you miss one, one crucial portion of that foot, just like our previous two athletes here in lane four or lane five, you're going to topple a little bit. You're going to fall on your butt. 100%. Yeah, that's that's usually what you have to see in this event. The last lady, the last teen, just smoked it. She did. She went down. She I did. would say under probably ten seconds. I'm I'm bad, but a, a awesome performance. Here we have what would appear to be a masters level athlete. She's gonna she's aggressively gonna grab that bag, and chop feet. And she want you wanna you want fast feet. And you wanna keep maintain foot contact with the with the surface of the of that you're pulling on. Right, right. And again, it is crucial to get that bag high enough to have control over some of the weight, but to also not let it get in the way of your feet moving quickly beneath it. In lane eight, we Great hear job. Julius May behind me. In lane eight, you got Tracy from a Broken Strength Gym, one of the Tucsonian athletes. She's deadlifting right now out of, out of Arizona. There she goes. Arizona chairman Julius May to my left, cheering her on. She's doing an amazing job expediting and keeping the score. Check on ironpodium.com for the updated scoreboard. But she's cheering for her team, her gym mate right there, Tracy. Absolutely. She, she trains Tracy. She writes her programming. And Julie's doing a hell of a job on the uh, comments section right now, answering all the comments you may have. Here we have a master's level athlete dragging that 200-pound bag. Great positioning on lane number five, I would say. She's got a lot of the bag off the ground, short and choppy steps. Uh, she grabbed it smooth. Yeah, she's moving well. I say that's how it's done right there. We'll, we'll see Textbook. what her time was, but and here we go, lane six. That's a 17-year-old young lady. I mean, I hope. <laughs> stand back. Nothing's gonna stop her. There we go. Good, good. Uh oh, oh, yep. Right near the equipment. We gotta make sure. <laughs> we make sure our equipment. <laughs> athletes first, but we gotta. We gotta uh, make sure none of the athletes hit into our our setup there, which is. And we all said it's adjusted accordingly. But this is definitely an event where it is constant tension the whole time from the moment you pick it up. There's not a chance in these steps where the athlete, their muscles get to take a, a breath, if you will. You just gotta gun it and get that thing across the course. They quickly reach oxygen debt, all the muscles in their body. Again, when you drag backwards, the strongman's a whole body activity, so their whole body will get fatigued. Oh, uh, she grabbed it a little too high on on that hole. She she's might get strong. it though. She might get it though. She's powering it. Through. She's got fast feet. She's breathing good. Ah, uh, she was tenacious. She made it hard on herself. Made it hard on herself in in a way. But there is that level of unpredictability that we were talking about. That these athletes have not gotten to practice this. Where 100%. If they pick it and they realize like, hey, it's too low. You got to make that decision in a split second. Do I drop it and re-pick it? Or do I just go and not waste any more time? Absolutely. It's every second is Slow, huge. A little slower and steady on five, but she handled that no problem. Pulled it up nice and high. She's excited. Good good job. I bet there's a lot of anxiety in every athlete now just to just to see what it feels like for themselves. 
But also, let's give them a little bit of confidence. When they see him being successful, they're like, oh, okay, I can probably pull this as well. Well, I bet a lot of them, to be honest, are shocked. It's the last event. And it's 10.30 on the dot in two hours. Yeah. That's a I training mean, session. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's the same, it's same time as a training session. It's highly dense ideal. and intense. Now, I'm just going to show you this well-old machine oh, that John yeah. and Megan have put together with all the spars and loaders and just getting this done. Because think how many times you've gone to, like, strongman events. It's, like, maybe 20 athletes. It's, like, four hours. It's, like, I don't understand oh, this. <laughs> I have oh, yeah. some memories of some oh. of my first competitions that I went to, and they were just not organized that well. And we got there at like eight in the morning and didn't leave till almost ten o'clock at night. And it's oh, just yeah. no one wants that. It no, is growing no pains. That. It's, that's how powerlifting used to be. Right. I finished a powerlifting meet for it two in the morning. There used to be 50, 100 people show up even in your flight, but it got better and strongman's developed now that we, we run way more efficiently. And you know, there's two things you have to keep in mind with that, that simple truth is like, one, you want to preserve the athletes and their performance capability, but two, you want to make it palatable and enjoyable for the crowd who comes out to, to watch it. 100%. No one wants to be here for a 10 hour show, but it's so much easier for them to be here for a two or three hour show. Bring the kids out. Let's go have lunch after. Let's let's have it as part of our day. Yes, yeah. And that's how you grow the sport. Yeah, make it enjoyable. Make it an enjoyable trip. Like we were talking to Willie going forward. Like the nationals, he's got he's got the nationals planned out to 2028 now. It's next year. It's in Colorado. Yep. The year after that, it's North Carolina. So you move it from other sides of the country. Uh, it's going to be Atlantic City, New Jersey. Phoenix is getting a turn, and I think I'm forgetting a city. Um, it p might be in Pennsylvania, but he's got a plan going forward. It's going to be amazing. Like I said, said. Somewhere, somewhere in Illinois, I thought he said. That's right. You're exactly right. And, again, if you're watching this right now on a live stream and you want Valor and Venom there, hey, reach out to us, valorandvenom at gmail.com. You got us on the Instagram. Uh, the biggest thing about showcasing these athletes, which is the most important part because the athletes come first, but the entire time of stream, we are going to try and be entertaining and make sure that it's enjoyable to watch. And I guess we got Texas Titan here. Gabe Pena, which is fantastic. And I hope you're enjoying your time here, my friend. Oh, I am. It's great to be here. I, I love every opportunity I get to do commentary at competitions. It's, it's it's a reunion for me just as much as a lot of these other people and to kind of help bring that experience to those at home, even in a small way. It's great. I love it. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Pleasure. sure. Oh, awesome. we, got a, we got a cheering session going on. Uh-oh, almost a little bit of a race. When you think about it, aggressive in both lanes. Six is burning it up. She's a master's level athlete. Oh, she didn't. That didn't have a. That bag didn't have a chance. It did not, and that's a prime example of if you've got the leg and the back power, even if you don't get that sandbag up all the way, it's just keep that pedal down, keep going. She had short, choppy strides that were fast, and she got there first. Oh, here's that athlete on lane six that they literally were yelling in my right ear. I couldn't hear you guys when she was doing the deadlifts earlier. I think she's getting ready to go on lane six. And if you feel the thump in uh, It's Not Jurassic Park, another edition, <laughs> you hear seven is lane seven. The teens are deadlifting the axle now. They're still so clanging and banging over there. I would say there's 40 athletes lined up to do their deadlift now, which is awesome. The, sport, the future right there. Yes. Lane five already complete. She made short work of that, that master's lady. She didn't fool around. I am waiting for the victory dance in lane six after this next one. I know, oh, you said you're yeah. excited every single time. I wish you was coming the other way so we'd see it. Yeah. We can't see the scoreboard and it's on ironpodium.com for free, but I think, I think if she smokes this, she's probably in position to win her class from her performance. So the celebration's eminent, Gabe. It is. All right, we got the judge right there setting to make sure it's an even for all these athletes. She's focused in. I mean, she ain't smiling no more when she got in that position. I'm looking forward to seeing this. Here we go. Oh, there she goes. Oh, wow. Oh, didn't stand a chance. Fast stay feet, up. upright, stay breathing. Up. Oh, yeah, under 10 seconds, I would say. Wow. I see the scorekeeper showing on her iPhone to the to the timekeeper showing to the scorekeeper. It's registered. Oh. You didn't get your dance. No you dance. disappointed. She must be tired. <laughs> I don't think she knows her time yet. No. There's too much unknown for her right now. Right. But she, she did that very well. A, a nice, solid grip, almost as if she was carrying a stone. Right. And as they say, four out of five, that ain't bad. All right. Let's see. Lanes okay. three and four. Lane number four is moving. All right, folks, I've just been told by Julia Smay, who's an expert. She's the Arizona State uh, chairman for USS. 
that Iron Podium is updating. It's a lot of data has got to go into it's over 500 athletes, so please be patient. It'll be updated with the scores of all the five events that have taken place with over 500 athletes, and we've done about 200 plus athletes already this morning, so be patient with it, but Iron Podium was, will be updated momentarily. This amazing event brought to you from numerous sponsors, over 20 different sponsors, Gainiac Nutrition, USA Strength, 1836 Kratom, Barefoot, Le Master Barbell, Pioneer Fitness, the Southern Illinois Strength Expo, X-Rise, Intech Strength, Barbell Rescue, C Cerebus, makes the finest strongman equipment sold here today at the Expo, Impact, which is a they're an in-house vendor over there. They do a mouthpiece that I haven't got the pleasure of checking out. Do you use a mouthpiece, Gabe? I do use a mouthpiece. I have not gone to try the Impact mouthpiece. I am definitely open to try it. I will say that the mouthpieces are excellent at bracing the body before big lifts. You know, it, it, it's crazy to think that something as simple as wearing a mouthpiece and clenching your teeth can have as big of an effect as it does. But by clenching it, all the jaw muscles, the neck muscles go all the way down to your abdominal core. And you just turn yourself into a solid stacked cylinder of muscle and that's what you want going into like a heavy axle deadlift for reps or a heavy overhead press so if you've never tried a mouthpiece and you're listening at home we have impact here as one of our contest sponsors give them a look up and maybe try one of their mouthpieces you might experience a little performance enhancement on your lifts across the board paul, ki paul kind of wishes he had a mouthpiece because he went to the dentist recently what they find out about your back teeth paul uh, so I've been training as hard as I could since I was 15. I played high school football, and I was the three-time national powerlifting champion. I broke um, every crown I had installed in the late 90s. Oh, man. He'd never seen anything like it, so now I use a mouthpiece. <laughs> there you go. Crowns, they're supposed to last like 50 years when they put those in. and uh, Not no, for a they national did. champion. No, they Not didn't. Yeah. <laughs> nope, they didn't. So proof, if you can break it, I'll do it. Let me give a quick shout out to Sticks and Stones, one of our sponsors here. Six and Stone was bore out of necessity during COVID lockdowns to help people build their own home gym from the hardware store. The power rack and equipment plans and concrete weight molds to get you started. The price per pound on the weights, dumbbells, and kettlebells continue to drop the more you make. Using the same integrity and ingenuity that created these molds, Sticks and Stone also builds crazy custom equipment for some of the biggest strongman contests in the world. Reach out on Instagram and through our website for more info. Thank you, Sticks and Stones. Yeah, that's your buddy you referenced before, right? You know him. You've done some great work yeah, with him. Yeah, David, David Accardo. He's uh, he has helped me out with getting some equipment that I've needed for myself and also for competitions that I've put on. He's got those Husafel stone replicas that I cherish awesome. and love. And so I'm sure if you're if you're learned fan you're watching this, you know the Husafel stone base in Iceland. But I've also seen events where they have a Texas shape. Do you have? Do you, uh, I'm sure you've had the pleasure of find Texan. I've, I've gotten to use a Texas-shaped <laughs> Husafel stone before, and I don't have one. I would love to have one as being a Texan, but uh, they, it, you can imagine the shape of Texas makes for a very unique type carry. 100%. I lived in Texas uh, for five years. I was a proud Dallas uh, implant, and then I, I, I've since moved to Arizona, but uh, Texas is... They're very proud to tell you when they got their independence and they have a month of Texas history in school for the young ones. And it, it's an ex it's awesome to be back in this proud state. And every when they say everything's bigger in Texas, this is the biggest strongman contest they've ever contested. And it's amazing. Dallas, uh, Jonathan Megan and his team of 100 people in blue shirts here, over 500 athletes. It's absolutely incredible. There goes Heather McDonald on lane three. There's the president. Look at the president. He's not just the president. He's adjusting Look at things. That. He's hands-on with a stall mat, okay? That man is amazing. Willie Wessels, he cares. He's setting it up so the athletes can go forth, and they're setting up for the next events, for the, for the afternoon events, for the uh, liver deadlift for the men. That's what you got there, folks, hands-on, okay? He's the president, but, and I see behind him, they're taking, a, like, a team picture. It's awesome. That group is finished. Look at the camaraderie. I'm sure you can tell some stories about some camaraderie that's happened open sea, overseas, Gabe, and maybe even a little alcohol was involved. <laughs> that, the alcohol does not come until after. Right, you yeah. gotta earn it. Yeah. No, none of us drink in our press before a yeah. contest, but afterwards, that's when the stories come out. And, and let yeah. me just say, you know, the camaraderie in the sport is is so undeniable that even when you have language barriers across athletes that may not speak a lick of English, 
they will try their hardest, and we will try their hardest to speak their language, just in the spirit of unity and wanting to have some laughs and embraces after all is said and done. Oh, yeah. Do, do you know who, when I went to my Pro-Am in 2002, do you know who Heinz Olish is? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is in Boston, so I love Sam Adams' beer. So I, we were drinking it after the event, and I, I gave one to Heinz Olish, <laughs> and he corrected me that it's it's not really up to his German standards of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Kindly. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, for everybody that's watching the streams right now, it looks like they are resetting lane one and two to pretty much uh, go back to the lever deadlifts because I think they're finished there. We had some we had some resets, obviously, in lane five and six, so they're continued. We still have action in lane three and four. So stand by. I think maybe lane two and one are going to go into the, uh, the drags here shortly. But lane three is finished. Thank you for watching us on the Valor and Venom YouTube page. Like, share, and subscribe. Leave comments. We do read those. We read those later. And, you know, if you got a, if you got a bug out and can't catch it now, please watch it later. You know, this will all be uploaded, and it's, it's family-friendly. Uh, I get... We've been broadcasting these type of events, not this level, but Strongman, and I always love when people get back to me. Hey, we watched that at a... We watched that at a New Year's Eve party because we had competed. And, like, strength athletes, uh, after food... And a PR. We love nothing more, not in a not in a vain way, but we love to see our performance and our fellow, because we love to see our fellow athletes' performance. And when you're in the zone, then you watch back later and you saw what your friend, um, you know, what you saw like a world class or a competitor do. It means something to you, right? Right, Gabe. You it we does. watch film like like other athletes watch. <laughs> sport film in rugby did you guys watch film to study for another team and so forth every now and then yeah we did we have a gentleman who needs to get on the mic here he's handing it over but film film study is very important so i right, turn your attention if you're watching a lane six the president himself loading up weights because he loves this sport and's grown it to an exponential level there's Big David from, from oh, Sticks my and Stones we were just talking about right oh, there. Oh, my goodness. I, I think, you know, I thought mine were good, and then I saw those calves. Those yeah. are bulls. Yeah. 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 <laughs> those are 25-inch calves right there. No, 30 maybe. Look at the size of those things, man. Well, I was talking about those replica Husafels that he, he made, and that's because he went to Iceland to Husafell and lifted the exact stone himself, and that's a 409-pound oh, wow. stone, and he, oh, that yeah. is very much a man capable of lifting a 409-pound stone right there. Yeah, our friend that our friend CJ Pierce that won the lightweight worlds, 90 kilo. Him and his they went over there as like a bachelor party thing. But there's some footage online of him lifting that Husafeld stone, which I would love to take a crack at it. Have you have you taken a crack at the original Husafeld? No, no. Iceland is on my bucket list still, and oh, I have okay. not gotten to make it over there. But the day will come, my friend. The day will come, and I oh, will. Yeah. I, I need to. T I will take that thing more than a full revolution around the pen. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, full. They call that full sterker, right? Yep. I know a little, and it used to be detailed in a now defunct uh, strength magazine, Milo, but that's a cultural goal of every strong person to lift the Husafel sold and, and get around the sheep pen. So look that up online. Look that up. Uh, Bill Crawford, that's associated with Rogue, has done, a, I think, a documentary on that. And um, it's one big strength community. We all know of or know these people, and we all interact, and we have these certain goals. But that, I look forward to you doing that, sir. I, I do, too. And hopefully you can make it out there as well. And oh, I'd love we to. We can both cross that off the list. I don't think you, I've been. You I've got been, a 400-pound stone lift in you? Uh, I, I do not. Oh, uh, I, I do. No, I do have it in me. I've never done it yet. Okay, I haven't okay. had the pleasure. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I got it in me. And, and you might be the first one, if you do it soon, to do it with a, uh, a baby on board. If, with if a backpack. She, yeah. If, yeah. Mom will sign, on the backpack, if mom will sign off on that. <laughs> could put her on the backpack, or if she's able enough, have her just right on my shoulders. On your shoulders. Man, I've never seen that. That would be cool. Uh, a combo thereof, a tandem. Lane number seven, just giving Man. it his all in that yeah. last rep. He is straining the neck veins. He gave his all. You can see him kind of Look at this team. Floor, Look at this team competitor. Well-built gentleman. All business. Well-muscled. There's nothing like a strength athlete. It just it builds all your body. Yeah, stacked. And these these uh, these athletes who have trained themselves for strongman, even as teens, if they decide ultimately not to continue down the path of strongman at some point, they have created a massive foundation 100%. for whatever physical endeavor and also the mental endeavors. You know, it, it, this sport does sharpen the mind. You are co constantly breaking yourself down physically through hard training to build something stronger in the future, and that creates 
a strong a strong space between the ears. 100%. You know, I, as a lifetime lifter myself, and um, at one point I really focused on, like you were talking earlier, like how you're kind of you're recalibrating, focusing on your family and building some business endeavors. I focused on my career at one time, and I, was, I moved up into a management position. Long story short, I have trouble figuring things out, so I moved to training in the morning by myself and kind of de-emphasized what it was later in the day. But I'd be training, and I'd get these amazing answers to work problems, and I could journal, and I, it, it really helped me. It unlocks mentally lifting weights, resistance training, going through, breaking barriers, succeeding. The endorphins you release, I mean, you, you can't, you can't, there's nothing like it in the world. That's what draws people to this and keeps us. And improves quality of life on all fronts. Oh, 100%. 100%. When the world shut down three years ago for COVID and everybody started talking about vitamin D was good for you and fresh air and sunlight, us strength athletes are like, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. Yeah, 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 exactly. So half the, the three lanes in front of me are all set up for the lever deadlift, which means the, the ladies are done competing for the day, so they're working on tallying their scores and placings. Everybody did awesome. I didn't see a, an injury, which is awesome. But we still have some teen males just going at that axle deadlift like it stole their money. Yeah, they're, they're moving well. Uh, they, they still have the coin hold and the sandbag drag for themselves there on lane number seven. But, yeah, I stand corrected. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I can't believe the speed and efficiency which this was administered. I should, I'll tell Jonathan myself, Jonathan and his wife Megan and his team, I, I should have known. But, man, what an impressive day we have here. Uh, thanks for joining us on the stream, Fast and Furious. If you check off, remember, come back at 1 o'clock Texas time, 1 o'clock Central Standard time to see the men. Uh, and probably at this rate, I would say maybe check back at, noon you can stay with us feel free we'll give you the commentary but you know watch these other lanes going but the award ceremony will stream that as well and it'll all, it'll be on youtube forever on valor and venom lane number seven getting just a little ahead of himself on that last rep kind of leaning a bit and and i see i don't think he's next but i see jonathan's 14 year old son's coming up soon on the deadlift yeah he i'm is. sure uh, his his dad's quite the deadlifter i want to say this is Brock, the son of the founder of Gainiac Nutrition, who just stepped up. I got to meet him earlier. His, yeah, his name is Brock. So his, his parents are Stephen and Casey. Yeah, I met Steve with them is his last dad. Night. Okay. I got to take a picture with them. Nice, but yeah. A good kid who's just ready to give it all, his all today. And he's off to the races on that first rep, rep two. If that weight card is correct, 350 pounds on the bar. We're just adjusting some technical stuff in the background, folks. A lot goes into this. We come in with Bauer and Venom two days before the event to wire and check everything. Oh, there we go. He's strained up with that. Man, that was a fight. There's nothing like that fight in the deadlift. I think he's got one more in him. I oh, yeah, his so mom. Too. I see his mom right there. I see Casey. Oh, yeah, he had it. Nice. And the weight on that was 450? Something. I, I think it's 350. 350? That's what the weight cart reads. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I see... Uh, I see Megan and his mom there, like, watching on that platform. How cool is that? Awesome. Uh, here, comes, here, comes, here comes Jonathan over to watch his son. His son, only 14 years old. His parents directed this whole amazing national championships. He's been kicking ass, and here he goes on his, oh, my. Uh -oh. Great lift. There we go. Uh -oh, I'm saying double digits. Oh, yeah. level, he's a, he's stable. A, he's a deadlifter. Dad taught him well. Oh, yeah, he reset. Yeah, I love his form, too. Man, he looks from the side. He looks like a perfect number four. The back is angled, but straight as can be, head up. The legs starting. And what do you think of his form, Gabe? It's looking really good. He, he, I, I love how the bar is staying level as he goes, so an even drive from left to right. He's looking strong. Oh, yeah. No, there's not even, there's no shake or shimmy. There's no break in form. He, I think he's going to run out of time before he runs out of reps. Oh, nice. It's a strong young man. Strong indeed. Just barely starting to see some fatigue in the hips, but his form is staying, staying strong, not breaking down. Right. 
and that'll be it. Which is, it's awesome to see when you go your limit, and he's fine. Yeah. Dad's proud. I love it. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Man, he is going to be a monster. My goodness. <clears throat> be playing down the street at Cowboy Stadium. You got to think of how the, the event like this looks through the eyes of our teenage athletes and, and what it is like to be here soaking up this experience in the midst of all the other athletes, the open classes, the men, the women, the masters. It's a, uh, I would dare say it's unforgettable. And they're going to carry it with them for the rest of their lives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I got to lift at the teen nationals in 88 before you were born. And one guy whooped me, and that was it. But I took, when, when you start, not in an egotistical way, but when you start hopping planes to look for competition, you've really worked hard, but it stays with you. It's yeah. indelible. Yeah. Not in an egotistical way, but I'm like, I, this, it means something, so I pursued it, and it was worthwhile. Absolutely. And this, these, these, these athletes and their family remember it forever. I can see that. So we have at the, now at the 350-pound bar, this would be obviously a men's master's level lifter. Um, lane seven, so he weighs, well, no, he's there either because of age. He's either 50 plus or 60 plus. Being 55, I'm sure he's about my age and looks even maybe older. Or more seasoned, we like to say, and treacherous. Have you had the pleasure of meeting Mark Felix, sir? I have. He's <laughs> multiple times I've gotten to compete against him, and he is a, a great guy. Very uh, soft-spoken at times, but lets his lifting do the talking for him. And a ferocious deadlifter. A ferocious deadlifter. Right, but he's well. He's, don't, he's don't older even than, cross him on anything grip-related. I think he's 50, he's a couple years older than me, right? He's like 57 or something. He's 20 yeah. times at the yeah. world's strongest man com competition. So that what an amazing, amazing uh, sport that you can be. Just showcase your strength and and just enjoy your performance and then build a fellowship like we we are able to do. I always, you know, it's great to see the athletes that, you know, burn bright and burn fast and take it to the very tops of the echelon mm -hmm. in strongman. But then you also see the athletes who have burned bright but continue to burn for a long time, like Mark Felix. The athletes who are able to do this well into their, their 50s and, and on. Yes. It's like, all right, you are doing something right and you're doing it well. How, how do I become like you? Oh, yeah, 100%. And, you know, the, and, and honestly, when they see that you're a peer, my experience is they'll tell you. Yeah. You know? And that's that's one thing I've noticed. Mark, Mark has always been very keen to share stories. Nick Best as well. Like, guys who have been in the sport for a long time, you, your first instinct is not, oh, they're going to tell me everything they know. But you sit down with them, they're just as humble as can be and ready to share their experiences and, and help you become your best self. 100%. And, and the reason being, if you're watching this at home, is because, as Gabe knows, I know, like, it, it's hard work and it's fundamentals. It's hard work. It's good food. It's getting good coaching and correct coaching nowadays, building a fellowship. I suggest you do find, obviously, the right equipment. A training crew helps, and then sleep and rest. It's, that's it. I just That's 15 seconds to how to become the best athlete in really anything. No secrets, just hard no work. No secrets, just hard work. Some, some blood, some sweat, and some tears <laughs> along the way. But it's all those sacrifices that paves the way to this camaraderie that we feel this unity that we exhibit in this sport of strongman because we all know what it takes and when we are here to try to find out who's the strongest amongst us we don't want anyone appearing at less than their full self we want to embrace the competition we want our, our rivals to be the strongest version of themselves that they've ever been yeah 100 percent i when when i would do strength sports and i'd talk to people that didn't know them They'd say, man, are you going to go in there and mess those guys up? I'm like, you know what? I love those guys. They're my peers. And when it got to the national level, even if you were in Iowa or North Carolina and I was in California at the time, we're the same. Yeah. We're the same more than anybody, more than my, my blood family, because you can't pick family. But strength athletes, I love them, and they're all the same. 99% of them are the same ilk, the best people you ever meet, most humble. We get, we get each other. 100%. We get each other. And bad apples usually tend not to... Have Stay around too long. Yeah, exactly. They 100%. Don't, they don't ascend the ranks. No, that's the biggest thing is, like, say if we're ever in a competition, you know, and I miss my weight. Say if I was going, like, 500, I miss it. I want to see that weight move. So, like, if someone's like, they're going to go for 600, I'm going to be right there behind you because I just want to see the weight move. Just somebody to be able to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, I tell people, for me, a big thing was bench press back in the day, right? So I tell people, um, so being in California at the time, uh, I, w w it was a smaller circle than you think in Southern California for 20 million people in five counties. But the state promoter told me about a kid. He goes, you should check this kid out, have him come to your gym. So it's Josh Bryant, Jailhouse Strong. 
So Josh used to drive down from Santa Barbara 140 miles to my house in Orange County, and he could bench 500 when he was a teen, and I couldn't. But after a year training with him, I could bench 500 because I saw it. You know, have you had the pleasure of meeting Josh Bryant yet? I don't think I've met him. I'm aware of who he is, but I have not met yeah, him. Yeah, he's, he's, in, he's in the Dominican Republic this week. He lives here now. Awesome. He's in Dallas. So I'll, I'll connect you guys. He's the salt of the earth. You know, he's, awesome. He's got, he, he, he got to, um, he programmed Brian Shaw during the pandemic on the bench. Because, you know, Josh is, was the youngest 600-pound raw bench presser, and he trains Julius Mack. You know his, yeah, his yep. forte. He's got more 600-pound benches. Salt of the earth, but, yeah, he lives here, but happened to be out of town this week. On a, you know, his life is he's got kids older than you, so it's not dictated by school schedule. So <laughs> when they're off, they could travel a little bit. But, yeah, that's, that's what I tell anybody. Find a crew. Jailhouse Strong, Josh Bryant's my friend. Check out his web page. His, his YouTube is amazing. I, I have some articles I've written on joshstrength.com, and uh, – Super nice kid, but that's that's what the strength community is, you know. And you stay friends forever because you bond. If you're a training partner, you're a training partner for life, you know. Yeah, definitely. And Josh, you can if you know that it, Josh left me and us for a while. He went for a year to live with Gary Frank in Louisiana and get his master's degree at LSU because Gary Frank was the top powerlifter in the world. You know, there's people that chase that, right? I mean, people chase and move places to just train to be around the right environment to to not only move he would move forward personally and professionally by getting his degree down there but it helped him in his lifting right the lessons you learn and nowadays people will move to to train with folks i don't blame them i don't blame them either environment is everything especially when it's a place where you are going to immerse yourself in several times throughout the week physically breaking yourself down for the sake of coming back stronger that's an investment in your own self and you want to make sure that environment is conducive sure i know i've traveled places and i've trained at gyms where i'm like you know what they they have what I'm looking for there. If I had to relocate, I would go out of my way to make sure I could be close to this just because of that that uh, contagious atmosphere. Yeah, strength strength athletics over the last 50 years, powerlifting and now strongman has a long history of that, of people moving for the reason. And it's, it's it, once you love it, you want you want your life set up that you can, you, it's just, you can't explain. If, if, you, if you're into it, I don't need to explain it to you, but if you're not, or you're just interested, yeah, like you watching this at home, you younger people, like build your education, Stay in school. There's enough time in the day to do build a business too if you're interested or build a trade. There's enough time for everything, but you can focus on strength and it, it, you, you won't be unrewarded at the end, I can tell you that much. Absolutely. From the relationships you made, the experiences you have, and how healthy you are. Absolutely. I just saw lane number one. They're still moving on that sand drag. One of our uh, open women's lightweights there, coached by fellow world's strongest man competitor travis ortmeyer the texas stone man you I see, see him there him in his now. cowboy hat yes. yeah he was screaming at her the whole way down so one of his athletes that he coaches and she did really well in that carry but we're still moving on down here comes another athlete very quick on the pick short choppy steps nice wide foot stance just rhythmic you you, you watch them and you hope that they don't have any stumbles halfway down the course and she she nailed it amazing yeah, that's one of the things you'll see if you if you once you get into the sport like the athletes all want to come and the what they'll do is always check out the the surface on which they'll be performing because they want to choose the footwear because i i remember the first time i pulled a train and on a train track there's gravel and i i wore something that probably wasn't the best choice because we couldn't warm up that was 20 years ago we didn't have the chance so i mean you i'm sure you have some that's why you wear barefoot but you have you have different footwear for different events, Gabe. Correct? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. 100%. And I, I remember at one of the national championships I competed, I think it's 2015 or 2016, we were on a convention center floor, like real polished concrete, and we mm -hmm. had a carry medley with sandbags and stones. And this was before the rules existed to where we uh, we had to wear shoes. But myself and fellow Texas athlete Trey Mitchell, we were the last to go on that medley. We just took off our shoes and went barefoot because we thought our feet would give us the best grip on the floor. And sure enough, they did. Oh. But your, your foundation is everything. Everything that you do power-related starts from the ground up. So if you've got footwear working against you, then uh, check out our sponsors, Barefoot Shoes, and they'll help you out. 100%. And I, I'll tell people after they start training for a while, if they're like, oh, I'm so, my knees are sore on my back, I'm like, man, check your footwear. Because that one inch or, or whatever, the support, don't, don't use common gym shoes. Like, don't, don't use New Balance. Not to throw, don't, don't really get specialized equipment because it makes a difference. That one inch of cushioning you can have properly or the right footwear can think of diff, the distance and the disc between your spine and so forth. The, the, you're dealing with millimeters. So get as much support as you can. All 
right, lane one about to begin her drag. She's ready, waiting for her whistle. And she looks very quick on that pick. It's clearly someone who is watching a lot of her fellow competitors and how they handle the bags. And she makes it all the way down. There's lane two, moving a little bit slower. Lane two, our open women's middleweight. She might have a slightly heavier bag, I'm not sure. But rest assured, those bags weigh more than they do. I can yeah. guarantee you that. Yeah, definitely. And filled with cumbersome, like, sand and, and material that's, like, hard to grip, and it's, it's a friction-based exercise. Now we have a master's level athlete going in lane seven on the axle. I see about 20 masters lined up to knock out their axle. And these, I believe, are our masters 50 plus. And they're doing 400 pounds on that axle for max reps of 60 seconds. It sounds like a factory over there, just like a piston. He's just cranking those out. It does, and if you're looking on the, the live stream on the screen, you can see a little bit of rumble going on. And that rumble, you can see it, we can feel it. The ground is quaking beneath his deadlifts. I got to tell you, as, they're, as we're about 80% through with the whole morning athletes and about over 300, 300 competitors, man, the equipment is held up beautifully. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. But awesome. John and Megan have done a great job, and the sponsors like Pioneer, Ganiac, LeMaster, Intec, they've provided amazing equipment that held up to the strain of a national championship. And I have no doubt that it will continue to hold up to the strain, but... We can only imagine that with some of our heavier classes, including the men's open heavyweight divisions up next in the second half of the day, that they're going to be put to the test, continued over and over again. 100%. I got to get me one of these lever deadlifts. They, they look fun. Uh, and we were talking about leverages with the, the, the coin toss and how much further you hold it away from the body, how much more difficult it makes. I would, have, I would love to just load up that thing with as much weight as possible and see if, <laughs> if I could take it all the way to that fifth rung. Yeah, when I, was a, when I did competitive strongman, not to be that guy, but you just, and I saw a T-shirt over there in one of the vendors, it just, you didn't look at anything and not think, can I lift that? And you know you could, you know, especially you, Gabe. Oh, I tell you, class. man, it's, it's whenever we go to Target or H-E-B and you see those stones out in the front, it's, <laughs> you, you, you can never deny that urge to want to just put your arms around it and try <laughs> We used to go in Southern California where I was doing strongman. We'd go, there was a huge furniture store off the 55 freeway, and they had these huge rocks imported from Mexico. We would carry our bathroom scale in with a towel and say, can we weigh it? We're going to buy it if we, <laughs> that's how we used to have to find stones. But to get back to your point, I can see an equipment company or yourself manufacturing that and also turn it into a Fingal's Fingal and, and a Hercules hold. You know, that's exactly what I thinking. I do have a Fingal's Finger at home, and I'm thinking of drilling some holes in there and having some... Uh, some ring hooks like this screwed in and nice yeah, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll see what we can do 100 percent. yeah no i i look forward to i'll be watching your instagram page uh the texas titan let me, uh, to, let me get a new drill bit for my drill and then we'll, we'll see what i can put together <laughs> most people are i'm unhappy if i'm at home depot usually but if i'm getting something for strongman <laughs> that means nothing's broken at my house and i'm like getting ready to add something to the training arsenal so here we have in lane that gal, that young gal just took that bag and she is making short work of it. She's got longer strides on her because she's got her legs moving out wider than the bag, so she's able to take bigger steps, but she cleared it in very fast time. Home Depot, if you're listening right now, we are accepting sponsors, so go ahead and reach out to Fallon Venom or the Texas Titan. 100%. Or Lowe's. Or Lowe's. Lowe's, Lowe's. Lowe's Home Depot, Ace. Ace, we are good with all of it. We don't. Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> Target. You name it, we'll plug it. All right, our next Masters athlete stepping up to the 400-pound axle. Yeah, I'll go ahead and answer the question. So, unfortunately, with a packed house right now, we have all the wires taped down on cameras 7 and 8. It was kicked out. We did get our best to get a plug back in, so we are. it is back in your live feed right now, so I apologize for that. There's, yeah, there's a couple thousand people coming in and out here today, and what we try to do is wire accordingly, but uh, sorry for the technical snafu. But, Sean, you expertly, like the former Marine you are, sir, adapt, improvise, and overcame. 
Nah, it's a crew I got. It's Ian and Emma being here from Valor and Venom, our productions there. Their production team I got here starting from the beginning. Believe it or not, is that they got married. They retired from doing this. I offered them to come down to Nationals. Ian said no. His wife, who is the ultimate uh, you know, in-house general, she corrected him and said, no, we are going to that, and they've done a fantastic job so far. Well, glad to have them here and keeping all these screens up and running for our viewers at home. Is in lane number seven, now that the screen is back on, we have our athlete just banging out rep after rep. He's looking strong and set at 400 pounds for max reps in 60 seconds. And in the far lane eight, we have the coin hole going by some of our masters' heavier ladies. They're doing that Texas coin hold. So that's their second, that's their fourth event. There's five events being contested. If you're just joining us today, we're finishing up uh, in two lanes. There's eight lanes being active when it's full, when the contest is full steam. Um, and what we have the five events uh, we're into right now, we're into some axle deadlift for the heavier men. And then on the far lane, the coin hold for the ladies. And after the coin hold, they'll do a drag, which is their fifth event. But now we have some men really getting ready to deadlift some heavy weight. They got that deadlift face on. All business. We're going to see some big axle deadlifts. I'll tell you what, you cannot have a smoother run event than what's going on right now. Things are spotters, lowers, and John and Megan Lester putting us together. I mean, it, it, this has been a well-oiled machine from the beginning. Absolutely. Oh, she's grinding her teeth over there. She's getting ready to drop that down. She's shaking a little bit. That's pretty low. I'm surprised she hasn't gotten stopped already. There it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, once we finish up with lane one and two, I'll switch to seven eight because pretty much that's where you're going to be the rest of the competition, at least for the AM session. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate Julia Smay, Arizona Strongman Chair, answering all your feats from Unbroken Strength, helping you guys out in the comments, basically answering any questions. I know it's been a little bit of an issue with Iron Podium, but you got to remember how many athletes are here today. They only have, like, one person typing at a time, so they're trying to get all that information in there, and you'll get your scores as soon as possible. Need a great job, sweetheart. Who was who that, Gabe? That was uh, Leslie Nickman. She is uh, one of the Masters athletes that I got to talk about. That I she got to see me starting strongman about ten years ago, and uh, it's it's great to see her still kicking butt, man. She she came and asked me right now. She's like, were those deadlifts better on one of the other live streams? I think it might have been at a. Uh, at the official strongman games okay. <laughs> when I was commentating there. She said that I uh, <laughs> I critiqued her deadlift on the air and she felt like she needed to be better. So she asked me if her deadlifts were better this time. <laughs> I love that she comes seek you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm most likely going to start working with soon as a coach. So that's, that's awesome. That'll be, that'll be fun. Awesome. For whatever chapter is next. And, for, she was for and she was smiles ear to ear this entire oh, time. Oh, my God. Le Leslie Nickman, she's always... Always got a big smile and just such a happy person to, to run into. So I was just talking to Brenda real quick, who did the national anthem, and we're gonna we're gonna throw her her on for a little bit. She and she she let me know she won the nationals last year, so she's right there talking to Brittany. So we'll try to honor her shortly, okay? Let me see what this is. Okay. Folks, um, to let you know, like I said before, ironpodium.com will be updated shortly. So just to let you know, the women who come in first are going to qualify for the Pro Women's World, which is going to be in Phoenix, Arizona, on October 22nd. Valor and Venom will be there hosting the greatest ladies in strength. We can't wait. It's going to be administered by our ally, the USS Strongman, Nat, uh, Strongman State Rep Julia Smay of Unbroken Strength. So the events are going to be this. Overhead medley, there's going to be a monster Mauser block lift, sandbag, 
over shoulder, and then an axle. That's the overhead medley. Then there'll be a max 18-inch deadlift, a max fingles finger flip with, um, with a I Trump think, finger I think finger. Trump finger finger. Yeah. So n let's not get political. Um, max distance Mauser block carry is event four, and then a five to six possible stone series event five. So how exciting does that sound about having pro women's worlds in Phoenix, Arizona? That is awesome. I, I, I have really loved seeing how women, strong women has grown and taken off to the level that we all have known it should have been at in the years. Just from, you know, the, these women put just as much into every bit of performance as the men do. And I, I love to see the level playing fields, even going back to the Arnold World Championships this year, seeing them on that same main stage as the men. So to have the, the Pro Women's Championships in Phoenix, Arizona with these events, I see block presses, I see fangal fingers, max 18-inch deadlift stones. This is a great equipment spread, and I hope that... Uh, and all the women that qualify bring their A game because it is going to be a true testament of all their abilities across these events. 100%. And, like, I have seen the growth of strength sports and women grow exponentially in the last 20 years, and I love it. And I'll tell you what, as a coach, and you're a coach, they're better clients. Yep. They yep. listen, they follow through, and, and some, uh, look, we're men, we're both men. Some of us men are stubborn, but women are more likely to get a coach and follow through, and that's why their performance is increasing at such a great level. Yeah, and, and you are seeing that bar continue to be pushed forward and further and further each year. 100%. And, I, I mean, Julia and Heather McDonald was her partner. They both they own an un unbroken strength gym. Um, women are in the capitalistic side of it. They're running great strength businesses. I mean, I think multiple – it's uh, there's a lot of couples here, but some of our vendors are just uh, uh, female-only businesses, which are uh, amazing. Yeah, I love it. I love to see it because – you know, being an athlete and a coach, there's there's no difference between the, the effort that, that we all put in when we're chasing this endeavor and having a equal playing field with all the opportunities available for both sides is that's the fundamental nature of what we need to have at the sports showcase. Gabe, have you ever been to a uh, all women's strongman event? Uh, I have not. I, I would love to go, and, and I'm pretty sure I would love to see my wife take part in that too. She actually went to her first national championships before I did. That's awesome. So, uh, it's, uh, I think that would be really cool to, you know, when you have an event like that, the, the best thing you can do to grow the sport is to show up, right? Yes. Especially for the competitors. So I, I, I'd love to see more more events like that being showcased. But when is the next one coming up? So the next one's coming for the All Women's, like Paul was saying, is October 21st, 22nd weekend. And the reason why I was asking if you've ever been to one, because I have been to one, the one that Julie put on a few years ago. And I went there guerrilla style before we had the production company and all that. So now i got three cameras trying to take it. Let me tell you something. The environment there, it was pretty much just me surrounded by, like, I don't know, maybe 300 women. Oh, my God. It was insane. It was amazing. Like, you talk about energy. It was a blast. I, I, I and and you're seeing it. these women grabbing, like, a 740-pound yoke and just trucking. You're like, this is strong. This is fantastic. I yeah. mean, it, it, the energy was definitely there. So if, you do, if anybody has a chance, listen. Go to these events, support the local events you have, but it was so much fun. I had the footage of it. We're going to put something together for them when they promote it once we get done with this one. But, yeah, I mean, I just sat there in awe just watching these women compete, and it was oh, so impressive. I would love impressive. to go, man. It's, 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 a, it's a whole half to our sport that, yeah, <laughs> you know. No, it's, it's rising tides rise all ships, right? Is that exactly, what they say? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, even just seeing here, you've seen the women athletes that have been competing. I mean, my God, they're just giving everything they got. Mm -hmm. Powerhouses all across the board. Love to see it. I think lane two is finished with their sandbags, or are we still going? That's what I'm going to try and find out real quick. And the Masters men in lane seven continue deadlifting. Around f with 400 pounds, this gentleman's up. I would say he's in the <laughs> ironpodium.com. It'll be updated, folks. Stick with it. Um, and we'll have a complete scoreboard under the click on the United States Strongman Nationals 2023 National Championships icon. Look for the scoreboard. And I've been assured through Julius May and the admin team behind the scenes who do a great bit of work, this will all be updated. But this gentleman, he's it's like a piston over there, Gabe. Yeah, we could throw another 200 pounds on that bar, and he'd still be cranking them out. <laughs> he right. is. Um, but I, I, I love that, that rumble on the screen you get to see. Oh, oh yeah. it, it's, it's best. you, you got to have rumbles when there's deadlift going on. Yeah, he's got a 
extremely efficient form. He's a strong man, and uh, his techniques picture perfect. Really. No waste of energy. No. No, he's hit a nice rhythm, too. He's, you know, he's not bouncing it, which is not, I wouldn't advise bouncing a deadlift, but he's doing a, a good touch and go and controlled repetitions. Yeah, they're doing a dance over there. I could see it. I just switched the screens, but unfortunately, Gabe is going to see it. <laughs> they're yeah. all dancing on lane two. Yeah, lane two, they're, they're all finished. The camaraderie is real. Uh, I see some some Miller Miller Ultras in hands for there. <laughs> oh, the ladies. Oh, look yeah. at the ladies are going to rip into this beautiful hotel tonight, I can yeah. just tell. <laughs> Actually, they won't wait till night, I think. They're being done at 11. Yeah. Their lunch is going to be quite lively. So yeah. if you want to come down for the afternoon show, if they're going to go get ripping and rowdy in the uh, in the hotel bar, then they're going to come down and support the uh, the other half of the stream. Oh, boy, I can't wait to see what the audience is going to be like. That'll Man, be this, this facility is amazing. <laughs> I had last night, Gabe, I had brisket lasagna. What? At the Italian place upstairs. What? It oh, is, yeah. I'm still tasting. It, it was. Oh um, my gosh. It was amazing. It, I, I highly recommend it. I, I am. A, I'm a little too hungry for you to be telling me that right uh, now. That <laughs> sounds amazing. It was amazing. I've been. I grew up in Boston. I've been. I've ate at Little Risky Italy. Lasagna. I've been to New York. I know. I saw that and I was like, I'm in Texas. Yeah. And Texas they, fusion to the max right there. They pulled it off masterfully. Delicious. Well, I might have to try that. Yeah. Yeah. It's t well, unless it, you cleared them out. Yeah, no, they uh, they do have. I'm, I draw your attention to the restaurants if you're here or ever come here to the Hyatt Regency uh, reunion in Dallas. But uh, they have a burger place next to it that's having a Texas strongman burger special while we're here. It's a beautiful double cheeseburger with bacon, cheese, and it was delicious. I had that the first night. The two restaurants are adjacent to it. The Italian restaurant, uh, it, its name will pop it, and they're right next to each other upstairs. But that brisket lasagna, yes, all that's right. all I can say. All right, I posted it on my Instagram. Check out. Paul J. Leonard, PLUSA. I am a huge fan of that now. It was absolutely scrumptious. I'm going to have to try it, man. It's perfect combination of flavor, I'm already guessing. Yeah, oh, my, oh my, yes. We have the utilization of a deadlift suit here in lane number seven. He's a taller athlete, but, man, he's got an aggressive pull. Yeah, and that suit will give him a little bit of a spring off the ground, but I have to wonder, like, how is that going to affect his breathing to last the whole minute? Yeah, that's Metal Brand. They're not a sponsor. That's... Former powerlifting world great Ano Turtonen's uh, brand that he sells. He's out of Finland, and I think he lives in Florida now. But, man, yeah, watch the pace of this man. He's taken a fifth of a ton, 400 pounds, and he's just doing it like he's like a piston. Showing no sign of stopping either. He's going to fill that whole minute with reps. And his breath is he's really cardiovascularly strong, Gabe. Yeah. That's not a limiting factor right there. I mean, he's getting a little sticking point right below the knees, but he's very efficient pull, controlling the bar. Well, he's got a good build. He looks like someone who does not skip his cardio days and keeps up with his conditioning. And it shows right here in his ability to cram all those reps in. And look, he's, he doesn't look like he's passing out or anything. He's talking yeah. incoherent. Right, yeah. Like, so he's a seasoned competitor, so he's... You know, I, I don't want to use the term save, but he's realizing, hey, I got two more events. Yeah. And I think it looked like he had a rep. We don't see the scoreboard. It's on ironpotent.com. It looks like he had a rep goal in mind for, our, for a competitor, and I think he hit it and said, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Here's our friend Eric Schmidt out of Freak Animal Fitness in Santan Valley, Arizona. Porsche enthusiast, engineer, hell of a nice guy. I like to follow him on Instagram because he's – he trains really smart. Half the time he trains by himself, like I'm forced to do with work. And, uh, man, he's – look at him. Good job, Eric Schmidt. I, I've been doing broadcasting strongman in the state of Arizona and now here nationally for about almost three years. I think Eric's done almost every contest I've been to. Seasoned competitor in really good shape, over 50. I think the 220 pound class is doing really good. Good form. He's in the fight. And in the far left lane from us is the coin hold. And I see one of the, one of the women's masters competitors doing the Texas coin hold. So it looks like it's about the circumference of a small steering wheel or a dinner plate. It probably weighs. I don't know the weight, 25, 30 pounds, maybe. I'm guessing somewhere around that right now. For the ladies, the men will get up to around a car battery, about 50 or 60 pounds, and hold it out, and a minute is a good time. Eric did a really good job on that. She's really fatiguing. good. It's getting lower. 
Yeah, I'm actually, with that bend in the elbow, I'm kind of surprised they're still letting yeah, that one yeah. go, but, but I'm not a judge. I'm no, just a fan. And I, I, I will say that even with it being lower, they are holding all the athletes in that lane to that same standard. Which is the key. So there is that. That's all the athletes want. Yeah. You know, if we're all yeah. judged on the same standard and you're, you're explained it, which you can see everybody's national level athlete here. Maybe it's their first nationals, but there's, the communication is good. It was on the rules briefing last night, and then prior to them doing the event, those judges tell them what they're expected. Which must be interesting internationally with language barriers, sir. Yeah, but I have not done a, uh, a contest where English is not spoken yet. So there's that. But I have got Julius May, our expediter expert, has told me that's 25 pounds in the coin hold on the ladies. Thank you. Great extended arm posture. Oh yeah, look on at her. Lane number eight right now I mean, with that point hold. Literally parallel to the ground. You can already see her musculature start shaking with the stress on her triceps. And still in the axle deadlift, lane seven, I see some teens coming up. So teen heavier men, with 400 pounds on the bar, one fifth of a ton on an axle. So if you're just joining us, folks, an axle is two inches in circumference. And unlike powerlifting, they are allowed to use straps and they can hitch. But that's a slick surface too. That looks like um, paint. And it's uh, some of these implements are created so that grip, strongman has always had a grip factor to it like no other sport. And that the center of that axle has a little bit of tape on it, I'm guessing to help with it rest on the chest for that axle clean and press event, but here, there, there, it is a glossy paint. There's, there's nothing for the hands or the straps to really lock into. And another key difference between an axle deadlift and a barbell deadlift is the axle is going to be supremely dead weight. There is not going to be any flex in that barbell whatsoever because it is a thicker bar versus a normal barbell, you know, an inch or less diameter. That thing will start to flex and bend at three plates and up. So here, the both sides leave the ground at the exact same time. It's a uh, a very low gear, high torque moment of, of pressure when that bar leaves the ground. But our teens are moving on through with 400 pounds in tow. He's in the struggle. Got his Chuck Taylors on. I highly approve of those. Great shoe to lift him. And our lane number eight athlete was there. She goes. Oh, you see we... that? <laughs> it hits like a wall. That Whoa, one. Oh, okay. I think his muscles are kind of giving up on him a little bit. Well, one strap popped off too, and he kind of got. Here's the see the EMT rush in. There's an EMT just in case, because people do pass out, folks. But they, you know, he's. Yeah, I think he went. I would think he went dark, and they're trying to get his belt off so he can breathe. Yeah, get some yeah, pressure. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Because what these lifters do, do something called the Valsalva maneuver. You basically close off your windpipe and your exhaust. Figure what that is, folks. I mean, he looks like he's kind of a little, you know, he's, they'll check on him. He's fine. Um, but you make your body rigid, a solid cylinder, a trunk, by holding your breath and doing it right. So, but he, he'll be fine. He actually, the way he ran off, you could tell as a teenager, he's like, you know, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm, I'll be, I'm, I'm not embarrassed. Well, yeah, you, you should never be because, A, you competed, and, B, not a, lo a lot of humans will go through a whole life not pushing their limits. Right, Gabe? Especially the teens. Yeah. It, it takes so mm. a, a high amount of guts to get yourself into a competition like this. 100%. And, you know, we are our most vulnerable selves when we are, are you know, showing what we've worked on in competition. And it takes, it takes a lot of internal motivation to get your foot through the door. But to see that exhibited in the youth here today. It's, it's incredible, and it, it makes me very excited for the future for each and every one of these young athletes, both men and women. We had a huge presence from our teen women as well. I don't think I've ever seen this many teen athletes coming together at an event. I would say out of the corner of my eye, just with a guesstimate, there might have been 100 teen athletes. Wow. I, or, or thereabouts. There was at least a tenth, if not an eighth, of the whole population here of 500-plus athletes were teens, just looking at them. I mean, the teen men, the, the amount, there's got to be... 40 or 50 of them at least we've seen in the heavier class. 
I love to see it, and and I've you've I'm sure could have seen it too that over the past decade, you know, any of the teen events or championships over the years, it might have been tough to to want to get those athletes to to get there in the first place. You know, you don't see a high turnout, or at least nothing compared to this. No. So to see this abundance of athletes here today, you know, the, the all the teen talent definitely deems this as a place that they want to be. 100%. And I'll, I'll drop a name from the past, but you can appreciate it. You know your history. Um, being from Massachusetts, when I ran California's Strongest Man, I got an email from Kevin Nee, uh-huh. and he was a teenager, but he, he, flew out to, he flew out to California and competed. Then he went to ASU after that. And I, he, you know, talk about a star burning bright, but uh, a 900-pound deadlifter back in the day when it was rare. But he, um, I think he's the first team to compete at World's Strongest Man, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. He just went at it hammer and nail for an earlier part of career. And now he's he's moved on to a family life and, and, a, and a profession and all that's good stuff. But, man, what a what an animal. But he was rare. Yeah. He's a trendsetter. They did a documentary on MTV about him, which probably all these kids saw, the next generation. But, man, this, this guy, he's going to run out of time before he runs out of reps. He's built a very powerful man. Young Got man. Tree trunks for legs. Yep. I don't know. There's a lot of strong guys in Texas, Gabe. Yourself, the Titan, and then, um, I mean, how many pros live in Texas now? Over 20? We've got myself, Trey Mitchell, Josh Thigpen, Austin Andrade. That's four. Josh Silva. Uh, I think Josh Silva is a pro. He's a pro. Yeah, jo- that's five. And... I, I hope I'm not forgetting. Uh, John Lester is actually a pro. He, he won his pro status when he won the national championship with the USS. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's already six. It's a myriad of professional strong athletes that live in Texas. Great, yeah, play, great yeah. place to live and train. And, of course, we have Travis Ortmeyer, even though he lives in Nevada now. He is a Texas yeah, he's stone a Houston, man. he's a Houston man. Yeah. Right. Gabe, I got a quick question for you, actually, part of the equipment-wise. I know we, we all love talking about equipment. Mm-hmm. So a few, uh, I think about three years ago, I reached out to uh, Big Head Strength so that he, I was able to order a chrome with knurling on it, a solid core axle bar. And you can see these axle bars are hollow, but they're still thick enough to, uh, to basically use the implement with. But what do, you, what do you think the biggest thing is, like, in your opinion, like the feeling behind it? Because I tell people all the time, I say, you want to train with it? Because some people are like, oh, I'll, I got an axle bar. Was it thick or is it hollow? And if the event's going to be a, a thick bar that's a solid core, you want to find that bar to train with because it is different. Absolutely. And that's a great question as well, because you, you, if you train on nothing but the hollow bar, especially on something like a clean and press, you know, that bar has so little mass compared to the weights that you're going to put on the outside that you're going to feel that bar easily rotate within the right. plates. But if you turn that bar into a solid steel axle, now we're talking about something that was 20 pounds is now 80 pounds. That thing's not going to really turn. No. It's going to feel like a lot more dead weight. And even on the deadlifts like we see right now on the screen, that wagon wheel axle, when the athlete lifts it up, so much of that weight density is all on the sides and not held in the center of the hands. If it was a solid steel axle, well, now you have evenly dispersed density throughout the center and all the way to the waist load on the end. It feels like a very uniform weight. It feels like a one single unit versus this, which is what I guarantee you with the hollow axle, it feels like multiple units all attached right. to themselves. Very different feels. And an athlete that has not trained on a hollow axle, if they're confronted with it in contest, it is going to feel like a curveball, and they will feel unprepared because... It does move differently. It feels differently. Yeah. And I personally love solid steel axes compared right. to hollow, steel, hollow axes. It just feels like dead weight, like I'm holding dwarf star alloy or something like that. Just, yeah. you know, supremely immovable. And even, and even with that thing about that, too, is that when, especially when you see the knurling, they're like, ooh, knurling, that's fantastic. Yeah. We got, some, we got some action going on. Uh, looks like lane, lane six. Lane six. Let's Our go team men are doing the Texas <laughs> And an Arizona athlete in the far left from unbroken strength. Gabe, you are a veteran now. You are three hours deep, and no one's giving you a water, or do you, can we get you anything, sir? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll take a break in a little bit myself to, to nourish, but I'm good, man. I, I, I love these, these days. Okay, great. Yeah, that's... Yeah, this is, uh, we've done local shows that went way slower than this. This is amazing. Thank you for joining us on the stream, Valor and Venom. We have three active lanes going right now, six, seven, and eight. Um, 
when it's full steam after at one o'clock central time when all, when the larger heavier weight classes go there'll be eight lanes going that's what we started with at 8 30 today we've motored through this five events today again like share and subscribe post some comments let us know how you think my name is Paul Leonard. My Instagram is Paul J. Leonard, PLUSA. I'm joined by the Texas Titan. Gabe, your Instagram is? At Texas Titan Gabe. There we go. Gabe offers, Gabe's uh, been to the world's strongest man. He's the 14th man in the world to deadlift 1,000 pounds. He is an amazing gentleman. Uh, like, share, and subscribe his profile. He, You can DM him on Instagram, and he, he does offer, he'll offer help, but he'll also offer coaching if you're interested in that. If, if it's a fit, you guys trade some messages and, uh, Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's great to be here. And I look forward to any of those future messages or comments coming from you all out there in the audience. That's always, you know, in the strength community, it's always positive. We really appreciate that. That gentleman, that that young man, a teen on, on seven, is just tearing up. He's got to be well over six feet tall. And he's aggressively pulling. The yeah, that's, axle, that's a big boy. 400-pound axle. I will get you the weight on the coin hold in a minute in lane six. I know the ladies are holding 25 pounds in lane eight. So they got to hold the coin hold out at arm's length. There's a judge right there that's told him what's expected. He's getting, too, he's getting low. He might get the call shortly. What it has to do is their arms have to remain parallel and locked out from the, from the ground. So you see his musculature, his rear delts, and his triceps shaking. Imagine holding about a, a good size car, a small car battery or even a good sized bag of dog food in front of you. It's just condensed into, it's, it's a replica of a Texas coin and there's weight loaded in that that's uh, uh, competitor appropriate depending upon their class. Those shoulders are gonna be torched after that. <laughs> Absolutely torched. I did a strong man, my, my, when I tried the Pro-Am I reference, I did it and I sleep face down. Uh, Gabe, and then I couldn't get out of bed the next day. I was one big cramp. <laughs> have you ever had a? Do you have a cramp story for the audience, sir? Oh man, <laughs> uh, there's too many. There's too many to recount. It's it's. Yeah. You know, I, I will say on that note, the most painful way to wake up at night is a calf cramp. Oh. I, I just hate it. It's such a powerful muscle to just lock up on you. And sometimes after a good squat day or deadlift day, those calves just get tugged on enough to where, if you try to stretch them in your sleep, you wake up because they lock up on you. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's a fine line. You try to hydrate enough, but you don't want to hydrate so much you can't sleep, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to get up every two hours. But uh, that being said, oh, yeah, your leg muscles, when they when they lock up, my goodness. Now, this gentleman, he's he's got a head of hair and a beard. He's, man, he's a teen. Amazing. Listen to him. He's banging out that 400 pounds like a piston. Big, strong, looking for the down signal. So you see the head ref. For the, every every stanch in all eight lanes has a head ref, and he's giving them a down signal. And because because their vision will get kind of a little bit Im, impacted by the I'll say that by the effort, the, it's a the down signal is a hand in the air, and then they just motion it so the the athlete doesn't have to wait or even hear because uh, the OODA loops when you get fight or flight your OODA loops enacted, which is like your auditory your your certain senses heighten and certain senses decrease because you're focused. <laughs> on a barbaric task, so uh, that's why the hand up, folks. We have a competitor doing the coin hold right in front of us, nice straight arm position. He's got uh, headphones on, which I guess is, it's different, It's I guess that's legal. It helps him, uh, I, I would guess that it helps him stay in the zone and tune things out, but yeah, as long I, as he can still see or receive feedback from his judge when he's done or needs to make an adjustment. Yeah, I've never seen that. But uh, what it is, it's a lot of these people used to train with headphones. So I didn't know they allowed that. But uh, you, you see the the promoter there, John Lester's right there. So I'm not saying it gives you an advantage. I would think a little disadvantage. But I tell people to train like train like you're going to compete. So if it's, if it's allowed, I guess. Yeah, I mean, every contest will have its own set of rules. And... Some contests won't allow the use of earphones or headphones, some will. And I would guess that with how many athletes are here today that it's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of background noise as it is, so the judges are relying on more on visual cues anyways. If you're watching the stream at home, I think they're working on one of the cameras, I think. I don't know if you're seeing that or not, but they're down one. Oh, that's right. We're getting the trophy presentation dialed in for you folks, but we still have action on six seven and eight thank you for staying with us we have the coin hold going on two of the platforms uh six and eight 
and the big boy of the teens are still Axel deadlifting. So um, thanks for watching us on Valor and Venom YouTube stream. Like, share, and subscribe. Some of the teen men getting into the coin hold. The lighter, like probably the middle weights, like 198 and 200 pounds, it would appear. And then the heavyweights of deadlift. And this man on seven, look at that beard. I have beard envy because mine never grows in well. It looks like Teen Wolf. But um, you had, at one point we were rocking quite the urban antler game. But again, yeah, Texas but my beard heat. is nowhere near as dense as this guy's here. <laughs> <laughs> Super impressive. Yeah. For, for a team, that's that's a man's beard right there. You play, so you, and you played. Would did you play high school rugby? Did they have that for you? Was it that level or after high school? I, it was after high school. I played at the the college level. Got gotcha. you. Outstanding. Yeah. But I can remember when I played high school football. It was always one or two kids that had a beard, and we're like, oh my god, <laughs> that kid's gonna be a handful. Yeah, no kidding. Man, child. Come back from one of those summers, <laughs> and then some of your friends have a full on mustache. Like, what? Like, wow, you're jealous. Yeah, but our um, coin hold is looking strong and collected. Now, one of our athletes who is not as tall as some of the others, a little bit shorter levers, but this is one of those events where those shorter levers pay, pay to his advantage. Look how long he's already gone, just locked in. That, that weight does not have to be as far out in front of him versus some of his six foot five counterparts. And this is where he's going to gain some serious points here. Yeah, he's been going for well, I think he's hit a minute. He could so. have gone further. I feel like he could have gone further, right. but he, he might really be saving his energy for that sandbag carry. He had quite the physique that was uh, strong, well-muscled, thick forearms, and he held it. Did a good job. wasn't Wasn't even really shaking, like you said. It wasn't. He didn't give out. Um, well, you will have noticed that all of our athletes are against a pillar. And one of the main things that they need to do is they need to keep both their shoulders and their tailbone against the pillar for it to stay a good lift. I think he might have taken his hat off, and this is the Ganiac Nutrition's um, son's uh, owner. That's Steven's son. I might, he had a hat on before, and somebody identified him to me. But Ganiac Nutrition is one of our chief sponsors here, along with Pioneer Nutrition, LeMaster, USA Strength, 1836 Kratom, the Southern Illinois Strength Expo, Intech. I'm getting everybody. Barefoot Shoes, I'm trying to. Don't mind me. Sticks and Stones, Barbell Rescue, Cerebus. Impact, mouthpieces, Intex Strength, Pioneer, Sticks and Stones, as I said. Thank you to all our sponsors who made this amazing Nationals possible. Thank you for Jonathan and Megan Lester for believing in us, making this possible. Now we have a really large gentleman deadlifting on four, teen, heavier weight gentleman. The coin hold's still going on. The heavier ladies in lane eight, and in lane six, the teen men, 220 probably, I would say. And also on the top left of the screen, we kind of uh, did some on the fly real quick. We want to make sure we give it to you because I know people want to see the awards. So whenever they do the awards, they're probably not going to be mic'd up because we got the mics for everybody else. Is that they're going to try and do that? You know, as well simultaneously, only because seven and eight, they have a humongous amount of athletes that are going through those lanes. So just to keep things rocking and rolling, to keep things speeding up, they're going to do the award at the same time the action's going on. So we're trying our best to give you not only the actions of the athletes and showcase them, but to give the winners their due. Yeah, Ward Smell and Salts is actually another... Uh, Another big sponsor here, and they had some fantastic uh, promo videos for them. And have you ever used them, Gabe? Not Ward Smelling Salts, but I have used Smelling Salts in the past. And some of you viewers at home might see the athletes sniffing on things right before they start lifting, whether it's like a little ampule or a little jar or capsule. And those are Smelling Salts. They're ammonia Smelling Salts that kind of trigger that fight or flight response, and it really helps the athletes connect all of their uh, their mind to muscle connections at 100% efficiency. You know, ready to go, ready to activate all of their power at once, kind of wake the body up. 
It's uh, very similar to what uh, paramedics would use to wake people up after fainting spells. 100% legal, and um, it just helps you get your focus, get your full attention. I have never used the ward salts, though. Now, I've seen something here. If you look at the screen for the coin, this individual actually wrapped his wrist. I've never seen anything. I've seen anybody else do that. I wonder if this is going to be a benefit to him. You know, I would be very cautious with how I would wrap my wrist if they were allowed. You don't want those wrist wraps to be too tight to where you go they numb. start cutting. Exactly. You cut off circulation. You might shave off some seconds that you could have had. But it does fortify the joint. And, I mean, I don't know. This is one of those things where I would not have thought to do about it. But if he might have a wrist issue. He might have a throbbing wrist after one of those axle events. We don't know. Right. 100%. Of course, he's using those Cerberus wrist wraps. U.S. Nationals 2020 is also sponsored by Service, and Service makes fantastic products. And they got a booth over there that is just hawk and merchandise up there. I think you sold out of something actually. In the yeah, first he couple can't. Hours. He can't. Ken can't keep up. What no. a super nice guy. He's a he's a pro strong man. Came from Scotland, relocated. He lives in Massachusetts. Does business up in New Hampshire. Good for him. Man, the action is. Uh, Heating up in these last three uh, lanes. Actually, the women's, they're setting up to the, the sand drag. They're done with the, the coin hold and the heavier women's. So you're just going to have coin hold, and there's, are they still deadlifting? They clean that bar. I can't see seven through the. No, they're done. So the deadlifts, axle deadlifts all done. So that means in lane seven, the masters and those heavier teens, all they'll have to do the coin hold now, and then they'll drag. Um, the women in lane eight are going to move on to the sandbag drag, and here in lane six, they're cont the lighter teens to up to 220 thereabouts, two, 242 maybe, they're doing the uh, co Texas coin hold. I'll get you a weight on that. The women were doing 25. I think it, the weights have to do with the implement. What's the, the teen coin hold? I'll get you that. Julius May, our expert. Puts all this information into the computer. It goes on Iron Podium. Be patient with Iron Podium. It's a busy day Saturday, but it'll be updated. Mind you, there's other events going on nationwide. 25. The the coin hold in lane six is 25 pounds that that young man is holding out. So hold 25 pounds out. Um, a gallon of milk weighs eight pounds. <laughs> so hold three of those out. <laughs> FYI, if you're watching this at home, I'm a big milk drinker. What about you, Gabe? I am, not, not as much as I used to be, but, yeah, I, I definitely still enjoy having hey. some milk, especially if my uh, I need a little bit of extra protein at the end of the day or something like that. Right, and your generation is lucky. You have super milk. You have Fair Life. Oh, Fair Life, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fair Life, we are available to, for sponsorship. Anything you can give, uh, we would love, I would love to be a pitch person. That is super milk. It is milk. I don't like to use that expression, milk on PEDs. It's just better. Your filtration system got a lot of that lactose out we don't need. Us younger, us old school guys that did the Go Mad diet, gallon of milk a day. I lived to get super strong off it, but I probably didn't need all that lactose. I dare say that Fairlife is very popular among this crowd here. Oh, yeah. It is a super product. Um, everything they make is amazing. Love it. Their, their ice cream, Gabe. I know we talked to guys here. Maybe you don't want to get into that, but their ice cream is amazing, too. It's got about... 32 grams for the sign of what is a pint of haagen which that has that in fat. I honestly did not know Fairlife made ice cream. You you uh, <laughs> enlightened me right there. That oh, yeah. sounds uh, dangerously it, delicious. It is, it, oh, my goodness, yes. Well, if you look at Fairlife, some of these milks I have, it's the same amount of stuff you're buying, some of these expensive protein drinks. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's actually cheaper. Oh, my God, and it, and it digests. You don't – I've been using that product for years. You don't even – it doesn't it, – the, the proof's in the pudding how it assimilates. You feel amazing. Never a bloat, never anything but positive. So if you liked milk, check out Fairlife. Yeah, there might be a Fairlife in this iced coffee I have in front of me that I threw in there just because. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a great coffee creamer. <laughs> Especially the chocolate one. Yep. From the Brown Cows. Our male athlete right here in the coin hold. He held that strong all the way to the end. Yeah, he, he did. He hit the wall when your shoulder joint just um, can't take that anymore because the leverage of the straight arms and the weight on it. It's a well-built young gentleman. He's asking. He's at, That's John Lester, if you're watching on lane six. John Lester is one of the Texas USS reps for the state of Texas, but he's also the promoter of this amazing nationals. He put his heart and soul into this, and what an amazing day we're having here today, Gabe. Absolutely. 
And this is all a direct representation of all the months and months of hard work that went into this. What a great team. It takes a village. It really does. Absolutely. Now, we, like I said, we can't thank everybody enough from the sponsors to the workers. And the big unsung heroes, to be honest with you, is probably the lowers and spotters for this thing because without them, it doesn't run as smooth as it is. I mean, they're moving the inputs back and forth. They're loading the weights. Everybody else is trying to give them information, and they're basically the ones that are picking up weight and putting on. And sometimes the lowers and spires are actually probably lifting more weight than the actual athletes at the end of the day. It is not uncommon for the lowers and spires to come out of these events more sore than most of their competitors, <laughs> yeah. especially if they, they don't happen to have dollies or any forklifts right. or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. In, with my experience in this day and age, what I've joked we should do is prior to these events, we should just go onto a job posting bo board and say, do you want to lose five pounds this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and because that's what it is. You want to work out? You will. You move more weight per square inch when you do that. I think this is our oldest masters competitor on lane number seven. About ready to do the coin hold from Massachusetts, Springfield, yeah. Mass. I'm doing him a disservice. I forget his name. He came over. He's a super nice guy. And uh, again, there's over 500 competitors, but I met him. He's a super nice guy, and uh, glad to see him able to come showcase his strength. And, folks, we appreciate it. We're going on a three-and-a-half-hour mark with the live stream. You know, we're at 337 viewers, and we hopefully that you guys can go ahead and share this, let your friends know, your friends and families know, is that we still have a second half of this we're going to do after we take a break. We're going to go on to another venue in the p.m., which will be the afternoon, which will be around hopefully 1.15 Central Standard Time, and we're just trying to grow this up and blow it up as much as you can. So if you enjoyed what you saw this morning, trust me, we have a second half that's going to come your way as soon as they're all finished here. And like I said, this category we're in right now for the weight class is the largest one we have. So, you know, they kind of use two lanes, actually three lanes now, to try and uh, get this done as fast as possible. <laughs> it might not seem like it's the most exciting thing to watch, ladies and gentlemen, but it is one of the hardest, I can promise you. And it is interesting to watch the Masters Division take this coin hold because yeah. there's something that we like to joke about in strongman and strength period, and that is the phenomenon of old man strength. It, it is. And it is a very real thing. It is a type of strength that is uh, nourished and gained over years of living. And some of these young bucks, these teens, just don't, don't have that no. type of muscular endurance. And it usually shapes up in, in grip and holds and things where the body just has to lock in place. So... I feel like we're going to see some really long times from our, our male Masters athletes on this coin hold right now. Oh, yeah. Speaking about, you know, you're talking about, like, the Masters. Let's just let's throw a name out there because you guys are from Texas. And even though they're your rivals, but an Oklahoma, an Oklahonian, you know, Carl Gotch, he was crushing apples with his hands until, like, like, 85 years old. I mean, just grabbing it and squeezing it into juice. I mean, that's that old man strength that everybody's old, afraid the of. The epitome of old man strength yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about Mark Felix a while ago, yeah. too, and he's – Crushes apples for <laughs> for laughs on stage. You know, to be honest with you, Gabe, I think that is the one thing you see in the gym that, unfortunately, people don't train, and you and you have to train it just like you train biceps. I mean, you gotta train your grip, especially if you want to be on a pro athletic circuit. I believe. Absolutely, and that that is a type of strength, especially when you talk about like the intense weight farmers holds or the Hercules holds, where that is completely dependent on the strength of your connective tissues, like your ligaments and your tendons. And the only way those get stronger is by years of constant stimulation and training. Right. And some people will think, oh, it's enough for me to just do a back day where I have to keep my hands closed on some rows or some pull downs. But no, you, you got to specifically train grip with the intent of trying right. to get a stronger grip. I mean, how many times you see something, I mean, they're strong enough, but what's the first thing that fails? Grip. Yeah. It's the first thing that goes. And fortunately, it is what it is. You can't go back. But you, know, you just see all the time. Like, I'll see people that sit there not saying that I know the best about training, but. They'll throw straps on there, like, immediately before even trying the weight. It's like, well, wait, we'll try it. And then, you know, when you get fatigued, then throw them on there and, do, and then go for it. I get it, man. And it's one of the most functional type of strengths there is. It's your ability to maintain a close grip against heavy objects. And I always like to think of the real-world applications. Like, if you weren't doing strongman but you needed these, strength, these strengths outside in the real-world life, if you had to lift something heavy and your life depended on it, you would want to know that your strength, that your grip does not pry open easily. So anyone listening out there, don't uh, – don't undervalue the importance of training your grip. It, it should be a mainstay in your program and not just not just the accessory work, but do it with intent. That's my advice. Yeah, and it's just like anything. You know, people say, like, how do you get a big chest? Well, you train it. Yep. How do you get how do you big biceps? You train your arms. You know, it's, it's how do you get a good grip? You train grip. 
what you do. Yeah. And you can do it really anywhere. I mean, you can train grip as simple as basically finding a place that has like a pole, just hang on to it, lift your legs up, you're training grip. Some of the best grip holds is it just hanging from a pull-up bar. Yeah, exactly. You get strong enough, do it with one arm instead of two. No, it's exactly. It's just something you have to do. I wish I'd see more of I think I think people are catching on to it, especially those that try to go into like a circuit course like that. I think so. Yeah. But that, that is another event, just like this coin hold, where the athletes that have not trained, they miss out on a big chunk of their points. And this specific coin hold, like we're seeing right now in lane number seven and lane number six, it's points on the board. Absolutely. Look at it. See, you see those fibers twitching right there. I love to see that. Those triceps jiggling under the shoulders, just locking that coin over yes, out sir. in front. And I've seen lots of different grip positions on this coin hold, too. Some athletes are gripping from the very front, yeah. maybe grabbing onto where the, the metal engraving is, some directly from the bottom. It all comes down to personal preference, like where they feel their strengths really lie. Is it in their elbow joint? Is it in their shoulder joint? Is it in their wrist, in their upper back? I didn't get a chance to rewatch it, but I'm almost positive during the rules meeting, this was the mo there was the most amount of questions asked on how we can have – and Big John Pran, which was like, listen, why don't you keep it up, keep it up. Just <laughs> hold it. <laughs> yeah, hold it. Because, like, some people's like, can we put our fingers inside? And John's like, you can, but that weight may slam onto that, and that's going to hurt you. So, I mean, just, just hold it. John's very eloquent and blunt <laughs> when he needs to be, and it helps keep all of these nearly 600 athletes oh, in line. Yeah. <laughs> do what you got to do. Keep it up. I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Tough, yeah, it is. Love. Yeah, exactly. We'll learn if it didn't work. Oh, that hurt. Okay, don't do that again. But now John and Megan have put down a absolutely phenomenal show so far. Oh, he is getting to the end of his he rope there. Saw, yeah. yeah. I think he made one adjustment that he went down a little too far. That's okay. He knew he had more in the tank, and I think that's why we're seeing that little bit of disappointment. But he he did great. He held on for a long time. Right. And our old man's strength right there. Jeez, look at that. Late look at that in the corner. Awesome. Now, the bottom right corner of the screen is what we got because they're, they're attempting to do the uh, the drags here in a little bit. So we didn't want to adjust the camera too much. But, yeah, we got the, the Masters over here in lane seven. I believe they got the women's in lane eight. And then uh, they kind of pretty much put another version of the coin hole, obviously, in uh, lane six. So. We're trying to get as much coverage as you can. Of course, you see in the top left of the screen, eventually they're going to do the awards, so they're probably going to do that later on a little bit. Our heavyweight women, or let's see, our masters heavyweight women. Lane number eight, remind me who we have there. I think it's our like, masters women, right? I, th I believe so. Yeah, she is moving on with that drag, and this drag looks heavier than some of our other sandbags we saw in the prior heats. Where we were seeing times that were getting done in around the 10 second mark, that might be. Okay, so lane number eight is our master of women's heavyweights. It's a big bag to drag all across that course. We're going to see some torch quads, oh. torch hamstrings. But it is the pinnacle of their USS National Championship. They need to finish strong, claim those points, and see where all of them stack up in terms of the podium placings. I like that the most awkward event is the last event because you've done everything else, you're feeling great, and you're like, all right, now well, how do I tackle this thing? So it's a mental game as well as a physical game. It is, and you, you have to have the awkward events last. And it's usually, a lot of times in strongman, it's the Atlas Stones, right? Like a big, awkward object to put your arms stable. around. Stable. Uh, in terms it's of the stable. objects that we've had here today, this is a, an odd and awkward object, and it, yeah. I love how it left that level of unknown. Like right. The athletes have not gotten to train on this specific bag. And here we're seeing lane number eight. She's taking different techniques, and like I suspected before, it benefits the athlete to get as much of that bag up off the ground so so much of it isn't dragging, but that does put a lot of the weight directly in their, their grasp. Yeah, if you look at it, because you saw the other women, they were grabbing, even other competitors, they were grabbing kind of like getting at least like almost like a headlock on top of the back and drawing it back this one. You know, this individual's trying a new technique, miss a technique that works for them, or it's the best way they can do it. This looks heavy. I'm guessing this might be close to the 300-pound mark. You saw some of the lighter bags that are around the 200-pound mark, and athletes were able to really manhandle them with ease. But this is one where you just got to fight and get every last bit, bit, bit of inches that you can. Right. Absolutely. Now they got a round of applause over there. I mean, she gave it her all. She can see she's definitely fatigued. But you know what? That's what it's all about. That's points. <laughs> That's points right there. Our coin tosses 
continue, or our coin holds, holds continue, continue for yeah. lane six and lane seven. It, it is an awkward. Did you ever? Did you? Did you? Have you tried with the? I have they got? It's it's interesting. No, I'm, I'm. I would not be grabbing all the way at the very end. I'd try to go in the center, but I, I know just with that underhand grip that, like, like a goblet, like almost like a goblet style. You think of the muscles down the chain, and the biceps are going to fatigue before the shoulders do. Right. Just because there's that upward facing bend in the elbow. But look at those faces we're seeing right oh, now. Yeah. Look at, I love it. And he went as far as he could. And his counterpart, our Masters athlete on the other side of that pillar, barely starting to show some shakes and fatigue, but he is still locked in. I don't think we have a good view of him on screen. No, well, there we do on the bottom of our, bottom, our bottom, right. bottom right. We like do. A, like a hero. Good. This kid. We have attempted to try and clean out the area, but people keep moving in and in, and you can only fight so much. But that's why we try to get the multiple screens up here for you that are watching us. You can at least see what it looks like. So if you look at the bottom right hand side, you got two events. You got the sand bad drag, you got the coin hold, and then also you have the coin hold on the other side on camera number two. And here goes lane number eight attempting that massive bag carry. Well, it's a very awkward object to get into that front, that carrying position. It's always wanting to flop right back towards the athlete. Right, it's just an awkward, it's not see, a solid object. You can it, see it her moving. figuring it out in yeah. real time right there. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, uh, like right there, she said, you know what, I'm just going to do this, and that, now she's moving. That's the way it works for her. I guarantee you those fingers are all oh. getting zapped right now. <laughs> but it's the last event. That's all that matters. Yep, just endure, 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 yes. and get those steps. Yes. Outstanding job. There. Wow. Definitely a heavier bag. Oh, yeah. Obviously a heavier bag. I think they're going to bring out the 451 or later on today. That's good. And it's it, yeah. <laughs> John is even like, like you said, if anybody wants these bags, email John. He'll be here. He'll come, or if they're here today, just come and take them. So if you're in the Dallas area, you want one of these bags, come by. They're yours. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to one of the other spry, spry athletes out here. Right, right. But we'll see which ones haven't had enough by the end of the day. Yeah. One more. We've got a tall athlete right here in our, our stone team. face. Yeah, it's a stone face in it. Got the long levers. He's got a good position. It's definitely an event where the athlete needs to try to find their their zen zone, tune out a lot of the noise around them, and just focus on right. keeping those muscles locked, not letting them waver, not letting them drop trying to control the shakes because those shakes can be detrimental too. The constant back and forth between which muscles trying to gain control. And here we go. We're seeing him get towards the end of his rope there. There's a scream. I see Megan and John Lester, the promoters of this right there, taking in the action. John's wow. actually functioning as the timer. He's not just a he's not just a pro, he's not just a fan, he's not just an administrator, he's a he's a timekeeper too. He's he's just hands on. That was a great performance from our athlete right there. You know, in this the, the moment when he started showing signs of fatigue and shaking, he still took it at least another fifteen seconds. Man, I stepped away because we came in early, folks. I stepped away to get some water so I keep my voice going. It's dry here in Dallas, but Man, they have a whole food concierge set outside for the athletes and spectators from the restaurants. It's amazing what they've set up since we've moved in here. We got here at about 7.30 this morning, but, uh, man, what a production they've done here. It's awesome. It's world class. So if you can't join us, come to the Nationals next time. But there'll be a whole afternoon session. If you can hear my voice and you're in Texas, if you're in Dallas, come on down to the Hyatt Regency. I highly suggest it. Yeah, the hotel has definitely been a, a, a wonderful host for this event. Seems like they're pulling out all the stops and making sure it runs as smoothly and great for the crowd as possible. All you eat buffet was canceled to a single serving. I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> oh, man, the food here has <laughs> been <laughs> outstanding. <laughs> if, you came here, if you came here Wednesday, it was all you could eat buffet. And also, and this, the, these all athletes showed up. It was like, all right, we're just going to charge them like 15 bucks, and uh, yeah. that, that's it. <laughs> He's hitting the wall right there on, le on lane six. Oh, there he goes. Big Look at that. Look at the shake. Athlete. Look at the shake. He's fighting it, though. Yes, he is. 
I think John called him off because his hips might have left the pillar. But he was near the end of his rope and maybe would have only gotten another two seconds anyways. He got Masters men over there right behind him. Old man strength going strong. And lane number eight moving on with that sandbag drag. A lot of different techniques and holds being implemented here for this bag. A lot of unique events going on right now. You can see that our athlete, our, our female Masters athlete, just walking off. Her, she grabbed towards her lower back. This has been a, a very back-intensive day, which is a true characteristic of strongman. Mm -hmm. You know, big backs win shows, big strong backs win shows. But we had every event minus this Texas coin hold was very back-intensive. So for the viewers at home, you being a pro and having gone to World's Strongest Man, how do you keep your back healthy? You chiropractic, other than correct training? How, how do you keep your back healthy, Gabe? Well, the chiropractic care I like to view as short-term care. Like if something goes wrong, that's a good way to realign yourself back into place. Mm -hmm. But long-term physical therapy measures are usually, uh, they're not as exciting because they don't correct you right there and then and there on the spot, but they will pave the way for healthy movement patterns later on and down the road. And I would say anytime an injury is revealed, or you know, you, you, you have some feedback from your body, like you've got an ache or a pain, it's not supposed to be there. That's your body telling you something. You need to kind of take a step back, analyze everything about why that is there, and try to make some changes to move better, to leak less energy, to become more efficient, to be more balanced. And usually that is kind of getting back to the drawing board and just making sure that you do have that balance from right shoulder to left shoulder, from right hip to left hip. Uh, if something is even just off by millimeters, that usually goes right up the chain to the lower back. Right, right, exactly. And, and like I like to say that there's only a few people interested in millimeters, engineers, uh, barrel suckers in the gun world, and orthopedic surgeons. So <laughs> yeah. I suggest you don't want to meet the, the latter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as far as recovery measures, I love... Uh, E-STEM machines, little muscle tens units or things like that to okay. passively stimulate the muscle and help with recovery without having to do anything too intensive. Uh, CBD rubs are great. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Good on straight on massage or muscle stripping, kind of mm -hmm. breaking away adhesions on the, the coverings of the muscle, the fascia. And good old foam rolling on the crossball work, soft tissue manipulation. But, uh, you know, it, it's very hard now as a, a pro-level athlete to find the care that is able to have that same kind of in-depth knowing and know-how that I have myself at this point. 100%. So a lot of times right. I will just opt to do my own phone rolling in the crossball session versus going to spend. Look at that athlete. Yeah. Look at that athlete lane six. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. wow. I, yeah. I, the, the head judge, is, yeah, he was, uh, he pushed his limits. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, in, in, the, the lay person, if you go to ART and active release technique or massage therapist, I was fortunate back in in California, Dr. Horrigan, Joseph Horrigan loved powerlifters, and he was in Ironman magazine, so he'd work on me. But when he would work on me at my biggest when I was 325, um, I was the Friday appointment at 4, and we were both done after that. Yeah, yeah. He went home and he said had a few beers and because uh, they really have to put it on you when you get super, Absolutely. you know, the more muscular you get. But do you, do you do any traction? Do you invert or hang upside down? That's or? another big one I, I left out. I, one of my favorite things is taking some of the biggest resistance bands I have, tying them to, like, an overhead pull-up bar, and then getting on a box, threading myself through it, and laying back, yes. letting those bands pull my spine one way, and then me being pulled by gravity the other. Yeah, that's a really good way to decompress after a. Yeah, I do that. After the Donnie a heavy Thompson. yoke session, yoke yeah, the, especially. Right, the Donnie Thompson lower back proto yeah. file, protocol. The first power lifted to total over three thousand. He he likes to, the old jump stretch monster bands, which I have one. They don't sell them anymore, but they make like the big gray strap, yeah. et cetera, through sputting. But yeah, you, it, it actually, it's a band that wraps around your, right around your hips and your pelvis. You, you go inverted, and it, I can't tell you how, it feel, how great it feels, but you're, yeah, all this, this, all the super strong kids are doing it, folks. So, Have you ever done any body tempering? I have not yet. I'm looking forward to it. I, I've tried it twice before uh, from a... a I went to, to Utah, the, the Forge Gym there in Utah, and they have one of their I've heard members about and athletes there. He's a body temper certified, and he worked on me, and it was it was very refreshing. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. tough, but, I mean, you think about the how just the weight of these tempering rollers just mashes out all this stiff tissue, like the lower back and the hamstrings. Definitely something I would like to try more of, and I, I highly recommend people to give it a shot. Yeah, but so before that all came out, in old school you probably saw this. Like I, I have three kids, when they were younger I would pay them to walk on my back. 
<laughs> You'll have to train your daughter to do that when she's when she's of age. And, she's uh, gonna have to pack on a lot more weight for it to be effective. <laughs> I will tell you what. But yeah, I remember days where I would used to have my wife like walk on my back. As but well yeah, too. I haven't done body tempering. I love Donnie Thompson. He's a friend. I can't wait to try it though. I haven't got over to South Carolina, and I don't know anyone in Arizona that does it. But it's good. You, you know, it's good as a world class athlete. You got that and. Um, there are some amazing facilities around the country. I know Utah. I've been up there. Utah has some amazing people in gym. So cool for you, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've definitely got to meet some really great people all along the way, and a lot of uh, that's the philosophies and experiences it. and knowledge that we we just when we're surrounded by this company of strength, it's uh, it, it always brings out the best in ourselves. You know, whether it's just from learning or, or feeding off the energy of each other. 100 percent sure and i am seeing this this room this venue starting to pack even more a lot of our the big men are coming the, the in. big men are coming in they're getting ready for their spot in the limelight after and that's not to say we haven't had big men already some of these, <laughs> these, some teens. Of these teens i'd Look be looking this. up to man yeah these teens are huge Yeah, pretty soon you're going to start getting the aroma of knee sleeves and elbow sleeves just from everyone <laughs> back in <here. laughs> the the seasoned competitors. Yeah, are, the the icy hot and the Ben Gay and the yeah. Biofreeze. We we used a lot of Equablock. Oh yeah, I love that. The Equa, you know, it's made for horses, right. um, but it's capsicum. It's pepper. It's a beautiful substance. I highly recommend it. Equablock, if you're listening, I'd love a sponsorship. <laughs> All right, looks like they're finally going to a total of all the sandbags. They're going to be now in lane seven and eight. Still doing a coin hold in lane six. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, Gabe, it's been definitely been a fun almost four-hour live stream. It has been four hours, in my opinion. It's moved fast. Yeah. It's moved fast, and it's moved faster than any of us, I honestly think, have expected it to. And that's pretty pretty cool to see. I'm wondering how the uh, the athletes spread will be across the eight lanes with the second half of the day. Do you know if we have any of the lanes that are stacked and packed like these last two lanes were? We do. Uh, I'm set, I sent a runner. We're trying to find uh, you know Megan. I see John's right there, so we're not going to bother him. But we're trying to find Megan. I, I have. So we get a break. Yeah, and I have it right here. Like Julius Mayer expedited yep. did it. So in the PM lane ones will be. She's giving me documents as we speak, folks. But her, right. if you can read her writing, like men to 165, 181. So that's the PM. Yeah, so in the PM session, we'll have our open men's lightweights, our men's middleweights, our men's heavyweights, our men's super heavyweights, our master's men's heavyweights, our master's men's middleweights, and our master's, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that covers everything. So all the heavyweight athletes, along with the open men's lightweight and middleweight. Yeah, absolutely. So what now, you guys see in the stream right now, and I know I see you guys kind of say, we want to see lanes. There's no more lanes. The lanes that you see are six, seven, eight, are the only ones that have action on it. The reason why we got the camera set the way they are is because we don't want you just staring at a dead screen. So at least you can kind of see the crowd behind us. You see the national the logo too. that we have for the USS Strongman National Competition. Be twenty three in the top left above me. And then obviously you've got your viewing angles from the other two channels that you can see right in front of you. That's what we have right now. They, they flew through uh, the events. And, and if you maybe were late to join, you may have missed your athlete, unfortunately. But this is a well-old machine down here. When John and Megan said we're going to start at a certain time, we started, and those lawyers and coaches and judges, they were just going. I mean, they were making this thing go like a... <laughs> I'm not going to say crap through a goose, but that's the best way I can say it. Lane number seven on his sandbag carry right now, we're seeing a technique that has not really been implemented yet, and probably because these bags have just gotten so heavy, he's grabbing about a third of the way down yeah. to where the bag is drooping over both sides of his hands, so he's not able to stand up all the way, but he used that as his technique to drag it down the course. He did stumble once, but he got over quick, and it seemed like a pretty, pretty good working position. And lane number eight, our female athlete here. Move it! Good pick on the bag. Oh, has a man. lot of it up off the ground. Aggressive. Can she stay up? And that's a technique that everybody mostly was using that was successful. And she was successful right there. It's a fantastic time. That was good. I really like that, that technique, that position. But it does require some finesse and some confidence in that initial pick up off the ground to get it to that carry start. Yeah. 
Well done, though. Very well done. So we have our team men and our masters women heavyweights. Now they're getting situated over there. I think we're done with the coin holds. It looks like it. And now yeah. our next two athletes have begun the sandbag drag. Lane number seven, moving fast, long strides. Wow. There we go. So I think they got the lanes done. So now we just have focus on lane seven and eight. And again, ladies and gentlemen, for you that are watching at home, this is the final event for the AM session. So we are coming down to the wire. And it has been an absolutely fun show to watch. A lot of feats of strength here. So many athletes, so much talent. And every athlete here has proven themselves at the local and state level. And that's what guaranteed their qualification to nationals. So these are tried and tested athletes showcasing the skill that they've worked. I've talked to some of them. Some of their preps to this contest have been three months. Some of them have been a couple weeks. Some of them have been eight <laughs> months. Yeah. So there's a lot of buildup yeah. and a lot of uh, a lot of high energy and anticipation each time. Oh, and that's the best thing about that. And, you know, again, Gabe from the bottom of my heart, appreciate you being here, yes, making this exciting. Oh, it's great to be here. And any day I get to uh, take part in any sort of championship event is a good day. I've been saying all day, it's a beautiful weekend to be strong. It oh, really absolutely. Is. Right now I'm going to give a shout-out to one of my Marines that, uh, that had, a, had the privilege to uh, hopefully have some impact in his life. Uh, Corporal Fleming's on the stream right now. So, hey, buddy, if you're watching, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for watching us. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for your service, Corporal. Yeah, the, the, not to take away everything, but, like, you know, obviously the, in the Marines, you know, everybody likes to prove themselves. It's a shark tank, so, you know, the strength thing is always, like, how can I one-up you and all that stuff? And I'm not saying we were the best technical technical trained obviously when it comes to this but it's always been a thing like you know like some of the stuff you see here like oh that's sand base where it's like that's all we had we deployed we had some tie rods we had some train stakes and oh look sandbags i put more sandbags down there and lift i mean it, it's amazing with the strength athletes come up with to try and do it and a lot of this stuff was pretty much developed from when we deployed i mean yeah. it really was <laughs> it's the, the epitome of functional training right that's there. exactly right it's like oh, you want to do a drag Hey, grab the tow bar. We got the Humvee right here. Let's go. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> yeah. Lane number seven. Move well down the course, grabbing the bag with a pinch grip from each side. We're going to see so many different types of techniques with how the athletes handle this bag because, again, it's a very unique piece of equipment. So unique that I dare say most, if not all, of these athletes don't have a bag like this to train on. No, no, I'm telling you, it was very neat to see all the athletes come here and they look at it and go, what is this? I have a good buddy of mine who uh, trains out of Brownsville. His name is Matthew Barba, and he will be competing, I believe, in the, the latter half in the afternoon in the men's open super heavyweight. But when I saw him training for this event, he would take uh, almost a 300-pound sandbag, carry it vertically, but he had the sandbag attached by chains Two big anchor <laughs> chains on the ground. So a 300-pound oh, wow. sandbag in his hand with 400 pounds of chains awesome. dragging. I'm like, That's all right, great. you are about as prepared as you could possibly be. Good luck, my friend. Not only that, it's an amazing photo off. <laughs> it, it, looked, <laughs> it, it looked, looked, yeah, looked intense. It looked strong, man, as can be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. But that's what it is. You know, it, it, again, we talked about earlier in the stream. It's, you know, to train for these things, sometimes you just got to think outside the box and be creative and just look around. Sometimes going like a scrapyard or a junkyard, just finding something heavy. I will say Strongman makes some very great improvisers. Like we, yes. you know, we might not have certain equipment to train on specialty movements, but if we have anything that is remotely heavy, we can sure as heck rig something up <laughs> and make it effective. <laughs> oh, we'll make it heavy as fuck be. <laughs> Let's not forget, we always have our cars. We, 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 we can always fall back to the cars and use them to work out. Let's right. not forget. Oh, look at that individual in lane seven. Ooh, he fell down, but he's moving. Those kids have so much heart. So explosive. Look at that. <clears throat> Fast feet. I mean, this being Texas, I would have to say that probably the majority of them play, we play football. Probably on a line. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I, I mean, if I were a betting man, <laughs> yeah. that's a safe bet. <laughs> Oh, look at her. See, she's got a good grip. She's got a good pace. She can adjust for a second, but she was doing fantastic out the gate. 
there's the key right there. He's just trying to get as much of that bag off the ground. Less surface area contact, less friction, but that does come at the cost of having to hold all that weight in yes. hands, not being able to fully extend and stand up. But what a picture-perfect finish right there. Get it to the end and just fall in the behind. So we got some movement on the other lanes, but they're just warming up to some of the athletes for the afternoon session. Yeah, they, they won't start. No, they're just trying to figure out that... Uh, Turn you on. We'll get it on. It's not on. It's not hot, Mike. Oh, Sean. Lane number seven has a good grip of his sandbag, but can he stay up? He's moving fast. That is one thing, these athletes, with, with so much weight in front of them, they have to really know and appreciate that their center of gravity is no longer carried through their feet. It is carried about halfway between them and that bag. And if that can kind of, uh, if it gets out of control, they wind up on their butts. Such explosive speed from our teen athletes. Youth, it's um, not overrated. It's not overrated, and it's enough to make those of us who have passed that phase <laughs> envious. <laughs> no, he unplugged it, so now I gotta plug it back in. Who's she looking for? Oh, thank you. Who's she looking for? <sighs> Say, Megan, it's hot. The crowd is raucous. They are cheering on the ladies in the far lane. And the teens, they're burning through it. Big, strong teenagers. So what we'll have shortly when the events end, will there be an award ceremony for this morning? And then you can see, well, I don't think you can, but the, the heavier classes are warming up already for the afternoon, getting excited. is packing up as we finish our morning session of athletes with these sandbag carries. The rest of our competitor field is starting to warm up on their lever deadlift. But our eyes are focused on this final event in lane seven and lane eight. Kind of surreal. I just turned around and kind of looked to kind of do a few things, and wow, there's oh my gosh, yeah, he didn't see that, did you? No, I, I've been looking forward <laughs> this whole time. Turning around, there's a sea of people behind me. When did they get there? That's what I just said. I was like, wow, which we love to see here because I yeah. know that a lot of them are fans, a lot of them are some of the athletes' families are friends, but yeah, some people just kind of heard about it and came in today, which is awesome. And even just doing some quick scan arounds, like I've seen a lot of support crew here, like in terms of friends and family and fans from athletes that are not Texans. You know, right. Athletes that have traveled, or friends, friends and family that have traveled some pretty great distances to be here. And that's awesome. You love to see it. Absolutely. And even like the way they put this on, it's almost like a mini expo if you think about it because of all the vendors we have here. It feels like a convention center. Right, yeah, it does. It, it really does. Thank you. But that, you want a lot of it off the ground. You still want to be able to breathe. I would say below the nips, so I could breathe, but the more... Yeah, uh, uh, All right. Yeah, and I guess from looking at it, I guess... Now look at lane number eight as she gets set. She might be so grabbing for that pinch point she just set up. They said that one that weighs 350 for the big boys. Jesus Christ, that'll be a bitch of sand, no less. But Do you, is there other, other than Eric? Is there any... No, it's a freak animal. So, Gabe, so we've seen the uh, morning show. So, is there anybody here? I know you said it earlier, but for those that are just tuning in right now, because now we're almost up to 400 viewers, who are you looking forward to to watch showcase their feats of strength here in the afternoon, AM? 
you, you know, it's uh, it's been great to watch all of this AM session, but just from the pure level of bias that I myself and a man, <laughs> men's open heavyweight competitor, yeah. I cannot wait to see all the fresh talent that is, is right. coming out there. And, you know, it, it goes without saying that whoever comes on top of those three spaces of, of podium placing, those might be some future rivals. Right. It could <laughs> those be your possible be, competition. I know. So I, I'm, I'm very excited to see it. I'm very excited to see it. And when you have such a large pool of athletes, you know that there is, there is a significant portion of it that is just exemplary talent. Off the top of your head, has there been anybody who now competes with you guys that you like saw as an amateur? You're like, uh-oh, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Mitchell Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, man. What? By storm, what a year he's had. Oh. Yeah. At one point, he was just some other guy on the other side of the world trying to match my deadlift, and now he's the world's strongest <laughs> man. So, yeah, that, that's the first one that comes to mind. But, no, there's, that's the beautiful thing about the sport is as the sport grows, you get so many more people who weren't necessarily exposed to it find a way to get their foot in the door. And right. guess what? They have some astronomical potential. And you get to see it flourish, and it's uh, it's a whole other way of just showing what humanity itself as a whole is capable of in terms of strength. But there are definitely some uh, some athletes here that will be competing in the men's open that I'm I will be watching. Oh with, yeah. Uh, with eyes like a hawk. <laughs> and are you? Uh, uh, you'll be at the Shaw Classic in a in a couple months. But are you competing? No, no, I, I'm taking a break from competing right now. In the meantime, I'll, I'll be at the Shaw Classic, but I'll be there in more of a uh, capacity like I'm here at today, in a commentary capacity. Outstanding. So uh, that, that'll, be, that'll be fun, and it's, uh, I like to joke that it puts a lot less pressure on me because like, very physical, physics pressure. You know? <laughs> yeah, and you are a natural on the, on the mic, Gabe. I, uh, it's such a pleasure to work with you and be here and experience this. I'll never forget this, but... Uh, that's awesome. That, well, thank um, you, brother. I appreciate oh, yeah, that, that's, man. It's, it's I, something I enjoy a lot. I will. I'm pretty candid with my partner. Um, I don't want to. Well, we're going on the stream. I don't like to. But, like, I don't like when I see a sport or activity broadcast by somebody who didn't do it. Like, having been a big Kazmaier fan and having met Bill three times, and when he's not at World's Strongest Man, it just it, it doesn't sit well with me. And um, same thing in the NFL. I joke with him. I always joke with with. With Sean, my partner, I'm like, I'm not Joe Buck. He's in the NFL Hall of Fame, and he broadcasts the NFL, and I don't think he ever played it down. I don't – I get professional, but be that as it may, in our sport, I love it when I see a, a pro athlete or somebody that loves this strength sport and dedicated their life to it, get the chance to broadcast and give back this way. Well, it's it's great to hear those types of uh, receptions because that's, that's all that we hope for. I, I love it, and I love that any exposure that I can give to people at home who might not necessarily be here, that's – that's the profound type of effect I want to have. And it's fun, man. I, this sport has given me so much, and I, I get very excited thinking about what it's giving to every single one of these athletes here. And maybe if they have smaller siblings that are watching them with starry eyes, you know, or what, what the, the future must, it, it's just exciting. It really is. It really is. It's great. It, I can't, at the rate it's going, where this sport will be in 20 years will be uh, amazing. This, uh, the Nationals will. It'll be on television. We're glad. We're so glad you're joining us on. And YouTube has a TV, right? Has a TV channel. I have the NFL coverage coming up this year. So uh, this is free on YouTube stream. Bauer and Venom. We appreciate you joining us. But yeah, this will be. It, it's just. It's too good to stop growing and resi and people love it too much. It's just going to continue to grow, which will afford more opportunities, more eyeballs on it. There's not a person that lifts weights that can't. Re reference the world's strongest man which is the creme of the creme but now i mean this new generation will reference in the same breath though the arnold and the shaw's a stream but um you know that's that's the clash is now something on espn that's giants live that's what we that's what we want we love the sport there's enough there's more than enough channels there's more than enough dates and times to go around to have all that stuff broadcast to the mainstream you're right and, and we touched on it earlier that strength is just something that from the dawn of humanity it, it is imbued into our, our genetic code that it, it at least excites us to some degree that we want to see that bound push whether it's ourselves doing it or watching someone else do it it's a it's it's a primal a primal need if you will 100 percent, it is and and for us when we come here guys like me that are well over the hill, if you will, but I still love to lift. This inspires the heck out of me. There's older competitors here than me, and uh, for you in the prime of your competitive strength days, like it, 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 
motivation, it's something where you're sitting here and you have a plan as an athlete. You might not share it and, that's, and you don't know because it's, you know, when you have a family, your, your perspective changes somewhat, but you, you know, you are going back to World Strongest Man at some time. You're going to compete there. You want, you're going to win it in your mind. So you have a timetable. So motivation. So what's today? June. So Tuesday in October, when you're kind of eh, maybe not feeling it, you might watch this on YouTube back and you say, man, that athlete gave it up. Yeah. The motivation is a long-term thing. It's not a spurt. Absolutely. And for, for you and I both, at two different points in our life, to be able to come to an event like this and participate as commentators and find that shared level of inspiration. I mean, we're just two guys here, and we're in a sea of thousands of other people who are... I, I see a baby right here up front and center. I see some kids watching their, their older brothers and sisters. I mean, this is a a expo room full of inspiration and motivation. Oh, yeah. And, and for us to be... Us, I feel gifted to be a, a little part of it, right? To give back, to be like jo Jonathan, Megan believed in us, Willie Wessels vouched for us, and to be here and to promote this to potentially 8 billion people worldwide that has access to the internet. It's what an amazing, I can be a little part of that. It's such an honor. Well said. Wired one. And look at our, our staff in blue getting these sandbags reset up. They're doing sprints back and forth. I see them panting heavier than some of the other uh, athletes actually working. We're moving fast. We're moving fast, and I hear and see a lot of the heavyweight men getting on with their warm-ups on the lever lift. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, I would say... Right now, the place is at capacity in terms of competitors because they're still waiting. Yeah, the, the competitors from the morning, most of them have finished up, but some two lanes are still going, and um, the awards to happen, but then the, the, the afternoon sessions here warming up in full effect. If you're watching at home, competitors obviously in red. Blue are administratives, timers, spotters, loaders, support team. It's the Blue Army here that it's made this possible for the USS Nationals here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I see in the stream you're asking, you know, sometimes you'll walk in front of the cameras. I can promise you right now, and like I said, I had Gabe just turn around. We turned around and saw how packed this place is. You cannot move in this convention center right now. You cannot. I'm glad we have our own little area around the table because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not, no one else here has their own little area. No, <laughs> no I mean, it, it may not look like it on the stream because it's one camera, but as soon as we pan left or right, it's wall-to-wall -wall people. And... These people are not exactly small. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. 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 Yeah, there are no small people here. Yeah. Nor are their friends and family. No. As we saw with the teen male yeah. athletes, even the, the kids are huge. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, it's been an exciting day so far, and we're only halfway through. We are finishing up with lane seven and lane eight but as soon as you get that done we're going to reset the cameras get everything back to where it needs to go and we're going to continue this fantastic day of one of the best strength sports out there lane number eight you see just how much tension she had built up in her posterior chain that it was enough to throw her backwards but that's a heavy bag that is a really heavy bag and even to move it an inch takes a significant amount of, of force. You just saw two of the uh, lowers and judges move the one bag on the left-hand side of the screen. I mean, yeah. it's and now you want one person to do it? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's pretty wild. <laughs> that, that was magical. <laughs> Walt 
because of some magical event we got going on here today. I see you've got the soundboard programmed with some nice nice effects right there. That was probably the first time I've hit that. Since I, I bought it for the mixer. That is was it, funny. Is, is that the one that came installed in there? Yeah, that was pre-installed. I was like, that's why I was like, what is that noise? That's why I saw me go, what the hell was that? I was like, what, what, what is the hotel announcing huh. to us all right now? All right, lane number eight. She's got the bag in motion, but she is in a bent over position. How long can she keep it up? She's got that grip. She got a double hook fist grip almost, if you think about it. She's cupping her hands on it. So far, it's working, but we'll see if she can finish the event with it. You see lane seven, our team male athlete is wearing some gloves. Yes. Might give him a little bit of extra grip on this, maybe might not. Personally, I don't like wearing gloves on strongman stuff. I feel like an extra membrane between me and the objects is just asking for things to move. But I know plenty of athletes who wear them with success, and, and they are allowed in the rules for this event. So you will see some athletes opt for the gloves, some no gloves. Throw a name out there that was actually instrumental wearing gloves in the gym, Ronnie Coleman. He may have moved a little bit of heavy weight in his day. Hey, yeah, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. Now, we're, we're pretty close to the stomping grounds here. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. The uh, fact that that man was a sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> or, I guess, okay. I mean, just. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Watch him getting out of a squad car going, are you, really, that's a, that's a car they're going to give him? Why yeah. don't you give him something bigger? Why not put him in one of the off-road <laughs> trucks? Yeah, right. And the best part is I was eating his dry rice and chicken as he's sitting in this and there. Oh, look at this. Oh, Lane he just seven. grabbed that gone. Almost all of that bag is off the ground, and it is nearly 300 pounds. This young man obviously has a future full of lifting some heavy, heavy sandbags at the high level. Impressive. And he did it just like it was a walk in the just, park. Just grabbed it and gone. Like that, that was the natural yeah. reaction for him. Again, teens, ladies and gentlemen, teens. Scary. I'm glad they have some good coaching forces behind them yeah. to keep those, those bodies moving well into their older years. There was another one. Now they're moving fast with the sandbag drag. Spires and lowers are doing a fantastic job trying to position that. Ready to go for the next implement, and boy, now we're hustling and bustling. Oh, missed it, but he got it now. So he folded. You see that one? So he folded it, so now it's got the head coming down. So now he has that constant grip on it. That's another, that's a pretty great technique. I, uh, I'm wonder, I wonder how that will work across the heavier classes that we have in the afternoon session, because you, you wonder with that front part of the bag flopping down, how much additional strain does that put on the elbows? So not to give away a technique that I saw when they were doing it, because the longer bag, what they were doing is that they were actually kind of like folding it over, so you had like... So that when they so then they, when they fold over, they're grabbing it. So then you had like almost like a third of the bag they were just holding on to. Wow, wow. I'll pick up the pace. Things are moving fast here. Our staff on site is expediting these final bag drags, and our PM session is getting warmed up. Folks, if you're watching the stream, we're just finishing up uh, the morning events and uh, coordinating it to do the awards, so just stand by. Yeah, I see everything's done, so uh, stand by. Uh, Sean, my partner's like the tech expert, so we're going to play some stuff for you shortly in between the break, but the awards should start shortly, so uh, 
Uh, appreciate you on the Brown Venom YouTube channel. Again, 1 o'clock Texas time, 1 o'clock standard time, about 25 minutes. We are going to um, start the heavier men from the lightweight 165, but some real heavyweights all the way up to the super heavyweights. So uh, stand by. We will be uh, back shortly. Now, I think I misspoke.
Shield. Funny. Good job. There you go. And in first place, Miss Hannah Coldire with 28 and a half points. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to jump on here real quick just because we're taking a quick little break with all the organized chaos that we have because it is a fantastic venue and it is a packed house. We got the awards going on for this morning session. Gabe's going to take a break. Paul's going to take a break. I'm going to take a break real quick. But you hear John. He's got the wireless mic for you guys. So at least you can hear a little bit on the stream. They're going to wear these fantastic championship belt buckles with the Texas State emblem on it for your first place. Second place is going to be on the left-hand side of the screen, and third place will be on the right-hand side of the screen, just in case you didn't know where the standings were going to be. Incredible athletes that we showcased this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in for the stream. I, what I will do is that once we're done, because they still got a warm-up, so once they're done with this, the we'll athletes are going to have... To our open women's heavyweight 181s. In third place, Danielle Milner. What we are going to do is I will cut short because YouTube only allows YouTube only allows about eight hours of uh, live stream at once. So what I'll do is I'll cut it. I'll come back to it. So I promise you, place, you'll see the stream cut. Katara then we're going to reload it up. Points. We'll be right back within about maybe five, no more than seven minutes. I promise you. So thank you so much for showing up today. Thank you for your support, but get ready because we have the second half of the USS Nationals 2023 coming your way. And it has been absolutely great to watch these ladies compete today in the AM session. They gave it their all, and here you are with the awards and the champions for this year's Nationals, and they put forth one hell of an effort. Here at Val Venter, we're so proud of them, and we can't wait to see where they go in the future. See right there. First place, Gabriella, Gabrielle Bergholzer. John Lester, national champion, is on the mic. Willie Wessels, president, is handing out the awards. And of course, 
John's wife, Megan, who put this together, is off there holding off the uh, the awards and panning up to the stage. So it's going to be done without them. They did a fantastic job of organizing this humongous event you see today. Super heavyweight. There's no competition going on. I'm seeing the chat right now. So there's no competition going on, pretty much. Everything's done. They're doing the awards for right now to complete the AM session. And then once we go ahead and finish this, we're going to do the PM session. It's absolutely free. You're, if you're watching the stream right now on Valor and Venom, it's going to be on the Valor and Venom YouTube page as well. All we're going to do is basically reset the cameras and get everything ready to rock and roll for the second event. The athletes still have to warm up. The athletes still got to get ready. And the judges and everybody's got to take a little bit of a break so they can basically re-energize, rehydrate, and get back to doing the PM session. So stand by. Miss Elizabeth Sturm with 19 points. And in first place, Alyssa Manu. our overall athlete. 
Mr. Lisa Manu. Masters women's lightweight. So, in case, so what you want to see right now, okay? So this is what we have. We have a four camera system for the entire event. So what we're doing for the PM is the same thing we're going to do for the AM is that you're going to have the top left is being lanes one and two. The top right, as you can see, is three and four. The bottom right is going to be five and six. I'm sorry, the bottom left will be five and six. And then the bottom right will be seven and eight. So you'll be able to, to see all of your athletes compete today in every single lane. That's coming up for you soon. Right now, we just want to get pretty much the awards knocked out of the way. And once we're done with that, we will go ahead and knock everything out. And you guys will see this fantastic PM event that we got planned for you today. As you can see in the stream, it is wall to wall in here. Couldn't be happier. Couldn't be a better venue. And in case you missed the AM session, well, you missed something special, but I'm pretty sure the PM session would be just as great. And in first place, Miss Mary Christie. We just hit about 500 viewers. We appreciate that. Like we said, the PM session is coming up soon, so start spreading the word. Share the stream, share the link, do what you got to do because we want to make sure that this 2023 USS Nationals is something to remember. And here at Valor and Venom, we were absolutely humbled and privileged to showcase all these athletes and all their test of strengths that they did today and just humbled by everything that we saw. Moving on to our Masters, middleweight women, 165s. In third place was Sarah Hernandez. Sarah was a beast today. In second place, Miss Laura O'Connor Butler. Th this class was fun to watch. Absolutely fun to watch. They are right in front of us. They're on lane six. All these women today. And in first place, Ms. Danielle Hurtos.
to our Masters Heavyweight Women. Precious Dominguez in third place. Live scores for a reason. So if you want to follow along at home, you can also check out Iron Podium. All the scores are updated, and you can see who came in which place in each weight class. As you can see right now, this is the organized chaos that we have out here. I mean, it is, <laughs> it is standing room only here. Lightweight 50 plus. If you go to Iron Podium, I'm Saving Man's best friend. Go to ironpodium.com and you'll be able to see what each weight class is. That's where In all the scores are updated. Is Stephanie Breaker off. Woo! 
All right, next up is our Masters Women's Heavyweight 50 Plus. In third place, Miss Anita Bargo. In second place, Miss Molly McDaniel. Every time I scream, my stomach cramps a little bit more. Hold on, Will will be over to get in a second. And in first place, Jennifer Chipsky. All right, you see right now that we got the PM session is in there warming up. We had some heavy weight in the AM session, but get ready. The PM session, the weight is going to be phenomenal. Next up, we're going to do the Masters men, 60 plus. In third place, Mr. James Clark. In second place, Mr. Ed Shore the third. And in first place, Mr. Mark Alden. Mr. Matt Sly. And in first place, Robert Pinsari. In second place, Angelina Franco. And in first place, Rebecca Lutz. Angelica Ralph. Ruth Ralph. Uh, 
right, moving on to our first place champion, Teen Women's Heavyweight, Paige Simmons. <laughs> Second place, Aiden Walsh. And in first place, Kale Paulson. Roberto Wall. I'm not going with that middle name. <laughs> In third place, Roberto from Team Men's Heavyweight. In second place, Carter Dotzler. In first place, Mr. Lucas Webster. Okay.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I'm going to cut the stream right here, and I'm going to come right back to it. So I see all 725 of you be ready to come right back on here in about a couple minutes, okay? I got to cut it because YouTube's limitation is eight hours on live streaming. We won't get the whole event if I do it. So we'll be right back. Thank you so much. We'll be back with the National Anthems here very shortly.